Will the meeting please come to order? We welcome you to the Metro Council. Today is Tuesday, October the 4th, 2022. Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation tonight is brought to us by Pastor Beth S. McCall of the Southminster Presbyterian Church. She is a guest of Council Member Courtney Johnston. Thank you all for having me. Let's pray. Loving God, we ask your blessings on the people who have been called to lead our city, to make decisions for the community in which we live, work, worship, and play. Grant them curiosity about what is possible. Help them to listen and converse with creativity. Lead them toward innovative solutions to the many issues with which they must wrestle. Remind them as they both serve and lead our great diverse city that in the midst of the noisiness of a politically divided world, great possibilities exist because of that diversity. Help them to be mindful that throughout history, prophets have called the leaders of people to respect and protect the least among us, the children, the elderly, the poor, the hungry, the unhoused, the ill in mind or body, the strangers, the immigrants, and all those who are too easily forgotten. Grant them, as they conduct the business of Nashville and Davidson County, wisdom and courage to know and to do what is right and good and true. May they speak when it is time to speak and listen with patience when it is time to listen. May the spirit of community guide us all by the spirit of justice and by the spirit of love. This we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold to be good and right and true. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. May be seated. Uh, without objection, we will suspend the calling the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting from September 18, 2022? Got a proper motion, properly second. Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. Uh, Mr. Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? Uh, yes, there is a message from the mayor. All right, uh, proceed ahead. Dear Vice, Mayor, Dear Vice Mayor Shulman and members of the council, pursuant to regulations of the Tennessee Comptroller's Office, the reports on debt obligation must be submitted to the Metropolitan Council and presented at a meeting of that body before filed with the Comptroller of the State. As previously approved by the Metropolitan Council through resolution number RS-2022-1695, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's WIFIA loan was executed on September 14, 2022. The water and sewer WIFIA loan is a commitment of $315 million. The proceeds of the WIFIA loan will be used to partially fund the process advancements at Omahundro and K.R. Harrington water treatment plants project. Please view the city investor relations page for additional information. As always, we appreciate the Metropolitan Council's support on these important financing initiatives. Sincerely, John Cooper, Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, I wanna correct something. The, um, our last meeting was September the 20th, 2022. I said September 18th, as it would be, we're approving the minutes of the meeting from September 20th, 2022. All right, a um, couple of things um, before we get started, and obviously we have a lot of people here who are interested in uh, what we are doing tonight. Um, we do have some visiting uh, dignitaries here from our sister city in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Um, um, Ms. Frances Murray and Mr. Steve McCreary are here. If you all would stand up and be recognized. <clears throat> so I will tell you that uh, Ms. Murray and Mr. McCreary just got off the plane about two hours ago. I think they are probably tired. And, um, but we uh, invite them to stay for this meeting. It, um, <laughs> We believe it is gonna be a short one, all right? But no, we're very, very glad you're here. They're here to uh, visit Nashville. And Mr. McCreary, this is his first time in the United States. So, um, so all of you back there be nice to him, all right? 
no, we're awfully glad that you're here. Um, I also want to recognize that um, a friend of this council, Ms. Hazel Burley, uh, turned 102 yesterday, and we need to celebrate that. So. Um, So I don't, I don't think Miss Burley is home. If she was smart, she should be watching us from television. I mean, from home uh, on television. And um, hopefully she had a wonderful birthday yesterday. Um, a couple of other things that we need to note for tonight. Um, if you remember, we received uh, no nominations for one of the vacancies on the Community Oversight Board. Uh, so we are once again opening the nominations for the one vacancy for the COB. Uh, that is now scheduled for uh, October 18th. 18th, 2022, uh, nominations have to be in by that day. <clears throat> I think you all would have gotten an email uh, with that information on it. Uh, this will be for the vacancy either from a community group or by private petition signed by 50 residents. Uh, the nomination form is available online or you can call the Metropolitan Clerk's Office at 615-862-6770. Again, um, we did not get a nomination for that specific group uh, and so the, um, the nomination process starts again. Uh, it is now now scheduled for October 18th, 2022. Uh, as we announced at the last meeting, we are taking nominations tonight for a vacancy on the Health and Educational Facilities Board. Uh, that vacancy is to be filled by this Metro Council. Term is for six years and will be uh, filled pursuant to Rule 50. That vacancy will be filled at our next meeting, which is October the 18th, 2022. Uh, so we are supposed to take nominations tonight to fill that vacancy. So I'm going to open up uh, the floor for nominations to fill that vacancy. I'm looking for hands or buttons. Okay, Council Member Pulley, uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to place the name of Steve Meyer into nomination for that position. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council Member Pulley. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm excited to nominate Matt Pulley. Okay. 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 Any other nominations? Uh, Council Member Parker, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to nominate Kelsey Oman. Okay. And it's Oman, O-M-A-N? O-E-M-A-N-N, -N, I believe. Is there? Uh, can I get that information to you, or do you need it right now? Yeah, if you'll get it to the clerk, because the clerk yes, will send out and make sure the nomination form is right. Council Member Sawara, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to nominate Brian Ailey uh, for the board. H-A-I-L-E. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other nominations? All right. Uh, seeing no other, uh, the, the clerk, I think, needs the information. Um, so, he'll, oh, Council Member Evans. Um, can I do a nomination for a council member who is uh, not presently in the room? Well, yeah, anybody can nominate anybody. Okay. So you can do that. Uh, uh, council member Hancock would like to nominate Danielle A. Cotton. Or I'm sorry, it's just Danielle Cotton. There's no A. Yeah, it's, it's Aaron's nomination. So it's considered to be your nomination. You can nominate anybody, so it's considered to be yours, okay? Okay, anybody else? All right, seeing none, uh, nominations will cease. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five nominations. Uh, Mr. Clark, do you need anything else from us? Okay, not right now. All right, so that those five individuals will be on uh, for up for consideration. They'll go through the nomination forms, and then they will be up for consideration at the next meeting, which is October the 18th. All right, uh, just reminding people, um, I think we had sent a survey out uh, on behalf of the council office and council member Syracuse. Uh, I'm not sure if everything has come in, but if you have not sent it in, please get it into the council office um, and um, send it to uh, Daniel Godin in the council office. Um, one last thing, obviously, since we last met, um, 
um, this country experienced the wrath of Hurricane uh, Ian. Uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the people who suffered from that. It uh, certainly caused serious damage in many parts of this country. Um, the American Red Cross, I know, is taking donations for uh, the victims of the hurricane. And um, obviously, if you've been paying attention to uh, the news, there is continued news coming out of the war in Ukraine. Uh, so please uh, keep that country and the people of Ukraine in your thoughts. Um, yeah, Council Member Swope. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, because the news is just coming out, um, a, a dear friend of Nashville, the queen of country music, Loretta Lynn, passed last night. Um, she was a dear friend of mine, so keep her in your prayers, please. Thank you, Council Member Swope. Um, I had uh, heard that, and that was one of the last things that I was going to say, but I'm glad you got it. Okay. Right. No problem. Um, anything else that I missed? Council Member Roberts. I managed to stay married four years today. That is major, that is major Sorry. news. All right. Uh, council Member O'Connell, you're recognized. I just want to make sure the council member was not announcing her divorce. <laughs> council Member Roberts, you're recognized. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave it at that, and we are ready to go on. We have elections and confirmations. Council Member Murphy. Council Member Murphy, uh, you're recognized for a report from elections and confirmations. Thank you. We will begin with um, the Community Oversight Board. Is that where you want to go ahead and do that election tonight? Um, yeah, that uh, that can be done first, and okay. then we'll take uh, the rest of the nominations. So, uh, Ms. Alicia Hadcock appeared before the committee, and she met all the requirements to have approval by the committee. Seven zero. All right. So, uh, Ms. Haddock uh, was a. Uh, um, is the appointment, we had one nomination from Council Member Hurt to fill the uh, seat um, selected by the council for the Community Oversight Board. And so um, we had one nomination, she went through the Rules Committee, um, and so she has been approved. Council Member Hurt, if you would have the honors, and um, if you would um, actually request the motion to have Miss Alicia Haddock, be appointed the Community Oversight Board. Absolutely, and thank you very much, Mr. President. I would joyously move and delightedly move forward with the motion to accept the nomination of Alicia Haddock. All right, so I've got a motion and a proper second. Any discussion on the appointment or the election to the Community Oversight Board of Ms. Haddock? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion passes. All right, Ms. Haddock? Congratulations. All right, uh, Councilmember Murphy, you're recognized for the other reappointments and appointments. Thank you. We had three reappointments to the Metropolitan Historic Commission for a term expiring on August 10th, 2026. That was for Mr. Clay Bailey, Mr. James Hubler, um, Ms. Linda Wynn, and also an a first-time appointment of Mr. Larry Woods for a term expiring on August 10th, 2026. All of those were seven in favor, zero against. All right, do you want to go on with the rest of them? We'll do them all to. at one time. We moved on to Historic Zoning Commission of Mr. Christopher Cotton for expiring on June 1, 2027. Seven in favor, zero against. The uh, Metropolitan, uh, I'm sorry, Procurement Standards Board uh, appointment of Mr. Larry Turnley for a term expiring on October 4th, 2025, seven in favor, zero against. Uh, the Short-Term Rental Appears Appeals Board of Mr. Terrence Bond for a term expiring on August 10th, 2026, seven in favor, zero against. Um, the reappointment of Mr. Phil Cabucci is deferred one meeting, seven in favor, zero against. And then the Metropolitan Stormwater Management Committee for Ms. Kate O'Don McDonald, expiring on July 8th, 2025, seven in favor, zero against. All right, so it looks like just one was deferred, and that's uh, the appointment for the short-term rental appeals board. Did we? Council Member Evans. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just need to be marked as abstaining on the appointment of Ms. Kate McDonald to stormwater management, oh, okay. please. Okay, well, we'll note that. Thank you, Councilmember Evans. Uh, Councilmember Murphy, um, it looks like just one one was deferred. Everything else is correct. Is, okay, then I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move for approval. All right, so Councilmember Murphy has moved to approve um, all the uh, appointments and reappointments with the exception of Mr. Phil Kobuchi, uh, who will be deferred one meeting. We've got a proper second. Any discussion on the nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of these nominations say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. Um, if I can get <clears throat> these individuals to stand uh, and be recognized, uh, just keep standing when I call your name, Mr. Clay Bailey. <laughs> that looked like uh, to tell the truth. All right, so uh, let's try that again. Mr. B Mr. Bailey, a reappointment to the Historical Commission. There he is. <laughs> and just stay standing. If you sit back down, I'll have to call you up again. Uh, Mr. James Hubler. There's Mr. Hubler, uh, Mr. Larry Woods, also for the Historical Commission, the reappointment of Ms. Linda Wynn, Historical Commission, uh, Mr. Christopher Cotton, Historic Zoning Commission, uh, Mr. Larry Turnley for the Procurement Standards Board, uh, Mr. Terrence Bond for the Short-Term Rental Appeals Board, and Ms. Uh, Kate McDonald for the Stormwater Management Committee. Uh, I hope I got them all. Thank you all for going through this process. Thank you all for standing up at the same time. We appreciate your service. And now if you all were smart, you would uh, leave immediately. And uh, <laughs> that doesn't apply to council members. <laughs> All right, we're watching the door, so we're gonna let more people come in as people leave. All right, uh, the next thing on the agenda is the public hearing on proposed CPACER program. Uh, that's on page two of my agenda. Uh, this is a public hearing regarding the proposed property assessed clean energy and resiliency program, CPACER, as authorized by RS 2022-1767. Um, I don't believe there's an, an actual sponsor on this. I think I'm just calling for the public hearing on it, okay? So uh, again, I am going to open the public hearing on the proposed CPACER program. If you would like to be heard on that, uh, please raise your hand. Okay, I've got one hand up, two hands up. All right, if, if you all wanna be heard, come on up. Uh, we're gonna uh, turn the microphone on in the back. Uh, I need your name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak on the CPACER program. You're first. Hi. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. My name's Nicole Robin. Um, did you say address? Yeah. Uh -huh. Tw okay. 1217A Battlefield Drive in Nashville. All right. Anything? And then proceed ahead. Two minutes. Okay. <laughs> Um, hi, everybody. I'm here to speak in support of the PACE program. I actually am a PACE lender. I work for a company called Petros PACE out of Austin, but I live here in Nashville. And I just want to say that it's an economic development tool, and it encourages energy efficiency in our commercial real estate buildings, either the existing buildings or new construction. And this program simply allows us PACE lenders to come in and provide one more financing tool to allow projects to actually move forward. We help fill the gap and we require buildings to be very energy efficient, water, have water conservation or resiliency measures in order to get our financing. And this is private funds. Um, and um, <clears throat> I think that's it. I just want to say I've been out talking to a lot of developers and building owners. There seems to be a lot, a lot of interest to have this program here. There's already a couple projects I could finance if this program does move forward, and it literally would encourage and allow those buildings to be more resilient and energy efficient. So thank right. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Member Sepulveda, for, uh, for what reason? <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I was just wondering if we could let um, the public know that we have a translator here, and then if we could probably repeat it once we have the group outside come back in, since they probably can't hear it. Okay, so we do have a um, uh, Spanish translator here, uh, Ms. Ruiz. 
I'm looking, there she is. Okay, Ms. Ruiz, if, if you don't mind coming to the microphone and just explaining that we do have tra Spanish translation services, that would be appreciated. Mi nombre es Sandra Ovando de uh, Ring. Voy a ser la intérprete de español inglés, inglés español para la sesión de esta noche. All right, thank you. And then I may ask you to do that again when we get more people back in. All right, thank you. All right, uh, next speaker. Good evening, my name is Joe Thompson. I am the principal and founder of Industrial Energy Partners here in Nashville. Uh, our address is 10 Burton Hills Boulevard, Nashville, Tennessee, 37215. Uh, we have been tracking uh, CPACE in other states since uh, early 2020 and have been waiting for Metro Nashville to pass this legislation. I think it's uh, groundbreaking and it will allow uh, commercial and industrial property owners to finance energy improvements as well as deferred maintenance without having to spend their own precious capital, which needs to be spent on hiring people, retaining existing employees, buying materials and increasing production. Uh, we have been working with a number of counties across the state for the last 18 months, as well as property owners. And uh, we have uh, contacted several, uh, uh, I guess you could say uh, uh, counties and presented to their mayors and property assessors what we know about the CPACER program. Uh, we know that Memphis, uh, the city of Memphis did uh, pass a program on September 21st. I don't know if any of you knew that, but Memphis has got the program in place. Uh, we are in contact with the city of Memphis to find out what they're doing and, and how they might be able to help the city of Nashville and Metro uh, Davidson County implement their own uh, CPACER um, project checklist as well as a guidebook. I do have six questions, if that's okay. Uh, you can ask six questions. I don't know who is here to answer them. So. <laughs> okay, well, I, I thought I'd just put it on the record. Um, okay. When will approval by the Metro Council take place? So uh, you'll just have to ask your questions. This is your chance to comment to us, but we'll make them note, and then okay. if you'll leave an address, we can get back to you. Okay, uh, the next one is, will the guidebook to be developed by Metro Nashville resemble the guidebook already um, published and approved by the City of Memphis? Will a project application checklist or other form be developed in parallel with the Metro Nashville guidebook? Number four, in terms of a dollar amount, will there, will there be a minimum or maximum project size uh, to meet the requirements for a CPACER project? And number five, uh, when will the ordinance setting forth the program structure be released? And lastly, are there any eligibility, eligibility requirements for project stakeholders um, for product and service providers? I think Councilmember Allen was writing all those down. She's got them, all right. Uh, by the way, I'm I'm very excited about this this CPACER program. Uh, I really think it will uh, change the dynamics of how um, businesses in in Nashville, Davidson County, and across the state of Tennessee can finance energy improvements for their properties. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to be heard on the uh, CPACER program? Okay. Declare the public hearing closed on that, uh, and then we will proceed ahead. <clears throat> All right, we are now ready for uh, resolutions on public hearing and bills on public hearing. The way this works is that uh, we have one resolution up on um, for resolutions on public hearing tonight, but we have uh, many, many bills. Uh, so I'll call the resolution and the bills up one at a time and then refer to the sponsor. Unless the sponsor moves to defer the public hearing, the sponsor will call for a public hearing. I will then ask for a show of hands for those who are here in favor of the resolution or the bill. And then I will ask for a show of hands for those who are in opposition to the resolution or the bill. If anyone in favor of the measure wishes to speak, if you would come forward, go to this back microphone, introduce yourself and give us your address and then you will have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, I will then ask if anyone opposed uh, wishes to speak and we will do the exact same thing. Um, I will say that uh, pursuant to the Metropolitan Code, lobbyists must identify themselves if they are speaking as such and identify the client that they are representing. If they 
do speak um, during the public hearing. After all that is over, after we've gone through that, after that process, I will close the public hearing and then refer back to the sponsor. All right, we are ready for the first measure. Uh, we are keeping an eye on people who are um, outside so we can let people come in and, and speak if they would like to. And then, uh, Ms. Ruiz, if you wouldn't mind again coming up to the microphone and explaining for both resolutions on public hearing and for bills on public hearing that we do have Spanish translation services available. Ms. Ruiz, uh, you are recognized. Para la sesión de esta noche eh, hay los servicios de interpretación en español. Um, estoy sentada aquí adelante. Eh, puedo ser llamada al stand cualquier momento si alguien necesita. All right. Thank you. All right. We are ready for uh, the first resolution on public hearing. It is item number one. It is RS 2022-1786 by Council Member Withers. It's a resolution exempting Hobson House located at 814 Woodland Street from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Member uh, Withers, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee re reports, please? Yeah, I think it's, um, well, I think it's Council Member Parker because Councilmember Benedict is not here. All right, uh, anybody else in government operations who can, there he is. Councilmember Parker, we need a government operations committee report. Government operations considered uh, resolution 2022-1786, recommended six in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Councilmember Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open on this first resolution. It's RS 2022-1786. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of the resolution. Okay, okay. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the resolution. Don't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak. No one's coming forward. Um, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Withers. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. All right. Councilor Withers has moved approval. Properly seconded. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. For folks who might come into Five Points down Woodland Street, there is actually a sign at this property that identifies the Hobson House. It's one of the oldest houses in Davidson County. Portions of the structure date back to 1807. Um, so it's really exciting to find ways to preserve structures like that and make them economically viable. Uh, the house is, pass is passing to new owners who are wanting to operate an event center there. It already has commercial zoning. Uh, but they did uh, take a lot of time and meet with a lot of the adjacent neighbors. This house does share an alley with a lot of residents behind it on Russell Street, uh, as well as uh, adjacent houses on Woodland. But I want to uh, express my appreciation for the venue owners for working with the adjacent neighbors to address any concerns that they had and look forward to seeing some offerings in this structure that help to preserve it for the next couple of centuries. So with that, I renew my uh, motion to approve. All right, so I have a motion to approve. It was properly seconded. Any questions? Did you say 1807? It was. Um, that was right before I was born, I believe. Um, so um, I have a motion to approve. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion is adopted. All right, thank you, Councilmember Withers. We're ready to move on. We're now on bills on public hearing. We're on item number two, which can also be taken with item number three. Uh, this is by Councilmember Rutherford. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws by changing from AR2A to SP zoning for property located at 14656 Old Hickory Boulevard, southern terminus of Harris Hills Lane. It's 81.38 acres, permit 291 single-family residential units. And the companion bill, which is BL 2022-1062, it's an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1061, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 14656 Old Hickory Boulevard, the proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Rutherford, uh, you are recognized on your two bills. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I will be moving forward with the public hearing uh, tonight, uh, but I would like to make an announcement first, if I may. Uh, Councilmember Rutherford, proceed ahead. Uh, the announcement is that uh, tomorrow night there will be a meeting um, of... Uh, uh, regarding this uh, legislation, uh, the meeting will be a working group session um, with uh, myself, along with uh, community members and the uh, or community leaders and the uh, development team. 
Um, a top of our agenda will be uh, related community standards, which I'm sure we're gonna hear um, in regards to um, um, the uh, public hearing uh, here momentarily. But uh, that's my announcement. And with that, I, I uh, uh, call for the opening of the public hearing. All right, thank you, Council Member uh, Rutherford. Uh, declare the public hearing open on this one. We're on uh, items two and three. This is, would be uh, BL 2022-1061 and 1062. All right, public hearing is open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two bills. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two bills. Okay, we have hands on both sides. We'll start with those who are in favor. If you would come on up and line up. Um, anybody who wishes to speak in favor, if you would come on up and line up at the microphone. I need name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. All right. Vice Mayor Schumann, members of the council, my name is Tom White, 511th Avenue North. I represent the applicant in this case. Uh, would like to, at the front end, thank Councilman Rutherford for the tremendous number of hours he's put in on this matter. I think at last count, there were 11 meetings in one form or another, even Zoom or in person. In addition to which, he's received a great deal of correspondence and has been very uh, responsible about responding to both sides here. So I wanna thank him for that before we get going. Uh, this is a rezoning uh, for an SP. When the bill came before the Planning Commission, it was unanimously recommended. It was on the consent agenda. Uh, I want to make sure everybody hears every Metro Department has approved this bill. Uh, with respect to uh, some of the issues that have taken place over the course of the development, uh, basically the last year and a half. There's always been a commitment there was never to be any multifamily in this proposal. It was always single family. The form of the single family changed as we heard input from the neighbors, but uh, there's been comments made repeatedly that the developer and other people have not met with the neighbors. Uh, that's clearly untrue. Uh, I think at last count there were 11 meetings. Tonight would be the 12th. Uh, there's another Zoom meeting tomorrow night, which we certainly intend to participate in. With respect to the zoning itself, I, I do want to make the comment that the council is aware that there are restrictive covenants, which are a private matter. Uh, the zoning bill is a public matter that Metro can enforce, but there's restrictive covenants. My client has developed a set of restrictive covenants that we think is totally consistent with the community standards. We've also agreed with the councilman to participate in the call tomorrow night to see if there's other issues we need to add. Anything that's reasonable, we will add. But if anyone says there hasn't been any changes or there haven't been any meetings, they need to ask Councilman Rutherford. Uh, I'd respectfully ask for your support this evening and urge you to move forward on third reading two weeks from now. Thank you for your courtesies. Thank you, Mr. White. The next speaker, uh, name, address, and then two minutes in which to speak. Hi, uh, my name is Richard Herring. I'm at uh, 5244 Catspaw Drive, Antioch, uh, Tennessee. And, um, and I'm uh, one of the persons that live in the community. In fact, I used to farm this land uh, years ago. Um, uh, but all these areas now are turning to development. It's one of the last bits of property left. And a development like this, uh, I just want to let the council know, is suited for this community. It would add value uh, to the existing properties in the area. Um, it would uh, enhance uh, the roadage, the right of way, uh, access to the property. It would also um, uh, help with the uh, apartments, so many apartments are being built now in that area, this would be an elite project that would really uh, be a type of support in, in a financial way to the community. And also not to count uh, the number of jobs that are that are that um, would be created. Now, I used to be a farmer, but now I'm a contractor as well. So, and I would be one of those persons that would benefit from, from jobs in the area, which this is my area where, where I really uh, work in. Uh, but but I, I just wanted to let the council know, and this is uh, the design of the homes, um, the, the structure and the development phase would really benefit. Uh, and if there were a lot more projects like this that would really enhance the um, what Metro uh, government is trying to do. So I'm in favor of it, of the project, and, and I appreciate you all listening. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Name, address, uh, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. 
Good evening, my name is Todd Olson. Uh, I live at 413 Shadow Glen Drive, live in the community. Uh, I know there's been several uh, community meetings and I've attended a couple. Uh, you may want to speak a little closer to the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> and the, uh, the plans have evolved. Um, and I think it would be a positive addition to the community, and I am in favor of it. Thank All right, thank you. And um, we've had a, a request, um, uh, just a full address when you come up, including the zip code, that would be helpful. All right. 413 Shadow Glen Drive, Nashville, 37211. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Name, full address, and you got two minutes. Okay. Um, it's Bruce Robinson. My address is 1069 Blairfield Drive, Cambridge, Tennessee, 37013. Okay. Okay. I'm in favor of the of the housing project on the Old Hickory, I, both, pro, both bills that are on the agenda. And one of the things that is important to me and then the community I live in is that home ownership. Um, one of the things that we've got in my area and the area surrounding that is numerous apartment complex. But one of the things that we want, and this is something that comes from the city, more involvement. And I believe that more involvement belongs with home ownership. People who live in the homes and own their home have more involvement than those who rent. So it's very important to see that. And I feel that this project will give home ownership, give the community more responsibility and more cooperation when it comes to things in the community. And they have a part ownership in the land that's there. So I am for this project. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Name, address, and then uh, two minutes. My name is Bruce Maxwell. I'm the pastor of Lake Providence Baptist Church at 5891 Nolensville Pike, uh, 37211. Uh, I am in support of this project also because of home ownership. Uh, there are a lot of the members of the church who live in this specific district uh, and is in the councilman's uh, area as to where he is the one who represents them for Metro Nashville. I am thankful for this project and it has been several meetings. I've met with the attorney for the project as well as the developer and uh, have found the plans to look very beautiful and the homes that are to be built are very nice quality homes so I'm very much so in support of this as well as the membership of Lake Providence just wanted to state that thank right. you thank you pastor next speaker My name is Sandy Kinslow. I'm at 851 Daybreak Drive, Cane Ridge, 37013. Um, I live in the area. I understand that there have been changes, but I am in support of this project. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this project? All right, uh, those who are not in favor, if you would come up and, and line up, um, and then uh, same thing, name, um, address uh, with zip code, and then uh, you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Uh, come on up. Thank you for this opportunity. James Wall, 3057 Bluff Hollow Gap, uh, 37013. I do not support the passage of the bill. Uh, the bill, um, I, I came from Richmond, Virginia. I witnessed the same problems from ill-conceived growth in Chesterfield County, um, Virginia, south of the James River. Rapidly built, high-density subdivisions led to a severe impact on the entire county infrastructure. The unchecked growth negatively impacted traffic, sewage, schools, and police and fire. It took Chesterfield decades to retrofit solutions, that is like widening roads, new precincts and firehouses, new schools, etc. It was painful and as a result, surrounding counties took note and passed legislation to require acres of land to be built for a singular home. They learned from Chesterfield's experience and I believe those lessons should be heeded by Davison County. The neighbors of Cane Ridge and Antioch want development that is built to last and increases the quality of life for our community. 
The project developers so far have failed to listen to the community and design a plan that meets our community needs. Please move to defer this bill. Deferring would ensure that the developer would be required to meet with the community and redevelop a plan that works best for Cane Ridge and Antioch. And in the long term, its impact on Davidson County, for it is my firm belief that what occurs here will ultimately happen elsewhere in Davidson County. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, uh, address, and then two minutes in which to speak. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. My name is Chuck Grimes. I live at 4733 Aaron Drive, Cane Ridge, Tennessee, 37013. I am also proud to serve as the president of the Homeowners Association for the Oak Highlands Deer Valley subdivision, which directly abuts uh, the property in question. Uh, we, we have just over 530 homes in our subdivision. And while we certainly welcome new neighbors in Cane Ridge, I don't think there's any part of Nashville that wouldn't say that. We want to be sure that uh, the property that, that they move into, that they reside in, that is waiting for them to welcome them, uh, is well developed. And, and that is why I'm here to ask you all to, to defer uh, this, this proposal. Uh, the developers are starting to listen well and, and starting to make changes. Some changes have been made, but there are more that need to be made. Um, our subdivision has learned over the years more and more about water runoff issues, uh, the fact that a lot of Cane Ridge is on some uh, very beautiful but very porous, porous ground uh, with underground caves and, and creeks and whatnot that feed into Mill Creek. We want to be sure that we preserve the natural beauty but also the future homes of our new neighbors, which would also include improvements to our infrastructure, which I hope uh, you all will consider both as part of this project and other developments across uh, Davidson County. We're a strong city. We're a great city. And, and I hope that we can keep it that way. But on behalf of myself and my family, uh, my wife and I are, are proud to, to say that we were also married uh, in the Cane Ridge community under a, a beautiful ash tree at the Cane Ridge Community Center. So the area has a lot of, of value and meaning for us. But on behalf of the over 500 homes that I represent, please do put off this project so that it can be fully baked the next time it comes to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker. After three years of absence, uh, my name is John Stern, and my seventh uh, nonprofit community benefit corporation is called the Cane Ridge Community Trust. And our efforts are to ensure that quality development occurs in Antioch, Cane Ridge, and Priest Lake. And we can only ensure that by having enforceability of the promises that we always hear but very seldom see in enforceable documents. Uh, while we're nowhere near agreeing to the RS 3.75 underlying zoning for this project, um, we are interested in both talking with the developer, but also in talking with the fine people that were up here that we're supporting this project. We feel that good decisions can only happen through informed decision making. And it's my, uh, my gut tells me that we can create a more informed community as we did with another project where the Urban League uh, participated in one of our uh, meetings and their project read uh, for the development teams that they're creating. Our effort, <coughs> our effort is to create dual accountability tracks uh, using specific plan for all of the metro layers, restrictive covenants that empower the community and to empower the community to enforce these restrictions over time. And a new type of homeowner association which takes some of the problems that we have with the existing structure and fixes it. We'll look forward to chatting with you all in the future. Please defer second reading for two meetings. Mr. Stern, I don't think I got your address. Uh, 
it is Cambridge Community Trust, 6688 Nolansville Pike in the beautiful town of Cane Ridge, 37027. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker, name, address, and then two minutes. Good evening, my name is Rachel Sullivan and I live at 14694 Old Hickory Boulevard in beautiful Cane Ridge, Tennessee, which is two doors down from this proposed development. I am opposed to this rezoning request. This bill does not enhance the safety of our community. Existing roads must be addressed before additional developments are approved. Current roads do not meet the current demands of our community, much less the additional traffic of this proposed development. Old Hickory is narrow, no shoulders, and windy, with no room for error. As currently written, this bill only provides improvements to 100 feet on Old Hickory. That is meager. The de development could increase traffic on Old Hickory by more than 1,900 vehicles per day. It's also meager due to NDOT's desire to install a collector road from Bell to Barnes. At a minimum, the collector road should include a roundabout at Old Hickory. It currently is not in the plans. With the ongoing development of multiple properties across our beautiful community, our existing roads are deteriorating at an alarming rate. Increased commuter traffic and many construction trucks have had a detrimental effect. Truck restrictions are in place due to the density of the pavement. These Restrictions haven't been enforced, leaving our roads in ruin. The improvement cost to, uh, to Old Hickory will lack, likely be greater than the tax base the development creates due to the cost of moving utilities, adding shoulders, acquiring right of, rights of way, etc. Davidson County taxpayers will be saddled with the cost of repairing the roads when that burden should be borne by the development of the financial beneficiaries. Officials in the mayor's office and others readily admit current infrastructure is insufficient and improvements should be made before additional developments are approved. As it stands now, there are no plans and funding uh, for no plans or funding in place to address these improvements. Please stand with the residents of District 31 and our beautiful Antioch Cane Ridge community by opposing this development or at least deferring it until there's proper discussion held with the developer and his attorneys, which has not to date taken place. Thank you, thank, thank you, Ms. You. Sullivan. Next speaker. Hi, my name's George Clark. I live in Cane Ridge Community. I live at 6319 Pettus Road. That's Antioch or Cane Ridge 37013. Um, I want to echo what all the others have just said here. I didn't prepare anything. I only just found out about this. I know there's been a lot of meetings according to what people have said here uh, today, but um, you know, I, um, I grew up in Nashville and um, and uh, I saved for probably about 30 years to be able to buy a little piece of property and build a house in Cane Ridge, uh, just to find out that they're building something right in my backyard. Um, the roads, um, what the lady before me was saying, the shoulders of the roads, uh, my vehicles are constantly torn up. Um, we're not seeing anything we're seeing these new developments come up and they get fancy new sidewalks and nice new roads and everything but these roads that lead to these and to connect to these together i mean literally the lines of the roads are going off of the road they're going into the ditches they're striping the lines into the ditches there's no shoulders on these roads out here and um the developers are not fixing that, and I don't think that that should be the responsibility, but something needs to happen that we have safe roads. Um, one of my neighbors died not too long ago, you know, on this road, these curvy roads, uh, and they're very narrow, and this is right in the middle of that. Um, the, the, the meetings that have gone on, uh, that I did not get any notification on. I understand that, you know, a lot of times people have to, it's up to them to find things out in the communities. But um, 
you know, I just want to say that I oppose and again echo what the people before me said. But it, Cane Ridge is a very beautiful area. The landscaping is really great. And for someone to spend their whole life trying to save up to move in there to have high density housing stacked right on top of them, it's really not. It's not it's not great and it's not within the community standards and some of the other buzz buzzwords that are used at these meetings. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, next speaker. Come on up, uh, name, uh, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Thank you. My name is Christine Kay, and I live at 6307 Pettus Road in Cane Ridge. I'm here to oppose Cameron Properties Development Plan as proposed for 14656 Old Hickory Boulevard, as I believe it would be very detrimental to the Cane Ridge community. There are many reasons why this development would harm our community, but I want to talk to you about the irreparable damage it would cause to our environment. It's an amazing landscape. This property is absolutely beautiful. It has a large ridge and one of the highest hills in our area. From the top of the hill, you can actually see downtown Nashville. It's covered with all colors of native flowers, so it's also covered with honeybees, butterflies, and pollinators. And uh, we all know they're critical to our environment's health. Uh, natural spring water runs down a rocky stream bed to fill a beautiful lake, which is home to ducks, geese, fish, and other wildlife. And um, it's, it's quite a sight to see, actually. It's beautiful. The water that runs off the hills and ridge feeds the underground spring, which fills the lake. If these natural features are disturbed, the spring will dry up, and the only water that will feed the lake is rainwater. Today, this property drains through several wetlands, including down into a living cave, which has a stream that runs into Mill Creek. It's crucial to the environment that the hills, ridges, natural spring, and the lake be undisturbed and carefully maintained in the same way that Metro protects and maintains other natural areas. Every developer in the Cane Ridge community must be held to the highest standards when it comes to protecting and preserving Cane Ridge's environment, ecosystem, and natural landscape. Cameron Properties needs to make several changes to their plan, and I'm asking that you defer this bill so that the developer can actually engage with us and make changes that are better suited to our community. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, next speaker, uh, name, address, and then two minutes. My name is Debbie Buckner. I live at 6325 Pettus Road. I've lived in Cane Ridge for the last 21 years, and I've watched some developers have worked hard to work with us and have created beautiful subdivisions within our community. And I've also seen other developers who have not worked with us and have torn up, have torn down our ridges, have ruined our roads, and left, and we are left with the mess of it all to deal with and because we still live there. I will a point I wanted to make is that there are several of the people that stood up here for this um, actually don't even live in Cane Ridge. So, you know, they're not the ones that are dealing with the mess on a day by day. And we want you to hear us because it's it's just so important that our community stays together and that we, we work to have conscientious development throughout all of it and not just haphazard things which tear our community down. Thank you. All right, thanks, Ms. Buckner. Uh, next speaker. My name is Tressa Bilbo. I'm at 512 Erna Court. Um, I'm here tonight as a District 32 constituent concerned about the development plan in District 31, 14656 Old Hickory Boulevard. I live a couple miles from the proposed development and my neighbors and I are put in jeopardy each time there's construction upstream from us. I'm not a water expert, but it does not take an expert to observe that our land and our roadways are being flooded more and more with each new development. Water and flood control downstream is yet another unresolved issue that this plan does not holistically address. Councilman, I think you know that because you've planned this meeting for tomorrow, so this plan is not ready to move forward. 
Um, while we are on the subject of water, let's talk about our water lines. Our water lines are not keeping up with the current needs. Neighbors that live closer to this project have experienced a loss of water pressure. Twice this year, they've awakened to no water at all in their homes. They were unable to flush toilets, wash hands, or shower due to the failure of the current lack of in infrastructure. And the water line on Old Hickory Boulevard had burst. The people in Cane Ridge and Antioch deserve better. The current and future generations in Cane Ridge and Antioch deserve better. We deserve a plan that puts our needs before the wants of a developer. We are being asked to change the zoning of a beautiful part of my community. Um, this is what the developer wants, but my community has far greater needs. Please vote to defer. Um, this want of a developer until the infrastructure is in place and that there are quality plans for this development that meet the needs of our community. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker. Come on up. Name, address, two minutes. Uh, um, hello. My name is Jasmine K. Spears. I live at 607 Pettis Road in Cane Ridge, Tennessee, and I'm in seventh grade at third grade Marshall Mill School. I want you to know how I don't think that Cameron, Cameron Properties should be allowed to develop this property because they don't care about what's best for me or my community's future. Cane Ridge is a really good special, special place where our homes and neighborhoods are surrounded by trees and nature is all around us. If you keep letting these developers plow down in nature and replace it with roads and townhomes, what does that leave my generation with? Just another ginormous subdivision crammed with as many houses as developers can shove in? Just because there's a lot of land here doesn't mean that developers should be able just to come in and make millions of dollars while destroying the beautiful nature um, area where we live. Also, it's obvious our roads are too small and the edges are falling apart. The cars are cutting through on our roads and causing traffic problems, and my school is totally overcrowded. Why can't developers wait until our community can support uh, more people moving in. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will help us by voting no on this development. Thank you. Nice job. Future council member. Hello, my name is Chris Strong, and I live at 6323 Pettus Road, 37013 in beautiful Cane Ridge, Tennessee. Um, in addition to the strain on our roadways, which you've heard a lot about, I invite all of you to take a drive down Pettus Road, any part of Pettus, and see where the road is you know, going off. It's, it's unbelievable. And it's because those roads were not designed for all the traffic. They were built back in the 1920s when, you know, you just had, you didn't have, you just had the rural population going up and down. So, but in addition to that, we are also experiencing serious deficiencies in our police response times in the area. And I know that from personal experience last year, last October, in fact, my son was carjacked in Sugar Valley in, at the Mill Creek Greenway. We, he was beaten, our car was totaled, and um, they stole his wallet and his phone. We waited four hours with an eyewitness for the police to arrive, numerous calls to the police, and not saying anything bad about the police, <clears throat> but, at midnight, I, we spoke with the captain, who apologized profusely that he just didn't have anybody to send to, to help us. So we, he said, okay, go home and we'll call you in the morning. So we met with someone who took our statement at 10 o'clock the next morning. That's the state of what's going on in our community. Um, with our police, they just don't, they're not equipped to handle what's going on. And that was um, a year ago. And since that time, we've added umpteen new subdivisions. I, I don't even know, hundreds, hundred, maybe even a thousand new homes to the area. So we can't support it with the infrastructure. Thank you. Please defer right. this bill. Thank you, Ms. Strong. Uh, next uh, speaker. Good evening. My name is Mark Sharp. Uh, I reside at 6387 Pettus Road in Cane Ridge, Tennessee, 37013 in the 31st District. I live approximately four miles uh, from the property at 14656 Old Hickory Boulevard uh, for second reading tonight. And I'm opposed to the SP as it currently has been submitted. In my opinion, the, the developer has not worked in good faith to meet the needs of the Cane Ridge community, despite the number of meetings that have been announced by his representative, Mr. White. I have, over the 
time that I've lived on Pettis Road, again, over 24 years, opposed certain developments. However, later supported those developments once changes were made by the developer in response to mine and my neighbor's feedback within the community to meet and address our concerns. I ask the council to oppose this bill tonight as I don't see it as a development that has substantially addressed community requests. I hold in my hand the September 26, 2022 SP and learned just tonight that the proposed 283 homes in this SP has now increased to 291 homes in your reference agenda at links. Lastly, on page six of the SP, it states three and a half acres per unit. However, the 54% of acreage that is not buildable is due to 15 to 25% slopes, wetlands, stream buffers, uh, retention ponds, and others. So in actuality, it's really double that, at least seven to eight homes per acre, not three and a half as stated in the SP. Uh, lastly, when this property is located, uh, this density, as it is uh, currently proposed, is not congruent to the surrounding uh, homes and community. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Okay. Hi, y'all. I'm Twana Chick, a grateful and fortunate resident of the Cane Ridge portion of Antioch, Tennessee. I live at 5967 Cane Ridge Road in District 31, and I'm president of the Cane Ridge Community Club. I get two minutes to convince you to vote to benefit communities for hundreds of years, to benefit literally thousands of people. That's a daunting task. I sent you details in an email. Please vote to defer tonight for four weeks so that you and we get more chances to make this as right as it can be, as beneficial to the community as it can be. Yes, we have had some meetings. Yes, they have checked some boxes. However, there has not been a heartfelt engagement nor meaningful changes to the original plan. We believe this legislation needs to be deferred so we can work with the developer more to not place future tax burdens on the people of Davidson County for roadways that the developer could reasonably agree to improve now. 100 feet is not enough. Better design roadways that Metro has stated will be collectors, put specific lawful construction zoning and design elements in writing so that if the economy slumps and this isn't built for years, the lowest standard is still beneficial to the community and it cannot become a dreaded zombie development whose underlying zoning and enforceables was not sufficient. We need to be fair to all the other developers who have done or will do the hard work of really engaging with the community and reasonably meeting their needs. There are at least a dozen more significant developments following this one just in District 31, meaning they are larger than 20 acres. And we need to set a standard that elevates Antioch so that future developers will no longer expect a lower standard. We need to honor the admission by Metro officials that infrastructure needs to be, imp infrastructure needs to be improved before more development occurs. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Chick. That it? Anybody else wishing to be heard? All right, thanks everybody. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Rutherford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, move approval on second reading with comment. All right, so I got a motion to approve, properly seconded. There is, I think, a second substitute. I don't know if you're interested in putting that on or not. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, if you, do you want to move the second substitute? I, at this I, point? I move the second substitute. All right, so Councilman Rutherford is moving the second substitute on BL 2022 1061, properly seconded. Back to you, Councilman Rutherford. Uh, the um, substitute before us uh, makes some changes that ki came from the last uh, community meeting. It was last Thursday. Uh, it's related to the ridge top itself, the, hit, the hill, as some folks have mentioned. Uh, what, what the substitute does basically is it uh, removes some of the houses from the hilltop and, and, and in their place will be built a pavilion and sidewalks leading to the pavilion. It preserves the, the view uh, and is, and, uh, is a accessible from the, or by the public from this community and from the surrounding community as well. All right, so uh, you've heard an explanation of the second substitute. There's a motion and a second to approve the second substitute. Discussion on the second substitute. Councilmember Stiles, your button has been pushed. Uh, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, well, first, I, I want to commend Councilmember Rutherford for all the work that he's done over these last couple of years. But having been to last night's meeting and also another meeting a few months ago, 
nothing has really changed in terms of what the people that are immediately impacted are asking for. And there is a meeting tomorrow night, so I would like to do a deferral. Well, so hold on, we're, we're just on the substitute right now. Okay, no. I'll come back to you uh, in just a minute. All right, um, so we're on the second substitute. Discussion on the second substitute. Seeing none, all those in favor of the second substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Oh. Okay. So I heard a, heard a no. All right. Um, so the second substitute's on the bill. So we're on the we're on the bill as substituted. Councilman Rutherford, now you're recognized. And, and as um, the the bill as substituted, uh, I renew my motion to, for approval on second reading uh, with comment. Okay, so uh, I've got a motion to approve uh, BL 2022-1061 as substituted along with BL 2022-1062 for uh, passage on second reading. These require three readings. For passage on second reading, properly seconded, back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first off, I wanna thank everyone that came out tonight and everyone that spoke uh, on this um, legislation. Um, they came to express their, their thoughts and their concerns uh, from, from both sides of this uh, effort that's been ongoing for a couple of years. Um, these folks uh, are, the, are, are the salt of the earth type people, especially those from the Cane Ridge community. Uh, they've been nothing but good to me during this term of, of council. Um, they've been warm and inviting um, to me and to my son and I'm gratefully appreciative uh, to them. Uh, through the Cane Ridge Community Trust, uh, many of these same folks that we've seen here tonight uh, have worked tirelessly uh, on a set of community standards. Because of their work, these standards, many of the new, and the standards, many of the newer projects in our area, uh, and that includes multiple districts in Southeast Nashville. Uh, are better as a result of their efforts. And this project, this project is, is no different. Uh, it is far better because of the standards uh, and, through, and through very active community engagement with several meetings over the course of two years and many deferrals of this legislation here at council. Uh, the site plan today is very different than the one originally proposed. It's also evident that there are developments in our area that came online prior to uh, this development and prior to the development of, the, of these standards um, in a prior council term. That could have, they, those, those, it's evident that those could have benefited from these standards that exist today. Uh, so their work and their efforts have made our community stronger and have made Southeast Nashville stronger. Most of the rezonings in District 31 during this term have had little to no opposition. This one has had some obstacles and others simply, that others simply did not have. This one has been driven in part by personalities and also I have found myself spending uh, a great deal of what I call unnecessary time trying to dispel misinformation. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a there there was information going around that basically said that the developer was going to blow up the ridge. The developer was never going to blow up the ridge. They were going to build houses up and over the ridge, uh, but through community engagement, uh, which, as I referenced, the uh, substitute bill, or uh, yes, the substitute bill, which came from direct community engagement. Uh, changes were made and there's a new site plan that removes some of the houses from the top as I described with the pavilion that preserves the view. Uh, well, there certainly, there certainly hasn't uh, always been agreement, but there has never been a time when the development team has not been willing to work with the community, including right now as they did not hesitate to accept the meeting tomorrow night to continue dialogue and continue improving the proposal. Public hearing happens on second reading and not third, so that we can hear from the public as we did tonight and continue necessary dialogue before third reading. 
I believe there is sufficient support within District 31 to move this legislation forward in the process. I also believe there is concern enough to continue engagement before third reading. And that is happening tomorrow, as I previously stated. We will, we will meet multiple times as needed and defer third reading if it becomes necessary. Mr. President, it will not hurt my feelings either way, but if members believe this project has the potential to add value to our community, value to our city as a whole, and warrants further engagement before the third reading, they should vote yes. If members think it does not warrant continuing on the, with the process and should just end now, after two years of engagement, then they can vote no. All right, thank you, Council Member. So uh, here's where we are. Council Member Rutherford has moved approval of BL 2022-1061 as substituted in BL 2022-1062 for passage on second reading. Uh, it, there was a motion and it's been seconded. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, just to repeat what I said before, I, I respect all the work that you've done, Councilmember Rutherford, but I am very concerned. Having been to these community meetings and the latest being last night, all of the concerns that you heard this evening, and there were many more people that had comments like what you heard this evening last night and are asking for a deferral. There is a meeting tomorrow. I plan on attending. I have not been to any of the other meetings, but one of my own constituents is here and is concerned, and I think it, it does bear for us to keep in mind that there are a lot of concerns from community members, so I am asking for a deferral um, for one meeting, not a month, but one meeting. All right, so Council Member Stiles has moved to defer this one meeting. I, I got a second. So uh, we're on a motion to defer one meeting. I got a number of people in the queue. This is on the deferral motion, it is not on the bill itself. Council Member Vircher, on the bill or on the deferral? Uh, on the bill. Okay. okay. Let's take the vote for the deferral and then depending on how that goes, just come back to me, Vice Mayor. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield uh, on the bill or the deferral? On the deferral, Vice Mayor. Okay, Councilmember Porterfield. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor, and I want to thank my colleague, Councilmember Rutherford. I know he's uh, worked very hard on this, and um, it's hard when you're working on something for two years and to um, have, you know, community concern to this extent. Um, so thank you for the work that you have done. Uh, I used to teach at Thurgood Marshall. I drove the road, Pettis, every every day during the school year. My daughter went to Thurgood Marshall. Um, what the residents said, they weren't wrong. There's a, a small two-lane winding road with no shoulder that is extremely, extremely dangerous. And I think that the concerns are very valid concerns. And if it is not, unless it is some very time sensitive reason why the deferral cannot happen, I believe that a deferral is warranted to give the community and the council member, as well as the developers, the opportunity to continue to work through this legislation to hopefully find some type of middle ground to solve that issue. But when we have this many people come in to, to state their concerns, again, I drove that road every day for multiple years, and it is a very dangerous road, and it is scary to think about continued develop it, development on underdeveloped roads. So I'm going to uh, vote in favor of the deferral, and uh, I ask my colleagues to also vote in favor of the deferral. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Withers, uh, on the bill or the deferral? Okay, Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Press Mayor. Um, colleagues, I, I'm gonna stand in opposition to the deferral. Um, we, this is the process of zoning. We do have a public hearing. We hear what the concerns are. Deferrals certainly can happen on third reading. Um, I'm pleased to hear from Councilman Rutherford about his engagement with his neighbors for a long period of time. Um, and there are additional meetings that we already know are scheduled as, as soon as tomorrow. So I would vote uh, against the deferral or encourage folks to vote against the deferral of, of second reading. Let's go ahead and pass it on second. We will still have time for community meetings which will happen imminently. Uh, and we can still hear from the public through their correspondence as to whether or not they feel that the issues have been resolved. Um, 
but but I would respect the wishes of the district council member to pass on second uh, and encourage everyone to uh, continue to listen to the public at, for third reading. If additional work is needed on third, I'm certain that additional deferrals can take place at that time through the normal process. Thank right. you. Thank you, council member. Uh, I've got uh, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm also opposed to the deferral motion. Um, two things. First of all, a deferral, even though it would be on second reading next time, would not open the public hearing again. So there's no real advantage there. Also, this is a zoning bill. It can be amended on third. And I'm sure that the district council member will be working with his community to come up with the right solution when it comes. Um, so we, I'm opposed to the deferral. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I think my question has been answered. Is it clear that if, the, if there is a deferral today that we don't have to have the public hearing again or will we have to go through the public hearing again? Yeah, the public hearing is closed. Okay. Yeah. That's what I, thank okay. you. All right. Uh, Council Member Hurt. Did you send me? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, i uh, call the question, please. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> Council Member Hurd has called the previous question. Uh, we're not voting on the measure or the deferral motion. We're just voting on whether we want to vote. All right, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. All right, we are on a motion to defer. The motion was made by Council Member Stiles. It's a motion to defer one meeting. All right, so if you're for the, for the deferral, you'd vote yes. If you're against the deferral, you'd vote no. Um, we'll try it by voice vote. All those in favor of motion to defer one meeting say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Uh, the no's have it. Uh, motion to defer fails. Councilman Rutherford, we're back on your motion to approve on second reading. All right, Councilman Rutherford, anything else? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, and I appreciate uh, my colleagues and um, the fact that they have uh, acknowledged the work that has gone into this, and, and, I, and I acknowledge the work and effort that has gone into it from folks who are on both sides of this issue. Um, because it's important that everybody be heard, and that's what tonight was about. That's what the series of meetings that we held previously were about, and that's what it is about for the meetings that will still take place prior to third reading. Uh, so I, I encourage the, um, the vote for approval. Thank you. All right, Councilman Virtue, you're recognized. You should be on. I want to move to defer for two meetings uh, with a public hearing. Uh, if uh, Attorney Darby can give me when the next public hearing will be, I'd like to defer to that. So, Councilman Virtual, we're checking. Um, this is now a second motion to defer. We just had one that was. It's defeated. a different motion to defer. I understand. Maybe. We're checking to make sure that you can actually do it. Councilman Virtual, would you restate your motion just so we've got it right? Deferring to the next public hearing. Let me tell you why, Vice Mayor. Oh, well, hold on, because okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure if you can even argue the motion because we're not okay. sure if it's even proper. It's just a motion to defer two meetings. And have a public hearing. And then have another Yes, public the hearing. body has no uh, way of hearing the neighbors again after right. the meeting tomorrow night. But we're just trying, we're trying to figure out whether you can actually Understood. make Understood. Okay. Copy that.
Okay, um, Councilman Vircher, um, I, do. I believe that would be the meeting in November. Yeah, so here's the here's what we're looking at. It's a, it, it triggers Rule 28, from what we understand, for a public hearing, for another meeting. Uh, that's gonna require a two-thirds vote of this body to have another meeting. The public hearing on this one has been closed, but you can have another public meeting and invite people to come back. Understood, but, but let's do it, Vice Mayor. Two years ago, we didn't have no community engagement because the city was, we were faced with COVID. So I, I do appreciate uh, the work that the council member mentioned that he's done on this, but I can tell you a lot of communities uh, were not participating and engaged in zoning matters as they should have been two years ago. So yes, I would like to renew uh, my motion for that and uh, like a roll call vote as well, Vice Mayor. Well, it, it's gonna require a roll call vote, okay. but, but we think we have to split the motion because you've asked for a, a motion to defer this two meetings. That doesn't require a two thirds vote, but having a public hearing does. Okay. So we're gonna have to split it, so. Uh, However you need to do it, Vice Mayor. Okay. So that the Southeast community is heard tonight. Thank you. All right, you. so you've got a motion to defer uh, two meetings properly seconded. This is not a vote about having a public hearing. It's just a motion to defer two meetings. All right, so um, we're now on a motion to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Um, I'm gonna go down my list. Council Member Rutherford, I'm gonna come back to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I respectfully uh, move uh, to table that deferral. Okay, so this is a, a tabling motion. So um, Councilman Rutherford has moved to table this motion, properly seconded. So it's rule 35. <coughs> So uh, this is the motion to table and it's directed at a motion. So the only people who can debate this are the maker of the motion to table and the maker of the motion against which the tabling motion is directed. So that's council member uh, Rutherford is going to, is the motion, is the maker of the motion to table and council member Vircher is the maker of the motion against which the tabling motion is directed. So uh, council member Rutherford, you're recognized first. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I believe the this council was very clear uh, on the first motion uh, to defer. And so I, I think we should hold steady with that and uh, defer um, this one as well, or not, or not defer, and I mean, what am I saying? Do the <laughs> table the motion for deferral um, and, and move this whole thing forward. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Virtue, you recognize. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. It's really simple. If we're not gonna listen to the constituents that come before us in public hearing, we don't even need to have it. Admittedly, the city knows that Southeast Davidson is under-resourced and we have significant issues with our infrastructure, our schools are overcrowded, public safety, I could go on and on. It's irresponsible with us being the zoning administrators to not listen to constituents when they express life-threatening concerns as it relates to any potential development. A pause, a pause, a pause for the next meeting and for the neighbors to continue to work with the developers and their attorneys. I'm very, very familiar with Tom, Tom White. It doesn't hurt anything. I, I state this again, Vice Mayor, it's simple what we do here in this chamber. We are elected to represent their voices. A deferral does not mean a yes or a no as it relates to this project, but what it does say as a body that we listen and that we hear your concerns and that we care. These folks now worked all day, drove from Cane Ridge, that's an hour and a half at, at, at the least, to come down here and to be heard on a zoning matter. It's not too much to ask for a deferral, have it come back, do a public, a public hearing. They may come back, they may not come back. It may get resolved tomorrow. Who knows? What's the harm in it, Vice Mayor? Colleagues, support the deferral and also support the public hearing. I'm tired of standing up here <laughs> pleading for you guys to listen to the issues that we have out in Southeast. Infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. 
infrastructure. We have some of the most dangerous roadways in Southeast. We have some of the unsafest neighborhoods in Southeast. That's not my claim. That comes from the departments. That comes from the city data. It's, it's not Councilwoman Bertram stating that. It's facts. Again, colleagues, support the deferral and support the public hearing. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor. All right, thank you, Council Member. We're on a motion to uh, table. All right, so the way this works is that uh, we'll try by voice vote. Um, uh, Council Member uh, Vercher has moved to defer two meetings. Uh, and a roll call vote, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Rutherford has moved to table. So we're on a tabling motion. Um, uh, Council Director Darby, this is just a majority vote on the tabling motion. Um, but uh, what we're voting on is a motion to table. So if you want to table Council Member Vercher's motion to defer, then you would vote yes. If, you, if you're voting with Council Member Rutherford, you would vote aye on the tabling motion. If you're voting against Council Member Rutherford's uh, tabling motion, you'd obviously vote no. Any questions before we vote? Okay, we've had a roll call re vote request. Um, Mr. Clerk, if you would, get the machines ready. So we're voting on a motion to table. If you're with Council Member Rutherford, you'd vote yes. If you're with Council Member Vercher, you'd vote no on the tabling motion. Ready? All right, uh, Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. Missing. Johnston. Councilmember Johnston. Okay. Mr. Clark, uh, close machines, take the vote. So eyes 14, nose 18, so the tabling motion fails. All right. We are now on uh, Council Member Vercher's uh, motion to defer two meetings. All right, uh, Council Member Vercher, uh, two meeting deferral. It's been properly second discussion on the motion to deferral. I've got people in the queue. Council Member Rosenberg, where is he? All right, uh, Council Member Hurt. Council Member Hurt, do you want to be recognized on the deferral motion? Okay. Um, Councilmember Hancock. Call the question. All right. Previous question's been called. We're on the previous question vote. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous, previous question prevails. We are on Councilmember Vercher's motion to defer two meetings. Just the motion to defer two meetings. We'll try this by voice vote. All those in favor of Councilmember Vercher's motion to defer two meetings say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The, the no's have it. Uh, excuse me. Scoop. Uh, first of all, I don't know if that's coming from the back. Uh, people in the back can't comment during a voting period. Councilmember Stiles, you can't argue with the vote. So the vote is no on the deferral motion. Okay. Councilmember Stiles? Councilmember Stiles? Thank you. Councilmember Burchard asked if it w would be a, a roll call vote. That was roll call was on the motion to table, not on the deferral motion. He asked for for all of it. And yeah, Councilmember Stiles. Um, I, I'm just asking for clarification because I know that's what she said when uh, the, she asked to do the I'm deferral. I'm telling you that the, the we just voted on a motion, and the motion uh, the motion failed. Okay. All right. We're now on uh, back to Councilmember Rutherford on a motion to approve. 
All right, uh, Councilmember Rutherford, we'll try one more time. Councilmember Rutherford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, again, I thank my colleagues. Um, it's, it's evident where um, this council stands in terms of um, the effort to defer this um, and that we don't wanna do that. Uh, I want to assure uh, council that um, this process continues. Um, it does not end here tonight. Um, the full intent of public hearing on second reading and not on third reading is so that we can hear from the public, so that we can weigh their concerns, and so that we can continue that negotiation uh, through to third reading. And I can assure you that this conversation, um, this community engagement, the dialogue that's been going on for a series of meetings does not end here. It will continue. And then we'll see what we have before third reading. But third reading is deferrable. If we reach a, a point where we determine we need more time, more community engagement, third reading can be deferred. That's not where we're at right now. It may be where we go. There's a meeting tomorrow night. We'll see what happens. Uh, and there can be more meetings. There likely will be more meetings. Um, but right now we're at a point where this is ready to move on beyond second reading. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Lee. I just have a question, sir. I remember when we were doing before and um, Council Lady Virtue asked for it to be um, deferred twice, but then you split a motion and you had another motion for there to be another public hearing. I don't know where that motion went since we didn't go back to that one. What happened with that? So the idea was, uh, it was supposed to be kind of a dual motion uh, to defer two meetings and then reopen it back for a public hearing. The public hearing, um, pursuant to Rule 28, requires a separate vote in terms of a two-thirds vote. It's different from a vote to defer, which just required a simple majority, so we split it. Now. Uh, so, so did that mean then that that public hearing is still there? You can move to, uh, to have a, another public hearing, but it would be under Rule 28. It would require a two-thirds vote. Okay, sir. Am I in order to ask for that now? Sure. I would like to move that that happen, please. Okay. And when do you want to have it? Um, in the third on the third reading. Well, okay, so we don't know exactly when the third reading is going to be. So um, you have to, pick, I think you're going to have to pick a date. Certain. Okay, so. Plus, we also have what to is give. This? Um, I assume we're going to have to give notice on the hearing. Okay, how about the second meeting in October? Okay. So when? And I would, I'm sorry. Does, when did, can when? it be the second reading in October? And if so, I would like it on the board. Uh. So, uh, so you are moving to have a, another public hearing on the second meeting in October, is that right? That'll be our next meeting, correct? It's the next meeting, okay. Yes, sir, if that is in order. Um, so we can't do it then. Uh, so we're, we're checking on the notice requirement? We don't need that. Okay. Then right. as part of my question to you then, uh, what is the date when we could do that? Uh, uh, well, we're checking on the notice requirement. It'll be a simple notice on the agenda, so it would be, it could be at the next meeting. Okay. Now that's going to be unique because we don't typically have public hearings at the second meetings of the month, but you can have that if that's what you'd like. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, the motion is is to have another public hearing on this matter, um, the on the second meeting in October. All right, so that would be October um, 18th. Um, okay, properly seconded discussion on that motion. And the Does roll call vote me? on it. Okay, Council Member Lee, you're recognized. If that comes back to me, I think it's very clear that we haven't heard um, all the ins and outs about this. The council member said that he's gonna have another meeting. Um, so hopefully uh, something will come out of that and I think um, all the discussion here lets the developers know that they need to really put forth an effort to work with the community on what is done. And so I think we need to hear from the community if that is happening. So I would like to um, hear from them again 
so that we know what's up and that we can really do a vote that would be good for the community. All right, so we've got a motion to um, have a public hearing um, at the second meeting, which would be October the 18th. Again, that's been seconded. Uh, so I've got people in the queue. Councilmember Allen on this one, okay. Um, Councilmember Rutherford on this. Move to table. Okay, so there's a motion to table. So uh, once again, it's the same thing. So um, the maker of the motion uh, and the maker of the motion against which the tabling motion is directed. So um, so we will start with Council Member Rutherford. He goes first. Council Member Rutherford, you're recognized. We as a council were clearly ready to move forward. And I think that's where we still are. Uh, I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to continue the engagement as I expressed previously, um, that will be done. Um, when third reading happens, whether it is at our next meeting or whether it's deferred out further, when it happens, this legislation will be ready to go because it will have had more community engagement and has had a lot of community engagement already, but that doesn't stop here. I've, I've said that before, I'll say it again. It does not stop here, but it's time to move forward. Thank you. All right, Council Member Lee, you're recognized. I just think with the uh, more meetings happening and the community here, I think they need a chance to, after more meetings are happening, as the council member said, um, they need a, a, a voice to be able to say, because it may be that, you know, we see the developers are really reaching over backwards and they are finally listening to us. And then all of us with good conscience can vote uh, one way or the other. I think right now it's kind of up in the air and I don't want them to leave thinking that they aren't heard. So um, that's why I would like, I know it's unusual for us, but sometimes for the good of the community, you have to do what is unusual. So I would just like for us to um, open it up again so that they will have a, a they will have a chance to address things and let us hear their opinions. All right, so let me tell you where we are. <laughs> Again, Council Member uh, Lee has moved to have a, a public hearing on this matter again on October the 18th. Um, that, if we're not voting on that yet, that's a two thirds vote, okay? Uh, she made the motion, properly seconded. Council Member Rutherford moved to table that. So we are now voting on the tabling motion, which again is just a simple majority. So if you're in favor of um, tabling Council Member Lee's motion to have a public hearing, then you would vote yes on the tabling motion. If you want to at least vote on Council Member Lee's motion to have another public hearing, then you would vote no on the tabling motion. Everybody got that? Got it. Okay, we're on the board, Mr. Clark. Uh, we are voting on the tabling motion. Again, if you are for the tabling motion, you would vote with Council Member Rutherford. If you're against the tabling motion, you would vote, um, you're voting with Council Member Lee, you'd vote no. <coughs> Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. So it's I-16, no, uh, I'm, I-17, no 16, no abstentions, uh, the tabling motion prevails. So Council Member Lee, uh, your motion is uh, tabled. All right, we're back to Council Member Rutherford. Um, up to you. There has been some concerns expressed about whether or not people are being heard. I can assure you, I can assure this council, I can assure the people that are here today that people are being heard. People have been heard on this for the last two years. That's why it's taken two years, because people have been heard and they will continue to be heard all the way through to third reading whenever that happens to be. I can assure you of that, thank you. 
right, so where we are is we're on a motion to approve on second reading um, the original two bills. Let me make sure we've got this right. Uh, the motion is to approve BL 2022-1061 as substituted and BL 2022-1062 for passage on second reading. Okay, discussion on that. I think I've been through everyone. Council Member Cash, uh, I think you're the only one, that, the only one that hasn't shown up. Council Member Cash. Previous question. All right, so we're on the previous question. We're not voting on the bill. We're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We are on um, the vote on uh, passage on second reading of those two bills. Um, roll call. Then we're on voice vote. Uh, all those in favor of passage of those two bills, 1061 as substituted and 1062, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the, um, the ayes have it, okay? Those two bills pass on second reading. Uh, we are now ready for uh, BL 2022-1140. That's item number four that can be taken with uh, item number five, BL 2022-1141. These are by council member, uh, the first one is by council member Parker, Withers, Alan Hurt, and Van Rees. Um, BL, tw what? Yeah. So we're going to hold for a minute as people move out and then we let people move in. That's fine. A call for a recess for 10 minutes. Second. All right, uh, we stand in recess until 8:35. Please come back. Thank you. <laughs> okay, if everybody would take their seat, so we can make sure that we have um, 27 in the room. We are ready to proceed. Um, thank you all for um, being back promptly in your seats at uh, 8.35. It is now 8.45. All right. Uh, we are on item number four uh, and item number five. <clears throat> this is BL 2022-1140 by Council Member Parker, Withers, Allen, Hurt, and Van Rees. And BL 2022-1141 by Parker, Withers, Hurt, and Van Rees. Uh, BL 2022-1140. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RM20 to SP for properties located at 301 North 2nd Street and 651 and 660 Joseph Avenue at the northeast corner of Dickerson Pike and Meridian Street. It's 14.52 acres and located in a plan unit development overlay district to permit a mixed-use development. Uh, and BL 2022-1141 um, by Parker Withers, Hurt, and Van Rees, an ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1140. Proposed specific plan zoning district located at 301 North 2nd Street and 651 and 660. Joseph Avenue proposed ordinance requires certain materials to restrict in the construction of buildings. Uh, Council Member Parker, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, declare the public hearing open. I'd like to see a, a, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of these two bills. All right, thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to the two bills. 
Okay, so um, we'll start with those in favor. If those in favor would line up, uh, it helps us go through this fairly um, evenly and smoothly. If you would go ahead and stand up and line up, um, and I will repeat that we have, um, uh, if need be, we have a trans uh, Spanish translator here. Uh, Ms. Ru uh, Ms. Ruiz, if you'll just again mention that we uh, that you can help translate, that'd be great. <coughs> I'll, you hear me? Here you go. Now you can do it. Mi nombre es Sandra Obando de Rin. Yo voy a ser la eh, intérprete de español para la sesión de esta noche. Si alguien necesita mis servicios, estoy aquí adelante. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, we are ready. Um, again, if you will come up, give us your name, address, and um, including zip code, and um, then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Stephen Buchanan, Cypress Real Estate Advisors, 1601 South Mopac Expressway, Austin, Texas, 78746. 18 months ago, CREA began engagement with McFerrin Park neighbors and Nashville stakeholders about the future of River Chase. What we heard, without exception, is that Nashville needed housing and affordable housing, and that residents facing displacement be treated with dignity and compassion. That feedback led us to propose a dense 1100 50 unit community with 225 affordable homes with 80% of those units being between 40 and 80% of AMI or 26 and $76,000 a year. We gave residents a full year's notice and began a housing navigator program to relocate families to better quality housing. We are proud of the navigator team for the compassionate way they have supported families to find far better living conditions than existed at River Chase and continue working with individuals who aren't currently housed or are still owed assistance. Through our legacy resident initiative, residents have a pathway to return when reconstruction is complete with any vouchers accepted. 10 families and growing have since signed up. We committed preferential treatment to union trades, job site training and safety standards, $5 million for public traffic and infrastructure improvements, pedestrian and bike friendly streets and more paid for privately by CREA. Every commitment is binding via the SP zoning and or an enforceable in a CBA with the Urban League that guarantees affordability for 30 years, no matter who owns the site, and the rights to sue any owner who is in non-compliance. I want to address some unfortunate misinformation from Sun. First, displacement. We again provided over a year's notice to relocate residents, open an assistance program, and provide a unique path to return. Second, almost everything in the CBA with the Urban League had already already been agreed to with Sun. Sun representatives actually spoke in support of this project at the Planning Commission in February before blowing up our talks in June. They were for it before they were against it. We have given you a great plan with a great CBA partner that offers the unique chance for displacement not to be permanent and that meets your goals okay, for housing okay. and affordability. I'm, I'm Thank let, you. There you go. I've let other people go over time, so we're being very careful of that. Thank you. Clifton Harris, President and CEO of the Urban League of Middle Tennessee, 50 Vantage Way, Nashville, 37228. Four months ago, we began to enter into a community benefits agreement and the discussion and negotiations with CREA via our uh, legal counsel, and we are confident that we have a strong community benefits agreement that the Urban League stands ready, willing, and able to execute. After 30 years of being in the community development business myself and developing housing, I have yet to run across a developer that has gone through such great lengths to make sure that this city, our community, has affordable housing. 225 units and all of affordable housing for individuals and all that uh, are at the uh, area median income and all who really need the housing for uh, the legacy residents and all to come back and all to once they uh, are, are built. We are able to work with you know, CREA in a way you know, that we're going to monitor uh, this community benefits agreement to make sure that they do what they uh, have outlined in the community benefits agreement for, for the next 30 years. We also stand ready to work with the legacy residents you know, to make sure that they have access to economic self-reliance as we work with them to in our workforce program to ensure you know, that they improve 
their quality of life. And for 55 years, the Urban League has been at its post making sure that our residents of Nashville and Davidson County have access and all to economic and all empowerment. And our goal is to ensure that this developer joins us in, in our motto of empowering communities and changing lives. And so I invite you and all to support this, this bill so that we can get on the, about the business and all of changing lives in our city. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker, uh, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes. Thank you. My name is Jackie Sims. I live at 1813 Pearl Street, Nashville, 37203. Um, I have with me Miss Linda Gray, um, the first person that we moved. I will do my two minute spiel and then I will allow her time to, to speak as well. She wanted to come up with me. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to come before you. This is the end. Well, not quite the end, but it's been a long journey. It's been well over a year. It was August of 2021 when I met with uh, Victor Young and explained to him how important it was to me that each of the residents at River Chase be moved with great care and that be very intentional and that I be allowed the time to make sure um, that that was done. I can say that the majority, especially of those that path personally moved, moved up as opposed to their residents at uh, River Chase. Most of them, Ms. Gray will tell you, were thrilled with the accommodations that we found for them. Some of them are so happy where they are, they may not choose to return to River Chase, but I want them all to have an opportunity if that's what they want to do. So we, we did our best. We are not perfect, we are human, so there were stumbles and difficulties along the way, but we continue to try to make sure that everyone is well provided for with the things that they need. Uh, we funded the um, uh, a washer and dryer to go into a unit. We had a wash, brand new washer and dryer donated um, to another unit that happened just this week. So we're continue we're continuing to do all that we can do to make uh, the River Chase residents whole, and it has been a privilege and an honor to do so. Right, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Linda Gray. I've been relocated at 3225 Creekwood Drive, apartment 207, and I really like to thank Korea, Mr. Victor Young, John, Stephen, and Miss Jackie Sims. They've been a blessing to me, to all of us, really. They relocated me, gave me a new environment, a, a new beginning, a brighter future, a new hope, and a new environment. And they was a, a big help, and they really did put us where we need to be placed in a new environment, and it's a wonderful feeling. It's awesome. They are a blessing. And we all are very blessed and highly favored. In the name of Jesus, I just want to thank him. I can't ask for more. It's God's gift. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Craig. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ingrid Campbell. I am the president of McFerrin Park Neighborhood Association. And I speak for the complete community, not just for a section of it. Do you mind uh, moving your microphone just a little closer? Can you Thank hear you. me now? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> River Chase has, is quickly approaching its final days. It's being, the, the buildings that are left are being demolished, yet history will record it as an area, people live there, but also there's positive memories and bad memories that have occurred. And then the neighborhood has absorbed that and still d dealing with some of that. You know, we had shootings and, and drugs and we had people found two years after they died in the building, but we're going on. Nashville's an it city. We need people to, to work in the service industry. We need people to help out. We need people to have a place to live. We're offering that. I had conducted a straw poll for our community, for people who were either the residents or they were property owners. The straw poll results, 
67% in favor of the 1,150 units plus the 225. The other 33% was divided between 240-ish townhouses and other. As the voice for the community, they have spoken. Now, one thing I want to note, we want to address the Berry Street being open for traffic. Traffic is an issue in our community with people flying by. So I want to have that as a discussion for later, to please look at that and realize that we need to do something different. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Name, address, uh, two minutes. Good evening, uh, Mark Govea, 612 North 2nd Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. I am in support of this development. Um, I've owned this property for six years. Um, I was part of the McFerrin Park Neighborhood Association uh, board for a couple of those years. Um, seen many options and concepts, and you know potential buyers come to community meetings to present, you know what they deemed as a, a vision for that that plot of land. Um, and we've seen a lot of things come and go, but Korea is the real deal. Um, I've never seen a developer come to the table and provide um, such a partnership for the community. Um, I want to commend them for their efforts. I can't really understand what else they could be doing uh, to support um, everybody's voices in this discussion. Um, and so I don't understand why a deferral will be needed here. Um, I think everybody uh, from a community perspective in this line uh, that live in this community uh, or own property in this community, uh, my property in particular uh, backs up to River Chase. Um, my, you know, the alley separates my my home from the River Chase buildings and uh, the last two structures are actually about to be demolished behind my, my property. And I, I, I was in favor of the initial draft of the tall, uh, of the highest you know, level height variance that they proposed. Um, they've since come down on that, I think at least twice. Um, and so from a property owner that has vested interest uh, and this line of people that actually live in the community, work in the community, um, have a vested interest in the community, I, I ask that you take their words um, uh, very seriously because this is a, a program, a, a development that everybody is, is in vast majority in support of, um, and I would I would caution anybody that would, would oppose this uh, development that uh, isn't part of this direct community that's directly impacted. Um, so I appreciate your time and ask that you please uh, you know move forward with this development. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Richard Espinon, I live at uh, 304 Hancock Street, Nashville, TDC, 37207. So unlike my, I mean, like my predecessor here, I live um, really close to the River Chase apartment, and I've lived there for 15 years. I walk in my neighborhood every day. I pretty much know everyone, you know, in the, all the streets around me. I can tell you a lot of people, I've never seen them, although I work two hours a day. Long story short, I'm so excited that someone finally invests, wants to invest in our neighborhood. I've never seen a developer who has uh, invested so much time, energy, who has been uh, a developer who has been so patient with the requirements of the neighborhood. And so thank you, Korea. Thank you for finding, um, you know, like um, a place uh, in partnership with other people for the people who lived in River Chase. So yes, I'm in favor with Korea. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hello, I'm Tony Taylor. I live at 328 Wilburn Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. Again, I am a resident of the neighborhood. I've been in the neighborhood for about 13 years. Uh, we've seen a lot of good and a lot of bad happening in our neighborhood. One thing we haven't seen in our neighborhood is development, though. With the housing boom that happened in Nashville, not much happened in our neighborhood. Um, so. I absolutely support this. The developers, like everyone has said before, have been working with the community, they've been working with the residents, they've been working with the people that, that are concerned about this. Uh, understand that affordable housing is an issue and th they are offering that. I know the word affordable is different to different people and I respect that, but at least there's efforts being made and put forth here. Um, so I 100% support this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
good evening. My name is Eddie Latimer. I live at 1610 Sumner Avenue, 37206. Um, I just want to speak in favor of this project. I run a housing nonprofit called Affordable Housing Resources, and we've been involved at the periphery of this since the very since oh, for over 15 months. I, I'd just like to do this. Uh, I've sent you all my thoughts in the emails, and you've read those. I'm going to bring in two new ones, and they basically are this: is that for the last five years, Nashville's been in competition with every city in America to see who had the most cranes. Now, of all those cranes, can you tell me one developer who left behind any affordable housing? Much less affordable housing that they paid for at their own expense and that they're going to bring nonprofits in to develop the lower income housing. Not one. So why are we as a city not accepting this gift? Why are we treating it as if it was tainted and, and corrupt? This is a good gift. This is a very valid gift. And if we don't do this, guess what we're telling all the other guys, like the ones that preceded them, that come into our town to build housing in our city, luxury housing, that we, that we don't care what they do. But what we need to be doing is creating a strategy on how we can, within the laws of the state, attract these other developers into also following Korea's example, giving us back affordable housing. Because we're not going to get it developed unless we get it developed in partnership with the for-profits. I really appreciate this, appreciate all the time and effort y'all put into this, but I really would strongly encourage you to vote for this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Hey, good evening, Ryan Adcock, uh, 1213 Kenwood Drive. I am here tonight speaking on behalf of the Greater Nashville Realtors. Um, my board uh, of directors today um, uh, voted uh, to support this bill. Um, I do feel for the council tonight, and not just because you get to be here so late this evening, but because you are stuck between two very important sides to this argument on this bill. Both sides are making good points as to the reasons they want what they do want here uh, to come out of tonight. Um, but it's pretty clear now that there is no real pie in the sky, perfect solution uh, to, to make everyone in this room happy and every Nashvilleian happy with this development. Um, council members are elected to make just these kind of difficult decisions for us on our behalf and to support actions that provide the most best outcomes for the most Nashvilleians possible. Our association's biggest worry tonight is that the alternative plan that has recently come to light of 245 or so market rate housing units is not the best option for any party involved or represented here this evening. We worry about a precedent being set, as Mr. Latimer said before, said before me, that it's just too difficult to work with local groups and neighbors and the council, and that any future similar parties with similar developments and goals in mind will simply just revert to the easiest option that requires the least amount of government input, the least amount of community involvement, and provides the least amount of Nashville families with affordable housing options in the future. For these reasons, Greater Nashville Realtors would strongly urge the council to support this plan and no longer defer it to allow the work that all of the interested parties involved here tonight and elsewhere have been working on this past year to actually come to fruition and provide the most best outcomes for housing in the future for our citizens. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker. Edward Henley. 1208 3rd Avenue South, zip code 37210. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving alongside many of you uh, council members um, in service of our city. Tonight I'm here to speak in favor of the project at River Chase, uh, a project that has 225, at least 225 affordable housing units representing 20% of the proposed units in the plan um, and voluntarily including two and three bedrooms. Um, every single unit is something that we need here in our city and so I continue to uh, rehearse this speech over and over again and recite it so that people hear what I'm saying is each one of those is a home for a family in our city. Um, the project also creates publicly accessible green space where today there is none and there has been none for over 25 years. 
It also adds retail options to a community that in this section of the neighborhood has very few and additionally takes on the task of millions of dollars of infrastructure um, at a critical junction and corridor for our city. I'd like to ask the residents that are here um, from River Chase to please stand. Uh, I've talked about the project and what's forthcoming, but I'd like to talk about what has been done as of, as of yet. Over $320,000 to directly assist residents in relocation um, year to date with several um, resource events um, for the residents held on site, more than a dozen scheduled engagement opportunities and ongoing commitment to engagement for the community, and best practices for design, safety, monitoring, and inclusive opportunities, focusing on an emphasis in diverse businesses, union considerations, local businesses, and local labor. Several displays of adjustments and adapting to community input are very clear throughout this process. I have and continue to work on many projects and I'm continually informed of others and no project I'm aware of is remotely close to this project and what it has done. So with all that being said, if we are asking our development community to be mindful, compassionate, give time and give money in efforts to address our city's housing crisis and insufficient infrastructure networks, I implore each of you to consider Consider what I have mentioned and support this project. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker, a name, address, and uh, two minutes. Hi, Jackson Zeitlin, property owner at 824 Meridian Street, 37207. Uh, Vice Mayor and Council, thanks for hearing us today. Uh, I want to take my two minutes to speak in favor of the resolution at hand, as I feel like the proposed project has the opportunity to provide McFerrin with the adjacent neighborhoods that will ultimately benefit from previous, current, and future residents, as well as provide a base of growth for our neighborhood and its connected corridors. When we look at the benefits, I think there are two major topics to consider that cement this project is a great benefit to the city. Uh, first is obviously housing affordability, which has been harped on numerous times already. The developers have directly paid over $300,000 in resident support and outreach, including creating a housing assistance program managed by the Salvation Army. There Outreach and community involvement also includes the opportunity for previous River Chase residents to return as residents of the new project through vouchers issued from the developer. The city is, and especially of late, constantly at a shortage of affordable housing units. And the affordable project of the component, the affordable component of the project, offers specific protections for those like essential workers through 30 years of guaranteed affordability based on a number of AMI metrics via deed restriction. The offer of 225 affordable units should be seen as a solid step towards a more holistic housing housing environment, and while we can always push for more and for better, I see this as a step where, as somebody smarter than myself said, uh, we ought not let the perfect stand in the way of the good. Uh, the second item is transit. As a, another perennial city issue, connectivity and access continue to be a hot button item for a growing Nashville that this project will aim to alleviate. It does so specifically by integrating bike-friendly infrastructure within the park project, as well as allocating nearly $150,000 to the McFerrin Park Association and neighborhood traffic calming initiatives. On a more broad spectrum view, the residential density will also increase demand for, and thereby feasibility for, improved public transit options in and around the Dickerson Pike corridor. There has been a back and forth debating the transit supply as a chicken or an egg situation. This project has the opportunity to be both. Given the nature of these two issues and how many of the elected officials in this room base their platforms off of them, I see this as a new, this new project as an opportunity for the city to walk the walk and talk the talk that many of us have heard over the past few years and I hope you will see the benefit going forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, everyone. Uh, Chase Markham, Holiday Ventures, Nine City Place, 37209. Uh, first off, I want to say that I've worked a short time in affordable housing, and Ed Henley is one of the greatest guys in the game. Anybody should want to work with him, so I hope that that's enough to convince you. Um, second off, uh, I have been in affordable housing now for about a year, uh, but before that, I was in new school development, and it was from that side as well that I saw the housing crisis that's here in Nashville as well as the accessibility issue. Um, with the site we have here that's so close to downtown Nashville and at the premium that land is, is going for right now, I think it's important that we set aside pieces of land like this for affordable housing. Um, and the fact that it's got the mixed the mix of uh, median incomes is really important to keep these, uh, these residents in their home. Um, 
also with all the big corporations and, and everybody else coming to the area, this problem is just going to continue to uh, become an issue in Nashville. And uh, like I said, I think this is in a, this site's in a great position to provide housing for those that wouldn't normally be able to afford uh, housing in the city. So um, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much. Hope you guys get to bed soon. <laughs> Thank you. Get this down to a respectable height. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Captain Philip Canning with the Salvation Army uh, here in Nashville at uh, 631 Dickerson Pike, uh, Nashville 37207. Um, relocation for anyone is hard. Uh, it's one of the most stressful events in any person's life. Take a person who is under-resourced and relocate them unplanned, and it can be devastating. I've seen this in community after community after community in my appointments as a Salvation Army officer. It's real. When I came to Nashville and I learned what CREA was doing, I was floored by the resources they are bringing to the table because I have never seen anything like it in my experience or my life. What they are bringing to the table is remarkable. Through their funding, the Salvation Army, along with PATH and housing navigators, have been able to help over 170 families move in, I'm sorry, they've helped 160 families move into homes out of 170. The 10 outstanding, four of them are waiting on their Section 8 vouchers to come through, and the remaining six opted not to take advantage of those services. I think those are pretty remarkable numbers. You've heard it mentioned the number 320,000 in direct assistance to individuals who have relocated. You've heard the one-year notice provided and constant reminders. You've heard about no, no immediate evictions. You've heard about the parents having the option once their lease ends to remain in the apartment until their, their child finished schooling. We are here to support this opportunity because we have an opportunity to give a message to developers of what we expect in Nashville or what we don't want. So we support. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you, Vice Mayor and Council. <clears throat> David Bailey, Hastings Architecture, 225 Polk Avenue, 37203. Our firm has been part of the Nashville community for over 37 years. <clears throat> we joined this project 18 months ago because we felt we could make an, an important contribution to this community and help Nashville address pressing needs for affordable housing. With 225 apartments, or 20% of the total, being dedicated as affordable housing units, this project will make a difference. We have paid careful attention to the neighborhood feedback and desires with the design of the project. We have designed the buildings to work within the planning department's vision for the site, which was developed with residents and neighbors. We're designing a pedestrian and bicycle friendly environment with 1.5 acres of public and green space within this entire site. Something this site has lacked and has not offered to the neighborhood. The buildings will be LEED certified addressing high levels of sustainable design. We're also planning streetscape, street, gear, street grid, and intersection improvements around the site for public safety. And though the Metro Planning Department's Dickerson study allows for 10 stories of height at the intersection of Meridian and Dickerson, we have committed to a maximum of seven stories because of neighborhood requests. We think this is a fantastic project for Nashville and this neighborhood, and we would appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, thank you. My name is John Gore, uh, 1212 Fatherland Street, 37206. I'm with uh, Barge Coth and Civil Engineers, and uh, we appreciate your uh, opportunity tonight to uh, talk to you about this rezoning. Um, in addition to some of the benefits you've heard tonight, we feel like from an engineering and an infrastructure perspective, there's uh, a lot of great pluses to this project, um, and we'd like to talk through uh, a couple of those with you. Uh, the first thing uh, I think is important to look at is uh, this project is uh, proposing about 4,000 uh, linear feet of new public street improvements. Um, 
That includes Dickerson, uh, Meridian, um, Joseph, uh, Barry, and North 2nd Street. So that's new uh, curbs and gutters, sidewalks, uh, street trees, street lighting, uh, plus a separated bike uh, lane along the uh, Meridian frontage. Um, the second uh, improvement that's important, I think, is uh, new stormwater improvements. Uh, this is a site that was developed um, in the 70s and 80s before any stormwater uh, measures were required. So a redevelopment of this site is going to bring the site into uh, compliance. Uh, from a public water and sewer perspective, uh, from our initial meetings with uh, Metro Water Services, they indicated some of the infrastructure that crosses this site is over 100 years old. So a redevelopment of the site is going to uh, bring that infrastructure up to uh, current codes. Uh, from a tree perspective, the uh, site is pretty sparsely planted, so a redevelopment of the site is going to bring the site into uh, compliance with uh, current landscape ordinance. Uh, and then finally, uh, traffic improvements. Uh, there's uh, um, several uh, important traffic improvements, including a uh, new signal at Dickerson Meridian, um, new safety improvements at uh, Dickerson and Spring Street, and new intersection improvements at uh, Dickerson and North First Street. Um, we appreciate your support tonight, and we're looking forward to working with uh, Metro Department's uh, torch permitting. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, I'm Kim Hawkins, Hawkins Partners, uh, 110 South 10th Street, uh, 37206. For 36 years, I've worked with the city, with private development, with community groups, and with many of you. I've rarely seen such a dedicated and attentive community group as the McFerrin Park Neighborhood Association and their leadership and their very earnest representation of all of their neighbors. And I've never seen a private developer be more intentional and committed in working to achieve equitable housing to meet the neighborhood expectations and their compassionate support for displaced residents is CREA. The plans that you have before you tonight are the result of over 15 months of working together, over 10 community meetings, many additional workshops, many one-on-ones, and a lot of listening on all sides. And the plan is better because all of these conversations included people that cared. I'd love to tell you that it was easy to relocate 175 families, but I can't. There were times where it was messy, it was really hard, but it was done with great patience and with persistence by CREA. I'd love to tell you that this project is the norm, but I can't. It's the exception to provide 20% of affordable and attainable homes without government assistance or to offer opportunities for legacy residents to return or to pay current residents deposits and moving costs or to sign a CBA. It is the exception. I'd love to tell you that our city is providing housing, adequate housing for all of our citizens, but I can't. Our city is woefully short in attainable housing. This project won't save that. But it does show a new way to provide equitable housing, and the Nashville development world is watching. In January, McFerrin Park neighbors came and supported this at Planning Commission, and the Planning Commissioners voted uh, su unanimously to support this project. I urge you to do the same. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ms. Hawkins. My name is Justin Gallagher, um, consultant on the project. I'm actually a new resident of Nashville, so my address is 1122 Gorilla Way, Las Vegas, Nevada. So I promise I have a longer flight home than you guys. Um, anyways, I want to talk a couple of things. For the past five years, I've been working as an owner's rep, uh, doing affordable housing all over the West Coast. And uh, I've never worked on a project in my past 10 years being in construction and real estate that I've worked with a group of owners this unique and different. Uh, I've developed 15 affordable housing projects through Litec deals. Uh, and why this project's so unique is this project doesn't have any kind of tax advantage credit funding. Uh, it doesn't have a bond deal or anything like that. This is all private funding. Um, and that's unique and that's different for any kind of developer I've seen. Uh, this deal in particular is setting a precedent for Nashville. Um, 
I think this owner has taken a lot of time and effort into developing his plans and taking community input. Uh, and I would urge you guys to support this project. Uh, it's definitely something Nashville needs. I have a family of four and we're in the middle of relocating to Nashville and finding uh, affordable housing for us is just as much a challenge. Uh, so it's definitely something Nashville needs and I appreciate y'all's time. All right, thank you. My name is Megan Sigler and I work for KCI Technologies. We're located at 500 11th Avenue North, Nashville 37203. KCI Technologies, formerly RPM Transportation Consultants, has been working on traffic studies in and around the Nashville area for over 30 years. We prepared the traffic impact study for this development with guidance from and meeting the requirements of the Nashville Department of Transportation. In order to complete this study, KCI and the development team spent months and many meetings coordinating with the Nashville Department of Transportation, Metro Planning, and the Tennessee Department of Transportation to create ideas on proposed development scenarios to consider as part of the study. For the study, we looked at both the existing and multiple proposed roadway scenarios to determine what roadway and intersection improvements would be needed to minimize the effects of traffic associated with this development. Since the completion of the study, KCI and the development team have continued to coordinate with NDOT, Metro Planning, and TDOT on the proposed realignment of Dickerson Pike between Spring Street and North First Street. This development is planning to invest over $3 million into realigning, redesigning, and completely changing the functionality and operation of Dickerson Pike along the frontage of this property site. In order to improve the safety and ease of access to and from the Amer uh, McFerrin Park neighborhood. In in addition to the improvements along Dickerson Pike and in coordination with the McFerrin Park neighborhood, this development is planning to invest in traffic calming measures throughout the McFerrin Park neighborhood. KCI and the development team have met with the neighborhood to present the proposed improvements as well as to hear out concerns of the neighborhood regarding building height, traffic calming, and many other issues. The, the team at KCI has seen leaps and bounds that the CREA team have gone through to accommodate as many of the neighborhood concerns as they can, and we commend K uh, CREA on their willingness to listen to the neighborhood and adopt their plans based on the feedback of everyone involved in the project. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Anna Yoder and I live at 816 Lishi 37207. Um, I actually have the unique opportunity to be both a resident of McFerrin Park and also part of the design team. Um, this project began with and was guided by listening to the community, and I really want to thank all of my neighbors for staying engaged, thoughtful, and for supporting one another in this process. I also want to thank Kriya, my colleagues, Councilmember Parker, and countless others who committed to hearing those voices as we work through design. In fact, when Kriya took control of the property, they paused over 50 evictions so that those voices could be heard. As part of the McFerrin Park Neighborhood Association, we defined our core neighborhood characteristics. Some of these include diversity, walkability, our trees, and the unique cohesiveness of our neighborhood. Unfortunately, the current design of River Chase, while also being beyond its useful life, segregates the tenants from the rest of the neighborhood. Tall fencing, dead-ended streets, and unprotected sidewalks beside high-speed, unsafe roads create barriers to the site. When existing residents return, they will return to a community that has street trees and wide sidewalks for kids walking to and from school, accessible open spaces for the neighborhood to gather, and a community that is truly connected to the rest of McFerrin Park. As part of our neighborhood, affordability is a key aspect of what helps to create our neighborhood diversity and character. While no one project can solve for Nashville's housing crisis, I am thrilled that this new community could provide a variety of homes that are not only affordable, but great places to live. I'm looking forward to re-welcoming my current neighbors at McFerrin Park when this development reopens, and I hope that you support it to allow that to happen. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else wishing to speak in favor if you'd come forward? Okay, um, those who are in opposition, if you would um, do the same thing and just line up and then you'll have um, 
Uh, I need your name, uh, your full address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Proceed ahead. My name is Virginia Holland, and due to me being under an order of protection, um, I will not give my current address, but I was a former resident of the River Chase apartment at 644 Joseph Avenue. Um, I can stand and attest today on my personal experience with what we went through. Um, hearing everybody speak out about what's going on with the community. You know, nobody never really came through to talk to us, to speak to uh, anyone in the community to talk about, you know, what we wanted or where we would go from there. In the beginning, when the sale of the property came about, the councilman for that, for that area, when he was posed with the question of what would the residents of the River Chase community do, he said that was tough because not only did he know, but every other council member in this room knew that the affordable housing crisis was falling apart. Um, it's scarce and we did not have anywhere to move to. Uh, the only people that came through to help us was the PATH organization. The Salvation Army did not even really help. Um, their answer to the problem was sign everybody up for public housing, which was the projects. And most of the people that lived in the River Chase apartments had housing vouchers, which was Section 8. Um, to say that I would agree to moving forward with the development of the CREA project. I can say I disagree because a lot of people still does not have permanent housing. There are people that have become homeless due to the property being sold, you know, and nobody has still not addressed the fact that we need larger affordable housing for larger families as far as four and five bedrooms. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Hello, I'm Felicia Henry. I don't have an address. I'm homeless. Um, I don't think anyone in this room knows how it feels to think you're coming home to your home and nothing's there, which is what I went through. I got out of work one day, came home. My whole apartment was good at nothing. I have six children um, living from motel and out of the cars. We don't have a lot of clothing. Um, we had a people like to come through and help, like the Salvation Army and stuff, but nobody really helps. Right now, I'm still homeless. It's hard for me to find two and three or four bedroom affordable housing. So that's why I'm disagreeing, because we need larger affordable housing. Um, we're tired of being bunched up. Our kids, we're, my family is falling apart, you know. My children are looking at me like, you know, they, 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 you know, the love is losing in the home because of this situation. And I'm standing up here today because we need somewhere to go. <laughs> we're homeless. Uh, and I still get up every day and go to work. Like, nothing's wrong. And it is, and it's not okay. It's not okay. And, um, and that's, that's all I want, just affordable housing, larger affordable housing, not two and three bedrooms. People have six and seven and eight children. We need bigger housing. Even if it's not an apartment, affordable houses for us. Um, and that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. So my name is Tamika White and I am one of the coalition members that helped during the process of helping all of the residents because I live directly across the street from them. Ms. Felicia did not receive all of her funding from CREA. They said that they gave all of the residents their money. She is one of the residents that did not receive all of her funding. It's a shame for them to stand up here and talk like they are just gods, but we have to be on the right side and stop with this displacement of residents who have built this city to be the it city that it is today. Now I know River Chase ain't fancy, 
but it was their home. And Crea bought it and took it from them. And that's not fair to her or her six children, who now are living in a car or wherever someone can agree to let them stay for the night. It's not fair. Okay, thank you. My name is Simone Boyd. I live on Cephas Street in Nashville, Tennessee, 37208 in North Nashville. And I'm here in solidarity with Miss Felicia and the residents of River Chase. What Ms. Felicia said is really important, affordable housing, but we also need affordable housing at the 30, 40, and 50% AMI. I do not know what the AMI is for what Secrea is offering. I also want to acknowledge that what was signed was a deal. Ms. Felicia is a resident. She doesn't know what is in that deal, and the organization that signed that deal does not have a history of enforcing CBAs or community benefits agreements. A CBA is only as good as it can be enforced, and you all as council members know that. The last thing that I would like to say is that, well, two more things actually. This is precedent setting. River Chase is on the East Bank. Titan Stadium is being discussed every single day. What matters at River Chase matters to everybody and every poor and working class person in this city. And so what I'm asking you to do is to listen to the people and to listen to the elected official who was elected for that area. What happened last month? Four council members attempted to pressure the sitting council member to move this through. That is unprecedented. And it is unprecedented that I'm inviting you all as council members to listen to the elected official because the residents voted him in. And he speaks for the will of the people. And so to vote and to pressure him into moving this along would be unprecedented. And I want to thank Korea for what they've done. I'm not knocking them. They have done a lot of work, and I appreciate what they've done for affordable housing. But deferring this and listening to the people for a little bit longer is what we need to do. And I'm inviting you to make Nashville a more just city. Dr. Paulette Coleman asked us, is Nashville gonna be a just city? And in this proceeding, you have the right to vote and determine if we will be. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Boyd. I'm Vincent Williams, 707 Joseph Avenue, 705 Joseph Avenue, 709 North 2nd Street, 602 North 5th Street. I've lived over there and been in affordable housing for nearly 30 years trying to help, and I still have affordable housing that, that I have leased to neighbors. Right now, I, while I empathize with the person, people who've moved out of River Chase, they're, they're gone, but we still have the, the plan to consider. The current plan as it exists has a waiver of the parking requirement uh, for that particular development. I would ask that that parking, that waiver be deleted from the plan because it adversely affects the 700 block of Jefferson Street, Jefferson Avenue, I mean Joseph Avenue, where I live. On Joseph Avenue, on, one, on the east side, there are 16 uh, townhouses. On the other side, there are about eight single family houses at blocks and driveways. So a residential parking permit to allow residents to live to park in that area with guests will not work. So the, the plan needs to be redeveloped, uh, be modified to allow uh, parking, to allow uh, residents on in the townhomes on the 700 block of Jefferson Street, uh, Joseph Avenue, to park. And so residential will not work, but you can design the Joseph Avenue entrance into the project so that it deters parkers, people who want to park and go over there from taking up parking on Joseph Avenue. Right now, at night, probably right now, the parking on, on the 700 block of Joseph Avenue probably extends virtually to the curb. And so we can't, can't take the additional uh, parking that would be going into that particular development. So while the, I, I, there are many things commendable about the plan, I have been uh, uh, a, an attorney for the Department of Transportation, for the Attorney General's office representing the Department of Transportation. There are many commendable things, but the parking in the 700 block of Joseph Avenue 
does not work. I, so I, I would respectfully request that that waiver be deleted from the plan. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker. Hi, my name is Christina Presley, and I was one of the last residents to be moved out of River Chase. Uh, first off, I want to say thanks to Korea, Stephen Buchanan, um, Jack, Miss Jackie, and Salvation Army for helping me find the place that I'm at now. Okay, so with these. Oh God, it's so exhausting pretty much to to go through this, like get all everything took from you and and then watching the residents of River Chase still my friends still not have nowhere to go, you know? And it's just really hard. Um help me go in. You wanna talk about James? Yeah, tell me. No, you wanna say I can't do it. Okay, um, I think one of the other points Christina wanted to make was specifically about her son James, who's 11. Um, although all this moving and upheaval and displacement has obviously affected everyone, there are multiple kids who have, this is Christina's behalf, but her child missed a whole month of school, partially because they couldn't get their lease. I don't know who they is, but she couldn't get her the lease to prove where they lived, and so he missed the whole first month, her first month of school. And James is not the only child who that has happened to. So I'm not going to take away from Christina's time with that, but I think, was there anything else about? No, just help with the finance. Huh? Just asking for help with the financial things. Okay. Christina is also still looking for some financial support. So if anybody, I know last time she came and spoke, but if anybody would like to contribute, um, she will be outside after public comment. So is that the last part? Yes, thank you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, my two minutes. Um, hello, everyone. I think I saw a lot of you when I spoke in July. Um, until last week, I actually wasn't. I need your, uh, need your name and address. Oh, hi. Kelly Chen. Um, and my address is on 26th Avenue North in North Nashville. Um, before. Uh, sorry. Um, before last week, I didn't have, of course, we need affordable housing, but I still was, you know, undecided on the yes, no vote. That wasn't really my priority. The residents were my priority. But at this point, it seems that the only thing to do is ask you all to vote no so that you don't set a precedent for the city of a developer and affordable housing advocates engaged by that developer lobbying mem members of this council who are current planning commissioners, former planning commissioners who are architects lobbying. And if we vote, you put this through, you're setting a precedent. Everyone is coming for your zoning and your zoning and your zoning and your zoning and there is nothing y'all can do to control it. This is threats from out of town developers and trust me, they have done a lot, I will admit that. But coming down and bringing this to the very end and threatening and holding hostage affordable housing, especially when people are still unhoused is unacceptable. It's fine for 20 people making money off this project to get up here and speak about it. They had one resident speak out in favor. What does that say? So when you sit here and you think you don't have a choice, you do. And I know when you come up for re-election, that people will remember this, just like people remember Airbnbs and other things like that. Thank you very much for your time today. My name is Melissa Cherry. I'm a lifelong Nashville resident. My parents still lived next door to my grandmother in our childhood home in 37206. My immediate family, is spread across 37216, 37115, 37218, and I currently reside in District 3, 3211 Morewood Drive, 37207. We're all proud Nashvillians and forced to consider whether the city shares the same regard for us. I've shared my plots publicly as a former member and team member of PATH, and I've personally shared that with you as well. 
Personally, I would suggest a deferral or a no vote to allow displaced River Chase residents direct consultation on the potential CBAs. Since none of the involved organizations have made efforts to do so over the last year or during the previous deferrals. I'm happy to coordinate if there's interest. That is still possible with a no vote. But if this passes tonight, it will not be possible because the current CBA is triggered by the passage of these bills. For tonight, I'll be sharing statements from people that could not attend but were residents of River Chase who have not had an opportunity to be heard. From Shamika Sutherland, I'm from Unit 351. Me and my family are still without a place to live. We are staying in and out of hotels and also relatives' houses. I have an eight-year-old son and a 10-month-old daughter. I wasn't offered any help from the worker that was supposed to be assigned to help me at River Chase at the time. It seemed like they gave us money and sent us without a care in this world if we had somewhere to live or not. Me and my family appreciate the efforts of few individuals from PATH. From Sade Phillips. I actually shared this GoFundMe in September after Sade found my phone number because she remembered speaking with me the last, ne the last night she was at River Chase. I can pass this to someone behind me to continue reading unless you'd prefer me to continue with their comments. So we've been trying to let people just kind of finish their final comments. So you got about 20 seconds. Well, I have two other residents that would like to speak, so perhaps I'll pass it to the person behind me. That's, that's fine. Thank you for your time. Please defer or vote no tonight. In closing, where there is love, nothing is too much trouble, and there is always time. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Gracie Rule. I live at 2709 Belcourt Avenue in District 18, um, and I worked at PATH during the River Chase relocation. Voting yes tonight ensures that residents have no input in how their future is decided. Throughout the CBA discussions, not one resident was invited to a meeting. The very people being most affected and the community in question is receiving no benefits from this deal. This model development has been constructed like every other deal in this city, behind closed doors and with people who don't live in our city or with people who do not represent working class Nashvilleans. And now developers and council members who have been lobbied by these developers are trying to convince us that we are abandoning affordable housing if we don't vote yes. But what we are really doing by pushing this through is abandoning people who need that affordable housing the most. No affordable housing, no inclusive Nashville, and no shared imagined future is valid or possible if residents aren't included. Voting no on this bill would allow the time for residents to be included in a community benefits process and would allow for shared discussion of futures where residents are included in our shared Nashville future. I'm calling on you to listen to residents, to vote no, or to at least defer this bill such that they have time to speak. I'm going to finish reading Sade Phillips' statement. My name is Sade Phillips, and I have been a part of the Nashville community for 25 years and have resided at River Chase Apartment Complex since January 2021. I moved into the River Chase community, assuming it would be a long-term home for my children and myself, only to find out within six months of living there that they would be torn down. Initially, I was informed that the Salvation Army would be assisting in finding housing. However, very shortly after, I was told that was a miscommunication. I was left to search for accommodation on my own. I am a single mother of three boys. I work part-time and care for my terminally ill mother without transportation. For the fa past five months, it has been a struggle searching for housing with all of these barriers. My children are suffering emotionally, not knowing where they will lay their heads next month and living with the fear that they will be separated. I am now being told that I am not able to pay rent for May. I will not receive the 2200 financial aid from the Korea developer to transition. I am asking for any assistance or resource to help us transition in this difficult time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Bernard Lafayette the third, 365 Day Drive, 37211, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I am a teacher at Nash and here in Nashville. I have been at 244 Foster Street for 17 years. First at Caldwell Elementary and now Ida B. Wells Elementary. I'm here to speak on behalf of the students who don't have a voice at this council, uh, who don't have a voice in the say so of when they are able to move or not able to move, where they will live. Those students who come to school and are faced with the challenges, even though they are resilient, even though they persevere, even though they fight to learn, they have still been through a pandemic and in the midst of that pandemic have been forced to leave their homes, uh, whether they were evicted or whether someone provided some resources. Well, no matter how many resources you give a family to move, children will still be impacted by that move during the middle of a school year. Uh, the final uh, indignity that my students faced as uh, they strove to learn in our classrooms was to look out the windows of our school and see the uh, demolition machines knocking down their former homes. And some of them expressed great concern to me that day as the dust rose from River Chase Apartments or where River Chase Apartments had been. I ask you to please consider how it impacts children and their learning as we strive to make Nashville a great place of education in the United States of America. God bless this council and God bless the state of Tennessee. All right, thank you. Hi, Amy Watts, um, P.O. Box 68094, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, that is my address because I am displaced from living at uh, River Chase Apartments, 524 Joseph Avenue. Um, I apologize. I never speak in front of anyone. That's right. <laughs> so you're, I am terrified right now, but I just want you to know that that is how strongly I feel <laughs> and how passionate I am. Thank you. Um, I prepared some things to say. Um, my life has been very much impacted since this has happened. River Chase was the only place that gave me an opportunity and my daughter as we were homeless beforehand due to COVID and having to move. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about we need affordable housing for our service workers in Nashville. Our service workers are practically our backbone here. They are what we what make us money. They make Nashville money. I'm sorry, and we are pushing them out. Not only are we pushing our service workers out, but we are also pushing out lifelong Nashvilleians. I have been here a better part of my life, and I have never struggled so hard to find affordable housing. And I make a good amount of money, and I still do not make enough to reside here in Nashville. And I'm just, I'm sick, I'm disappointed, and we should all be ashamed of ourselves. And I oppose this, and I, I suggest anyone to vote no, and that's all. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Watt. Good afternoon, Metro Council. My name is Tamika White, and I reside in East Nashville. 214 Meridian Street, 37207. Uh, Ms. White? Yes. Um, so you've already spoken once. Yeah, I was just standing here with the resident. Um, I won't take the whole two minutes if it's okay, Vice Mayor. Well, let me let me check. So we only let people speak once, and I think they switched the time okay. when you started speaking, which allowed you to speak your two minutes. Okay. And we, we, we don't let... Uh, then everybody would be speaking twice. We don't allow that. That's perfectly fine. Can you get clarity on that? So um, we've been, I've been watching the time, and when people switched over, they switched the clock. Okay. Um, but I will uh, tell you this. I mean, obviously, we understand the importance of this. I'm going to let you go ahead. Um, but, yeah, we, we do not let people come up twice and speak on issues. Okay? So um, go ahead. Gotcha. Displacement. 
Nashville, we have to be on the right side of the issue. I stand here in community with River Chase residents and with a lot of you that I know on the Metro Council as a worker in the community. And I've been here all my life. I grew up in South Nashville and Itch Hill. I'm a Nashvillian. I've watched all of the development, the gentrification, every bit of it. Howie Gardens, District 6, Metro Manor, District 6, Prestige Point, District 27, Covenant Crossings, District 16, WC Mobile Home Community, District 5, North Park Village, District 9, Village West, District 9, Blue Note Apartments, District 15, Mosaic Apartments, District 13, Edmondson Manor, District 27, Avana South Oaks, District 16, the Trailer Community on Murfreesboro Road, District 17, and now River Chase Apartments in District 5. We have got to do better. When you guys were elected, we thought we had the most progressive council that this city has ever seen. I love all of y'all. We all work together on so much in this community. And we have got to be on the right side of the issues or we are gonna continue to have people coming in here, sobbing, crying, homeless. It's sad. And I'm very ashamed that we had Metro Council members wanting to bully my councilman, Sean Parker, into passing this bill. Um, hey, my name is Diamond Bill, and um, I live at 515 Heritage Drive, Madison, Tennessee, 37115. And I'm really nervous to stand right and talk to y'all, so just please bear with me. Um, I'm here because of how important it is to me and how much I care about the people of River Chase. If I had to guess, most of you got um, a good start in life and had access to housing and resources that helped you along the way. Most of you don't know what it means to be unhoused or to have to worry about where you will lay your head or where your next meal will come from. Well, I do. I'd have been homeless. I'd have been displaced. I know what it feel like to get dropped off on the school bus in front of the hotel and people talking about you because that's what you're going through. For me to go through that in 2012 and to see it still happening in 2022 is unacceptable. As an organizer with Stand Up Nashville, I have spent the majority of this year working directly with the people at River Chase, knocking on doors, calling and texting, and doing my best to do everything that I could to help them. What I heard from them time and time again is that we don't have a voice. The people of Nashville don't have a voice. But I have a problem with that because we elected y'all. Y'all are here to be our voice, to stand up for us. Nancy Van Reese, you are my councilwoman. I'm asking you directly to vote no. People are getting pushed out. People can't afford to live here. Everything that is being built in this city is being built not for folks that look like me, not for native Nashvillians because we can't afford it, not for black, brown, or immigrant people, and to be honest, not for y'all either because I'm pretty sure most of y'all can't afford the majority of the housing that's here too. And River Chase deserve to live with dignity. If you pass this rezone and allow these luxury units to be built, you are telling the people that they do not matter, that you don't care about their struggles or the situation, and you are willing to cater to developers at any cost. Last month, I took my first flight and I flew to D.C. to protest against the National Multifamily Housing Council, which may sound like a group that protests housing, but actually is a group that fights against renters' rights and policies like rent control. Well, Korea is a part of that group. If you pass this legislation tonight, you are enabling developers to displace your constituents and signaling to developers across the country that Nashville is for sale to the highest bidder. I am asked you to stand up for your community and say enough is enough. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ken Dacey Lafayette. I'm at Date Drive 37211. Um, I'm a native Nashvillian, and I'm tired of the displacement that I've been seeing happening in this city for so many years. I've worked directly with the residents of River Chase, and I saw firsthand the stress that this caused them. Um, Stand Up Nashville spent weeks knocking on around 200 doors alongside NOAA, the Equity Alliance, LIUNA, and SEIU, Local 205, and other volunteers. Uh, we organized residents to have real community meetings with them and to get real community feedback from them as to what 
had been happening to them. At that time, I spoke to residents who had just signed new leases and had only been at the property for three weeks when they found out that they were being displaced. That doesn't sound like a year long notice to me. I remember working with a woman who was 80 years old who was going blind. So in the midst of the trauma of losing her vision, she also had to navigate the trauma of losing her home. Residents made River Chase their home, their community, and allowing them to be displaced is cruel. These residents have had to live through this nightmare and uncertainty for well over a year. They had no place to go and their families and communities have been broken up. When will we say that we can't keep doing this to the people in our community, your constituents? As a native Nashvilleian, I remember East Nashville before it was gentrified, before Black Lives Matter signs replaced the actual black lives of that community. We keep pushing black, brown, immigrant, and working people further and further out of this city. We're telling them they are, they're good for their labor and to work to keep the city running, but not good enough to live in the city that they're helping to build. I'm tired of seeing this cycle continue. Korea has a track record of displacing residents from low income housing to build housing for Oracle workers. Do we think that it's a coincidence that River Chase was targeted at the time Oracle is coming to East Bank? Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Sepulveda, as your constituent, I'm asking you to vote no on this rezoning and to the body at large, I'm asking you to stand with the community and vote no. Thank you for your time. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, council members. Uh, my name is Isaac Swafford. I live at 210 Belmore Avenue. Um, I, as an organizer, have been active in the past year and a half um, talking to River Chase residents, and I've, I've seen everything from, you know, before Cree even came in and bought the property to the recent displacement and destruction of those um, uh, um, buildings. Um, tonight I have a statement to be shared from a River Chase resident, Angie Newsom. Um, she could not be here tonight because she works. Um, she wanted me to express that she thinks that a lot of River Chase residents were, were done wrong. She shared that she ended up getting evicted after being told that she would not be evicted, that she did not have anywhere to go, and that she felt Korea was not trying to help people find any place to go. While Korea has continued to express that they have found housing for residents, Angie said that some people had to get out and find their own places. This is something that I've heard from other residents. Um, even just tonight, um, there was a resident that had to, to leave early because you know, typically after getting off work, she, she goes and, and does door dashing. Um, she was here tonight because she felt compelled to speak. Um, unfortunately, just hearing everyone recount the trauma of being displaced proved too overwhelming. And I think that's something that a lot of River Chase residents do feel. Um, but it's not just about everything that, you know, these residents have gone through you know, upending their lives, you know. Um, this is about not putting rubber stamp on the kind of development plans that have routinely pushed out people from their communities that we just saw um, when we had the map up here. Um, I think that's, that's all I wanted to share. I urge council members to vote no on this rezoning. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Good evening. I'm Martha Carroll. I live at 325 Gatewood Avenue, 37207, about a mile north of River, River Chase, and I'm a member of NOAA's Affordable Housing Task Force. In the winter of 2019, it was publicized that River Chase had been sold. Then President of McFerrin Park, Adam Volrath, called a meeting of reps from East Nashville, neighborhood associations, that was Highland Park and uh, McFerrin and Cleveland. Um, he also invited reps from nonprofits concerned about affordable housing. That group changed over time, but it eventually became the East Bank Work Group. But all along, 
along, many people have worked in numerous ways to ensure the best outcome for the residents of River Chase. Early on, the newest own, the new owner uh, at our request committed to 150 affordable units. When he sold the property to CREA, he shared that commitment and CREA not only agreed to it, but later increased that number to 225 affordable units. I expected the best, believe me. CREA, unlike other developers, provided funds for families, hired housing navigators. I know that Jackie Sims did a lot of that legwork and did a great job in many ways. We canvassed River Chase, got to know residents, listened carefully, helped connect them to resources as we could. Meanwhile, the East Bank Work Group negotiated with CREA, hoping to create a community benefits agreement. And uh, that, as that is the most powerful tool we have given state law. Those negotiations failed. At this point, um, they have an agreement with Urban League, but it does not follow best practice standards for effective CBAs as Kay Bowers, who has deep knowledge and experience after working in the affordable housing industry will explain after me. We need your leadership. We can't really settle for anything less than what is best. And I think that regrettably means a no vote is our best choice at this point. I want to say for all the talk about affordable housing that we've heard tonight and all the other great plans and there are many good plans we are talking about we are talking about 100 units at 60 percent or less of the ami if it's there are other units they're going to be built at 80 80 percent and up to 120 percent that is not affordable housing in nashville thank you I'm Kay Bowers. My address is 4033 Albert Drive, Nashville. I'm co-chair of NOAA's Affordable Housing Task Force and work decades in the affordable housing industry. For every successful CBA, there are so many others that don't fulfill their promises. Best practice community benefit agreements have legal terms that are specific and concrete, strong and sustainable enforcement mechanisms, clearly defined means by which the community can hold a developer and owners accountable to their obligations over time. They have effective community engagement and are negotiated by nonprofits that have track records of representing the interest of communities. Effective CBAs can provide a way for development to be done equitably and with the community. The agreement's current version between Meridian LLC and the Urban League unfortunately falls short of meeting CBA best practices and should not be looked at as a model for the future. Time limits me to share two of our concerns out of the six which you have on your desk. If a pilot is secured for the South Parcel, then the CBA is terminated for all parcels. The term for Metro's new pilot is 15 years. Weak agreement language undermines confidence that the 30-year affordability period obligation can hold. 80 units for households at 80% and 25 units for households at, at 120% of AMI on the South Parcel can be lost after 15 years. Language is missing to address owner obligations for the North Parcel's 120 lower income units when the CBA terminates after the pilot becomes effective. Language allowing for side agreements between an owner and compliance monitor without Urban League's approval. Two sentences, please. Gives unbalanced control to an owner and undermines our confidence and the ability for the owner commitments to be fully enforced. Thank you. Thank you. City Council members. My name is Dana Robinson. I live at 410 Neal Avenue, apartment 14, 37206. I'm a veteran who works at the VA. I've worked at the VA since November 2013. 
and I have been even displaced from Howe Gardens during that time um, and moved three, four times since then trying to find affordable housing. I make $26 an hour and I still can't afford to live in Nashville. What can y'all do about that? I think something needs to be done. You need to vote no on this if, if they can't support somebody making $26 an hour at a job they're always gonna make a paycheck at. I'm not losing my job, but I can't afford to live here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Bill Holbrook. I live at 209 Trutland Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. I live at the corner, or pretty much close to the corner of Trutland and Second. I'm surrounded uh, by this development on two sides, so I feel like I have a really good like look on it. Um, we've heard from uh, a couple of people in the four category. There were 19 of them. Uh, three of them actually live in the neighborhood. Two own property in the neighborhood, but you know, that's a quarter of those folks that were up there, and they told us that this benevolent developer will fix this site, you know, that stormwater is 100 years old. Are you telling me any developer that fixes this site is not going to have to fix the stormwater? Are you telling me any developer that does any building on this site is not going to have to repair some of the roads that are in that neighborhood? These Korea dudes have done a halfway decent job, in my opinion. They've kind of come down on the height. Uh, you know, they've said, hey, we're going to do 10 stories, and now they're like, hey, seven might just do it, all that sort of stuff. But but now, under threat of blowing this whole deal up, Korea is now, like, demanding to get their way, or they're going to blow this whole deal up. It reeks of they're going to take their ball and go home. Are you, as our elected officials, really going to negotiate under this sort of tactics? For real? All right, man, sure. The people have already been moved. That harm has already been done. The buildings will be gone by the end of the week. We, us, all of us, we have time to get this right. That's all that we ask is do this development correctly. Hear from the people that are affected. Thanks for your time. Uh, good evening, members of the Metro Council. My name is David Rutledge. I live at 508 North 2nd Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37207. Uh, I'm the vice president of the McFerrin Park Neighborhood Association, and like Bill, I'm surrounded in two, on two sides by the River Chase Apartments, or the former River Chase Apartments. As many of y'all probably know, I was involved with Stand Up Nashville's efforts to negotiate a legally binding community benefit agreement for the redevelopment of this property. I was never thrilled at the prospect of having a seven to 10 story, 10 story building looming over my backyard but the prospect of creating good jobs and long-term affordable housing through a CBA caused me to hold out hope. Over the last few months, however, a lot has changed. Rather than commit to an ironclad agreement, the developers made vague promises and rolled out a deal that may not even hold up in court while pitting neighbor against neighbor, community group against community group, and council member against council member. At the same time, what used to be a lively street has turned into a deserted patch of concrete. It occurred to me this morning that we may not have to buy much Halloween candy this year because all the kids and families who used to live on the other side of the fence and walk past our house every day are gone. If I had a shred of hope that those families would ever get to return to the site of their former homes, I'd be inclined to support this rezoning. But I don't have any reason to think that can happen, and I know virtually none of my former neighbors will be able to afford to move into the units that the developer plans to build. So I'm asking the council to vote no on this rezoning bill, and to the council members who have signed on as co-sponsors, I'd re respectfully request that you mind your own districts and allow our neighborhood and our representative to have the final say in our affairs. Thank you. Metro Council. I'm Ethan Link. Uh, I live at 4912 uh, Ruskin Avenue, um, and I uh, represent Lyuna Local 386, which represents construction workers and service employees at Vanderbilt University, dozens of whom uh, live in Council District 5 and whose work uh, schedules do not permit them to be here. Um, I'm here to offer some context about the decision before you tonight about the future of the River Chase property. But of course, what we're really discussing is also the future of community benefits agreements in Nashville. 
The first community benefit agreement in the history of this city and state resulted from nine months of intense negotiations that engaged neighbors of the fairgrounds to envision a future they wanted, good jobs, real affordable housing, and child care. Those demands became guarantees in a vigorously vetted, legally binding document, and it set a higher standard for a develop development of a 10 acres of public land. And the text of that agreement is, is openly available online to the public. None of this is true about the real estate deal that you are presented with tonight. CREA picked its terms and then it picked its partner And uh, when, when those terms were not accepted by Stand Up Nashville. Stand Up Nashville did not accept those terms because they were not truly affordable and they were intentionally written to be difficult to enforce, as you've heard today. Um, you have evidence of those shortcomings on your desks. Uh, CREA's partner of last resort had no engagement with the now displaced community while Stand Up Nashville and NOAA had been engaged there for years. Very simply, if you are a council member who celebrated Nashville's first CBA, you must know that this entire uh, real estate transaction fall, falls far short and will undermine the future of CBAs if approved tonight. CREA knows that and has used strong arm tactics to divide this community and this council because it is profitable to do so. I ask you to not be complicit and please vote no. David Lee Myers. I live at 4056 Hollis Hill Drive, 37211. Sandra Sepulveda, you are my councilwoman. Uh, I am a law student at Belmont, a former PATH volunteer. I helped find furniture for River Chase residents the best I could when I was working down at the Habitat Restore. Um, I am standing in solidarity with the residents of River Chase who have been neglected by CREA and all the adjoining uh, parties in favor of this agreement. First, I myself have experienced housing insecurity. I had to move a total of 11 uh, times in the 13 years I have attended public school in Middle Tennessee. It is deeply painful, struggle, uh, struggle, a struggle, and I would not wish that uh, fate on anyone. So my deepest sympathies to the River Chase residents. Second, there's a little dishonesty going on on the fourth side. As any first year law student can tell you, uh, just because you sign a piece of paper does not mean it's enforceable. And I don't think we in good conscience should pass this legislation if it's not clear that it's legal enforceable. I haven't read the, the agreement. I assume many people in this room haven't read the agreement. So let's read the agreement and get River Chase residents input on it. Finally, we're all aware that CREA threatened to pull affordable housing and hold it contingent on the passage of this bill. That is not good faith negotiation. That is coercion. And so I cannot in good conscience support this agreement or support this legislation and I would urge you all either to defer this or to kill the bill uh, and and to conclude, we need strong public housing that cannot be delivered by private developers or nonprofits. The government needs to build public housing. And I would conclude to say, listen to the River Chase residents as one member of the supporting side so smugly said. Good evening, y'all. Uh, my name is Ashley Batchelder. I live at 636 North 5th Street, District 5 in McFerrin Park, just around the corner from the River Chase site. Uh, I just wanted to share a few words because I think um, we need to make the right choice here and I think it really matters. I haven't been directly involved with supporting River Chase residents in the last year, but I was part of those early groups that some people have mentioned three years ago, three and a half years ago, knocking on all those doors, setting up legal clinics, know your rights workshops, and doing that work, sharing information, having conversations, because when we're talking about things like CBAs or any sort of harm reduction work, when we know that people's lives are about to be upheld, we need to do that at the speed of trust, and that is that long-term relationship building work. Um, I hope it's very clear that it sounds like we don't have trust in this process right now from people that we've heard from. Um, 
And while I haven't been involved in the last year or so, I have spent almost 10 years now doing bottom-up tenant organizing. And one thing that I would take away from this work that I've done is that we always have to listen to the residents. There are so many stories that you don't hear in rooms like this. I'm so glad that so many people were able to get here tonight. You don't hear the stories in the courtrooms or on the news. Um, I'll just echo the calls for residents need to be involved in the community benefits agreement. Um, and it just is very clear that it's not sufficient so far. Um, I am a property owner in the district. I also don't believe that the ultimatums, the, the council jockeying over who's supporting the bill, um, it all seems like it's bad faith, um, bad faith arguments and agreements. And I just don't think that this is the precedent that we want to set with, we know the development doors are wide open with the East Bank coming and this doesn't seem like the way that we want to start it. So let's do better. Hello, my name is Benjamin Wachter. I live at 815 Joyce Lane, 37216, District 8. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm kind of going off cuff here because, you know, something that I've just learned in hearing both sides tonight is that Korea's done a really good job, like whitewashing their character and just kind of like, uh, you know, learning how to pay certain nonprofits. Um, you know, the number $320,000 keeps coming up, like that's fair. 175 households, that's uh, less than $2,000 a household. Um, so, like, it seems like billionaires can just kind of basically pay for the good graces. And that's kind of sickening to me. Uh, next, I just want to say uh, something that's going to suck, uh, but because it seems like a lot of you are nice people that took this job um, with good intentions. Unfortunately, the business we need to talk about is one of the most ignored in our city. It's poor and working class renters. And I don't outright blame the 40 of you that are asked to represent 1.2 million residents. You get paid part-time wages for what should be a full-time job job, um, and plans seem to change with every every new mayor, so um, it's how our charter is built, right? It's how the bread is baked. Um, renters make up nearly half of the population in Nashville, but what voice do they really have in public policy? If I lived on a street named after a slave-owning war general, I would have to get all of the property owners around me to sign a petition to change that name. If I want safer streets, if I want streets that are traffic calmed, I have to get the permission of of the property owners around me in order to get work done. And you say, well, why don't renters just come to the meetings and talk to me on a one-on-one -on -one level and let's let's talk these things through? Well, who's gonna feed their, who's gonna take care of their children during that time? Who's going to take care of the uh, hours lost at the one, two, three jobs that they have to work to afford to rent in Nashville, Tennessee? So I just want you all to keep that in mind. Um, and if you're a renter in Nashville, organize. Get together with other renters and uh, start forming councils to talk about these issues. It's difficult talk, but we have to have it. I'm Howard Allen, and I stay at 60 Lester Avenue, 37210, and I'm co-founder of the National Homeless Underground. But I'm a Nashvillian, that's what I'm here as tonight, born and reared here. And I remember before River Chase was River Chase, it was Lane Garden, where the Salvation Army is, that was the label temple. That was the good old days. Today is not good. Uh, the Urban League is supposed to help low-income people. Listen, in exchange for signing the CBA, the Urban League will offer local support and assistance to ongoing development. Cypress will pay the Urban League $65,000 a year for the next 10 years. The agreement was executed in July. When I see my sister here that's homeless, you need to take part of that $65,000 and get her in a place tonight. And the thing of it is, you can't get paid while the low-income people are getting played. You are representatives for all people. It was a great article written last Sunday in the op-eds that explained the difference between affordable housing and low-income housing. She can't afford affordable housing. I can't either. I stay in low-income. And this guy that just came up said public housing. That's what low-income is. But I stand in solidarity 
with the residents of River Chase because if one is displaced, then you're a failure. So I'm asking you to vote no, and for those that are really serious, vote hell no. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marguerite Bean. I live at 804 Ember Lake Drive, 37214. I'm a member of Red Door Collective, a tenant organizing group in the city and a former PATH member. A lot of folks who asked you to vote yes to this had said that the residents of River Chase and those here in support should just be happy with this gift that the developers have given. I think we all can appreciate the fact that Korea has even considered providing this assistance for folks, but you're hearing from the residents that it did not follow through. Therefore, it is not enough. Folks should not have to settle for scraps and left homeless. You heard some of the residents here saying that some folks still do not have housing, did not receive all the assistance that they were promised. It's shameful for them to come up here and claim that they did so much when it shows that many people fell through the cracks and to say that people should just be happy with this. The fact that you're hearing Korea was threatening to take that affordable housing away if they didn't get their way is very telling that many very telling that maybe they don't have people's livelihoods in the community at the forefront of their minds. I'm urging you to vote no so further involvement and discussion directly with the residents can occur. How can you call something a community benefits agreement if the community is not fully involved? Thank you. Hi, my name is India Pung Archer. I live at 868, 868 Joseph Avenue, so just right down the street from River Chase. And I wanted to use my time to read a statement from a River Chase resident who couldn't be here tonight, and they would like to remain anonymous, and part of their statement will uh, glean why. Um, this particular resident said, I lived in River Chase with my grandchildren for three years. River Chase was sometimes dangerous, and they stopped fixing stuff at the end, but the location was perfect for me. I'm so dissatisfied with my new apartment. The location is inconvenient for me, and now a former former property manager from River Chase works here and is targeting me again. My daughter is having issues with childcare now that I live on the opposite side of town and my grandchildren are not able to see each other much, much less. This move from River Chase has brought upheaval for my whole life and I know and I know there will be redevelopment in River Chase, but I can't stay in my current apartment until then. Um, and I just wanted to say that when I was listening to all the people that were here um, asking you to vote for this particular bill, um, they kept comparing it to all the other um, development plans that they've seen. Um, and I just wanted to say that, you know, even though that this plan may be better than other plans out there, um, I'd encourage council to think really critically about what those other plans are that we're comparing this to, um, because all of those plans also, you know, reek of of displacement um, and inequity. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is Kayla Anderson and I live at 1613 Lytton Avenue, 37216. And I will be spending my time sharing thoughts from a community member that was not able to make it here tonight. Thank you Metro Council for hearing us today. I am here today because residents are still homeless. I am here because residents have been hurt. Do the people justice. The people that lived are hurt. The CBA is for the community. The community needs a no, vote, a no vote from Metro Council because we have not provided the River Chase residents in this agreement with the asks that they have requested. We need you to stand in solidarity with the River Chase residents. CREA is bad news. Ask Austin. Hi, my name is Catherine Ung. I live at 2301 Vanderbilt Place, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and I will also be reading a statement from a former resident of River Chase. River Chase wasn't the best place to live, but it was an affordable place to live for my family. Sure, it was not taken care of properly, but it had a whole lot to do with who was running it. I went from working one job and being able to spend time with my kids and attend games they played to paying almost three times what I paid at River Chase, working two jobs plus babysitting and missing every game my, ga my kids had, as well as I don't get any sleep and am up for eviction for the second time since I've been gone from River Chase. There was no low-income houses available when we had to to leave. While I go to one job and another, I see places being built left and right, and I ask myself if our low-income families are going to be able to afford any of them. 
I've called a few to ask how much to rent the three bedroom apartment and 2,800 was the response. I really want to know what is going to be done for low income families or are we not deserving of a place to live? Every day I stress and worry if I'm going to come home and all of our things are gonna be set out by the trash because I'm behind on my rent. Do any of you have that worry on you? Do any of you have to work so much just to make ends meet? Do you get to rest and spend time with your kids? Do you all have a decent place to live? No matter how bad the situation was at River Chase, it was still our home and we were comfortable in it and we were able to afford it. Why not rebuild for who was living there and get the right people taken care of? It wouldn't be as bad as some make it out to be, but I guess we are not deserving of that. It's clear the trauma that many residents at River Chase faced when they were displaced and that the supposed benefits that CREA gave them wasn't enough. So when a community benefits agreement is being built, it should be up to the standard of what the community needs, not the other developments that are far worse. And that is possible if you vote no. Thank you. Hi, my name is Daniel Brocharinsky. I live at 535 Main Street, uh, Nashville 37206. Uh, and I'm here in solidarity with the River Chase community. And I just wanted to start off uh, with a quote uh, from Barbara Ehrenrich. Uh, the working poor, also known as the essential workers, are in fact the major philanthropists of our society. They must neglect their own children so that the children of others will be cared for. They live in substandard housing so that other homes will be shiny and perfect. They endure unemployment and poverty so that inflation will be low and stock prices high. They died of COVID so that you didn't have to. To these anonymous donors, a nameless benefactors, to everyone else. Let's ensure that those who saw the most deaths from COVID by running this city, those who have the least access to healthcare and highest burden of physical and mental health issues, but least access to services, who work to keep the city running, will have a home they can go to without having to work two to three jobs. This dirty deal will set a precedent for developers across the country to feast on the backbones, on the backs of Nashville's backbone. So I urge you to vote no for members of the River Chase community and for all the working people of Nashville. Kumar, 2301 Vanderbilt Place, 37235. I'm here representing a coalition of Vanderbilt students who's been involved with organizing with Leuna and other community organizations, and we're he invited here by Stand Up Nashville. There are 15 of us here and 250 of us on campus who care about what this decision looks like. Um, so first, I wanna talk about affordable, as has been demonstrated here. It hasn't been clear what the word affordable means, and it clearly, CREA does not know what the word affordable means. Second is housing. Um, they've said that they're providing affordable housing, but homes are not just amenities and services. They're about memories, they're about families, they're about children, and, and they're rooted in place. So when you displace people to different parts of the city, you're destroying communities. And that's what we're here to fight against. It doesn't matter how many amenities are provided, there are memories rooted in these places that are being destroyed. And finally, as someone who has not lived in Nashville for that long, I'm asking you what precedent this CBA, or voting yes today, will set for the future. Do you want Nashville to look like San Francisco and other cities that have been repeatedly gentrified by software companies that are creating housing projects here? Or do you want it to look like an actual city with people and communities that are made up of people who know what this city looked like 20 years ago and are invested in it and want to see what it looks like 20 years from now. If you want Nashville to keep looking like Nashville and you want to provide for young people who want this city to grow, then I advise you to vote no today. How are you council members doing today? My name is Nathaniel Carter. I'm representing Stand Up Nashville at 223 Rosa Parks Avenue. I know you all have heard all the all my constituents speak today, but I'm gonna go. I had something I was gonna write down and talk to you all about, but I'm just gonna give you all some facts. We're talking about 100 units 
that are not affordable. They're 80 to 120% AMI. I don't know if a lot of you all read the, the piece of paper that they slid over, but the AMI in the Davidson County is $96,700. That drops down to a family of four people that'll be $75,000 a year. The average income of residents that stayed in River Chase development was $25,000 to $30,000 a year. We was in negotiations with CREA when their own attorney, Jane Smith, said the residents will be able to meet the, will be able to come back, but they just won't meet the requirements. So we got further information from that. She said they won't meet the monetary value of it. So that's the reason why we walked away from them. I want y'all to understand this. They did the same thing down in Austin with Lakeview Apartments. A hundred residents sued them. They made them sign a non-disclosure non agreement so they can't speak on it. They are in cahoots with Oracle. I don't know what we gonna do, y'all. The only way we get our city back is we come together. All 40 of you all have, the, have, the, have this in y'all laps right now to make this decision. And that's all I'm gonna say, and I appreciate y'all, and y'all have a blessed day. Uh, my name is Connor Warmuth. Uh, my address is 2301 Vanderbilt Place, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and I go to Vanderbilt, but I'm going to be reading something on behalf of a, a River Chase resident. Um, they say, I do miss having a home and to be able to walk outside to enjoy walks in nature. <laughs> It's not the same as staying in a hotel. You can't make homemade meals, invite and see family. Uh, holidays may not be the same, but I have to be thankful for my health and my doctors from general who has been and still are keeping me alive. Nashville is growing and it's going to affect the ones like me and some others who can't stop it. If only River Chase had been managed right, I might still have a home. It only needed to be renovated and, and have security. I'm just trying to live one day at a time. I had to use, I had to get, I had to use, I had to get used to how I'm living now since my illness and since my moving. I had a good job once and I had plans of a good home, but now I'm on disability and I have to watch my budget. It's not easy, but I'm surviving. Um, and I would also like to say um, something on my behalf um, in saying that I'm a political science major at Vanderbilt and we study democracy. And what Korea is doing is very anti-democratic in my opinion. <laughs> and so, yeah, I would say vote no on this. Thank you. Okay, anybody else wishing to be heard on this one? Okay. To close the public hearing close, uh, Councilor Anna Parker, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm gonna move for a two meeting deferral on this. Um, I do wanna thank everybody who came out to speak today um, for and against. I know there were a lot of folks that asked us to vote this down, but I do think this project has merit. I think that there uh, is opportunity to um, look at some of the issues with the zoning specifically that were brought up, as well as to uh, meaningfully engage the residents who were displaced from this project. In the meantime, um, in that deferral that I'm asking for. So uh, I would just ask my colleagues to support a two meeting deferral here. Okay, the motion is for a two meeting deferral, properly seconded. Discussion on the two meeting deferral. Uh, Councilmember uh, Withers, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I'm not going to 
speak directly to the issue of the deferral, but what I would like to do, if I can, is to call upon the planning desk. Uh, this item did come before the planning commission, had a great public hearing at the planning commission, by the way. And what I want um, not only the council, but the audience to understand is how, what conditions did the commission place on the SP? And how does that compare with what can be built by right on the property um, if, if, if a property owner were to pull a permit for something that's entitled under the existing zoning? Well, and my reason for doing that is just to understand why, uh, what can be done and how that time frame might work out with it overall. So I understand what you're, well, uh, that's, a, that's really stretching on the deferral. It's just, a, it's a, uh, so I've got a motion to defer, uh, and I understand what you're trying to do, but it, I don't think it ties enough to the deferral motion to, uh, to go that way. Uh, Councilmember Porterfield, were you gonna make a statement? Councilmember Porterfield? I was gonna make a point of order, uh, Vice Mayor, but you just said it, thank okay. you. And also, I need to be marked as abstaining. Okay. Um, uh, good try, Councilmember Weathers. I just don't think it's close enough on this one. Um, let's see, who else? Um, wait a minute, my, my board is broken, so hold on. All right, Councilmember Sepulveda on the deferral. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm gonna be supporting the deferral tonight, and, and I wanna give a very specific reason why. Um, here in the public comment, um, there was one person that came up and said, I, I'm sure many of you can't afford to live where you're at now. Uh, I would be one of those people. <laughs> uh, and I'm not ashamed to say that, and, and I'm gonna give very specific reasons why. Um, Southeast is one of the more affordable places to live in this county. Um, I might be the only council member here who lives with their parents. Um, and it's not just a cultural thing, which it, that does play a big part into it. Um, me being in my 20s also plays a big part into it. Um, and my parents being on disability and me and my sister having to provide for the home. Um, I am a renter, I am a renter to my parents and I, and I do think that the voices of renters aren't always heard. The voices of owners are always put above them. And I do think that we need to start changing that. And to be able to hear some of the people um, come before us tonight and tell us their experience and some of the statements that were read tonight, um, it's important that we make sure that those voices are heard. Um, it, it's not easy to be able to speak to an experience to a group of people uh, like us, right? Uh, that's that's not the easiest thing to do. Um, and having a developer uh, negotiate in good faith and not threaten to walk away from the table because it's not going their way isn't something that we need to be um, entertaining. So I, I would be supporting the deferral tonight because the people of the city need to be heard. We do need more affordable housing true affordable housing. And my story is, is a lucky one, right? I, I am more fortunate than some of the people that came before us tonight. Um, but these stories aren't unique to the city and I wanna remind all of us of that. Okay, thank you. Council Member Evans. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I'm gonna support uh, Councilman Parker tonight with the deferral request as well. But I have a question because I think some of the the pros and cons, you know, that we heard this evening and then also other conversations uh, from other people advocating in favor of the proposal it triggered a lot of questions. So it, will there be a process for us to be able to submit questions to be able to get feedback as part of any future consideration of the proposal? Well, this is, <clears throat> um, I'll, I'll, I'll look to um, our legal counsel, uh, Ms. Darby, but I, this is not a typical policy type thing where you send in questions and we're trying to answer. Um, so uh, this may depend on what council member Parker wants to do over the next uh, two meetings if, um, if they're, 
if he wants to have some type of understanding or have a chance for people to get to understand exactly what's going on. That's, I think that's kind of up to him. So uh, he is making a motion to talk, so I'm gonna call on him. Councilmember Parker, you're recognized. I, I, I was just gonna say that um, if the, um, if and when we get to that point, if the uh, planning chair would entertain it, we could have project representatives come to the planning committee meeting, um, which would afford an opportunity to to ask questions, and I, I believe everyone's inbox is also full of contacts related to this project. If you have specific questions, you can reach out to those individuals. But um, if the if the planning chair would would be well, yeah, it sounds like we can we can have some folks from the project so I, here. I cut off Councilmember Withers' question before, so um, would he be willing to entertain a chance to get his question answered? Councilmember Withers is shaking his head yes. So um, so um, we'll work with Councilmember Withers to set something else like that. Um, okay, thank you. Um, Councilmember Evans, anything else? Okay. Uh, still on the deferral motion, Councilmember Nash, uh, you're recognized. As I listen tonight, it's very obvious um, that the move for many of these people has been traumatic, but that harm has been done. Those people are, are moved or, or, or not moved. Uh, and there is no more river chase. And my concern is that, um, you know, when you have people like Eddie Latimer, Jackie Sims, the Urban League, the Salvation Army, being in support of this, part of the reason for their support is they want to get this project started and get at least some of those uh, affordable apartments available to our, our citizens. I suspect, given the, the circumstances, the the the, the uh, motion to uh, uh, defer is going to pass. Uh, certainly want to respect the councilman's uh, uh, position, but I, I guess my question on the deferral is: wh What do you? What do you? What's the goal in two uh, two meetings? What do you want to see that will make this move forward? Councilmember Parker. Um, specifically, I think we're going to review the specifics of the zoning. Um, so there were some issues that were brought up about ingress and egress and parking, um, as well as uh, making sure that the language in the traffic calming provisions are uh, something that NDOT agrees is appropriate. Um, and then I think we need to have some genuine resident engagement, um, which, you know, I, you know, I was involved uh, years ago with those those groups and those meetings that were mentioned sort of at the end of the last council term and the beginning of this term. So, you know, I've, I was more active with direct resident engagement then, but, um, you know, I think that we can definitely do more um, here in these next couple of weeks. Council Member Nash. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I, the, the, um, the resident engagement a piece I understand, but again, what do you see happen? I think that's a big piece. And what do you expect to come from that, I guess, is for with a, with a two week deferral or two meeting deferral? Do you have a concept yet? Councilmember Parker. Folks are gonna get a chance to uh, talk about their experiences and their needs, and uh, we're gonna hear from them. Thank you, Councilmember Parker and Mr. Vice Mayor Schulman. Uh Councilmember Suara. Ah, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, as somebody who supports affordable housing, it's a tough one for me on some level. But these are the facts. Um, there was displacement. When people have to move from where they're living to another place and have to go through all of that, there was displacement. Uh, fact is that we still have people that are not housed or have problem with housing. Those are the fact. Fact also is that, yes, CREA did do some things and that um, there will be affordable housing in the in the unit. Um, that's fact. Uh, fact also, as we've heard, is that some of those affordable units are not what people can afford. So I came in thinking that I probably might support this on second. So uh, would it sorry, we're on a deferral motion. So just remember that. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm still on the deferral motion. Yeah, uh, tie it to the deferral motion. Yeah, I'm going to tie it back to the deferral motion. Um, so, uh, so uh, yes, so I support the deferral for now, and the reason is because the things that I would like to see happen, 
and somebody asked, Councilman Banash asked that, is that I don't think we should vote no. There's a lot of merit to this. The people are already gone, and so if you vote no, you kill the whole thing. They're still not gonna help get any help, and another developer will just come and do something else. So no is not an option. But I do think that for me personally, any deal that we're making that leaves one person out is not a good deal. If we have one person that is still displaced, it's not good enough. And I think that's the message that I would like us to send in that when we come in and we're building or changing or buying, we should do the full length of making sure that everybody is old. A lot has been done thanks to everybody that has done it, but the ones that are left behind are still our residents, and something needs to happen with that. So what I would like to see happen in that two weeks so far is one, to be able to help the people that are still homeless, that did not get their money. Everybody said some, even the people in support said not everybody has been helped. So why do we have to do it that big? If we're gonna help, then let's help all of them. And so let's make sure we, we see that true. That's one thing that I would like to see happen. The second thing that I think I would love to see happen is that the CBA as, as uh, defined, Everybody said they're for it. There's a good CBA, but why not tighten the language in such a way that it does not create problem in the future? So I think everyone wants to work together. Everyone is already make the progress to do something. I'm just saying to both sides, let's just see it through. Don't abandon it, don't stop it, but just work a little bit more to make sure that it works for everyone. So hopefully we can achieve that in that two weeks, get a good CBA and the people that are left behind, I hope we can help them in that time. Thank you. Thank you for so talking about the deferral motion. Oh yeah, I got it in there. <laughs> uh, Council Member Withers, did you want to be heard? Okay. Uh, Council Member Stiles on the deferral motion. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to commend Councilmember Parker for all the work that he's done, for all the people that have come out tonight and shared their stories, their concerns, and on both sides, I'm really grateful that you've put forth uh, the, the two meeting deferral. I still have some questions and I look forward to hearing some of these community conversations and hearing, hearing from the residents and then also hearing from Korea to be able to ask questions as well. So I appreciate it and I am fully in support of this deferral. Okay. Councilmember Bircher, on the deferral motion. I was gonna be messy, Vice Mayor. I was wanting to know who those council members were, but that's just me back here on the, on the back row. Council like. Member Virtue, sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, council Member Murphy. Thank you. Um, I, I understand where the council member is coming from tonight and asking for another deferral. We've had five deferrals. And here's what I'm concerned about what we heard, and I'd like to hear more of a justification on the deferral. I heard that we're gonna figure out some more about the zoning and NDOT. Um, I would think by now those things have been worked out. Those are things that can be amended. Those are things that go through approvals before it gets to planning, uh, to the planning commission. So I am, and also the, you know, I'm, we heard tonight in the public hearing that stand up walked away. We've heard that the developer has walked away. We are hearing a lot of finger pointing and a lot of um, arguments on both sides of this zoning that are basically the same argument or blame being placed on the other party. And I am concerned that this council is getting too drawn into some of the drama that I know we can't referee that. Um, we've heard from attorneys and it may be good to hear from the council or Metro Legal tonight a little bit more about what we can and cannot do when it comes to terms of the CBA before we decide to defer this or not, because I think that does have a legal impact here potentially if we are making decisions regarding that. But I'm also concerned that about resident engagement that that we do need to hear more of that. I supported that earlier with, with the, um, in South Nashville, but if we've deferred this five times, uh, is two weeks enough to get resident engagement if it, if it hasn't happened already? I, I'd like to hear a little bit more, are there meetings planned? What is the action steps? Because I don't wanna just leave us hanging where there are not actionable items and we're right back here in two weeks or four weeks or in four months. We have about 10 months left in this term. What are we doing for affordable housing? What are we doing for residents? Let's hear some action steps. Um, and, and I would like to hear from Metro Legal because I think that makes an impact on my vote on the deferral. Um, or from I'm, our attorney, whoever wants to. I'm gonna turn it over potato. to Ms. Darby and um, 
will say, uh, uh, Councilmember Murphy, um, affordable housing, obviously we're all in this room together. It's very, very important, and I, I think your comments are, are well made. Now, what can we do in the next four weeks? Um, Ms. Darby, um, you can answer some of it, I assume, tonight. Uh, we, you, uh, I think we're asking me about um, the uh, CBA, and um, essentially it would be inappropriate for the council to condition the passage of zoning bill on the execution of a CBA that would contain provisions that uh, Metro is prohibited by state law from um, requiring of persons or companies in this jurisdiction. I guess to, to clarify that, <coughs> from when we were on, when, when I sat on, I say we because Brett is now on the Planning Commission, when we were at the Planning Commission, we are often told as commissioners, like we can't deliberate on the affordable housing pieces, that that is in violation of the state law, right? So we are very careful about what we say. So Ms. Darby, could you clarify for me, if we are making a decision, if we are voting based on aspects of this of the community benefits agreement is that in violation of state law or is that a gray area I just I'm looking for a little bit more clarity in that regard it's a little it's a little bit of a gray area in that a CBA is not before this council so you're not actually debating on the contents of a community benefits agreement um, um, but like I said, it would be inappropriate to condition legislation based upon the execution of a CBA that contains provisions that Metro is prohibited from requiring of companies and affordable housing inclusion is one of those elements. Any other comments, Councilmember Murphy? I think you're, uh, I think you're on the right track. We're trying to figure out what it is as you're figuring out whether to make the deferral, uh, what you're going to look at over the next several weeks. Um, that's all I can say, uh, Councilmember. Um, Councilmember, wait a minute, Councilmember Stiles. You already commented, Councilmember Hart. Recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. What a difference a day makes. Because everything that Councilmember Murphy just said, I was basically going to say. We are the same page. <laughs> oh, yes. my God. Councilmember Hart, do you want to make a motion to adjourn before we miss this moment? <laughs> No, I, I um, struggled because I really did not want to say anything because I don't necessarily want to take the time. And, 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 and I don't want to take sides one way or the other, but I think that we have to have courage and we have to be bold when we stand on this floor. We have had five deferrals. There's been talk all around about what's going on, what's legal, what's illegal, and nobody really wants to say. But we have inherited a lot of problems that they don't give us time enough to fix. We cannot fix with this particular project or the next two or three and take care of all of the people that need it. We're gonna have to start somewhere. We have an urban league that's been around for 100 years. We have affordable housing resources that has worked for affordable housing for 30, 40 years. I have worked hard for those people that have stood here and talked about being homeless. This is really not about this particular project, but it's about what this city has done and has not done. And it's time for us 
to make a hard decision, do what we have to do. It's gonna have to start somewhere. We're not gonna please everybody. I don't think we need a deferral. I think we need to make a decision because nothing is gonna change in the next four weeks or four months, like she said, in order to make a difference here. We gotta step up and do it. We are gonna vote it up or we are gonna vote it down. Let's put on our big boys and girls and do what we gotta do. Thank you, council member. Okay, we're on a deferral motion, as I remember. And I said that I am not for the deferral. I, I got it. I'm, <laughs> I, I lost it when you were starting talking about the girls and boys things. All right, um, council member Swope, you're next. Question. All right. <clears throat> All right, so um, we're on, um, this is a um, call for the previous question. So we're not voting on the deferral motion. We're just voting on whether we're ready to vote. Previous question, all those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Those no. Previous question prevails. We are voting on a deferral motion. The deferral motion is for two meetings, okay? Um, so uh, we'll try it by voice vote. It's a motion to defer. Okay, the question was, is the public hearing closed? It is. Okay, so we're voting on a deferral motion of two meetings. Got it? Try by voice vote first. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. 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 Opposed, no? No. All right, so we're on the board. Um, all right, um, Mr. Clark, if you would. If you would, uh, we're on a motion to defer two meetings. If you're for the motion, you will vote aye. If you're against it, you will vote no. <coughs> you ready? Okay, Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Um, ayes 20, noes 11, three abstentions, so the motion to defer passes. Okay, so it's deferred two, me uh, deferred two meetings. <coughs> so I would say, um, first of all, I, we very much appreciate everybody being a part of this discussion. It is, um, it is very, very important and uh, we appreciate everybody's um, attendance. Uh, it's now 11 o'clock, we're on page five of the agenda, but it was worth it. <coughs> um, so, um, no, everybody has to stay, nobody can leave. Everybody has to stay. <coughs> All right. Um, so we are now on um, <laughs> we are now on page six of the agenda, item number six. Okay, it is uh, BL 2022-1152 by Councilmember O'Connell. If if I can, um, here, hold on. Yeah, um, for the people who are leaving, if I if I can just ask you quietly to leave, so we can go ahead and keep going. Unless you want to stay, uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, BL 2022-1152 by Councilmember O'Connell. Uh, this is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IWD to MULA zoning for property located at 9, 897 Elm Hill Pike, 430 feet east of Fester's Lane. Councilmember O'Connell, I believe there are no notices on this one. That is correct, Mr. President. I would like to move to defer to the next public hearing. I think it automatically gets deferred because we can't take it up. So it'll be at the next um, at the next public meeting, which will be the first meeting in November. 
Okay. Uh, item number seven, BL 2022 1346 by Council Member Murphy. Uh, this is an ordinance amending Chapter 17.04 and 17.12 of the Metropolitan Code. Add a definition for trade permit, amend regulations on accessory structures, and to amend regulations on the allowed building height of single and two family dwelling, dwellings in the urban zoning overlay district. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, to clear the public hearing open, a show of hands of those who are here in favor of this bill. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this bill. I got one hand in opposition. I didn't see anybody in favor, but one hand in opposition. Sir, if you would come forward. address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Proceed Jeremiah ahead. Wooten, 1828 Wild Oaks Court, 37013. As y'all are aware, we've just spent the last four, almost five hours looking at the effects of a low housing supply in our city. It's div driven developers to build on every square inch of land they can find in our city. The first hour we spent looking at building on um, hilltops out in Cane Ridge, and then the last three, four hours we spent looking at pushing residents out of East Nashville to build more housing there. Right. The last discussion we should be having that involves ADUs is heightening those restrictions and making it harder to build. The only discussion we should have that involves ADUs is making them legal everywhere in the UZO. The UZO is the appropriate place to build density. It is the appropriate place to build housing. It is the appropriate place to solve all of the issues you've heard before you tonight. We should not do anything that makes it even slightly harder to build housing in the city, especially something like an ADU, which provides the easiest form of affordable housing for these displaced residents and for all those struggling with the housing supply in Nashville. The only discussion, again, we should have about ADUs is legalizing them everywhere in the city, at least everywhere in the UZO. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else on this one? Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Murphy, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, I will be moving for approval with brief explanation. This legislation uh, simply is a clarification that codes brought to me. Uh, currently, in single family residence, there was some discrepancies in code approval in the past where basically neighbors were having to kind of play inspector, um, codes inspectors on their neighbors. So what this legislation just simply clarifies, and I'm happy to ask the planning staff to, to resummarize this as well, is this means that in single family zoning, you can't build an additional dwelling unit. So it further just, sums up that single family zoning means single family zoning. It, the zoning administrator has issued guidance already to the zoning examiners that does this, but they wanted to also make sure that it was in the code. So again, all this does is say that if you are in single family zoning, you cannot build an additional unit on your property. And I'm happy to defer to the planning um, table, Ms. Milligan, if she would like to double confirm that that is the interpretation of the planning department as well. Ms. Milligan. Certainly, so um, the, the bill as um, currently submitted, um, Planning Commission did recommend actually a second substitute, which I think is in the packet to get added on. And the second substitute does clarify just a little bit further and simplify the definitions as they were added. Um, and so the, the Planning Commission recommendation su recommended substitute actually um, simplifies the definition just to say that that accessory buildings are not permitted to be um, dwelling units unless otherwise permitted by zoning. Um, there were some standards that were added in um, related to um, electrical service and sink sizes and those sorts of things and, and we recommended taking all of that out and simply simplifying it to say not to be used as separate dwellings unless permitted by zoning. And so that's what the planning proposed second substitute would do. Councilor Murphy. I'm sorry, I did forget there was a second substitute, so I would like to We were gonna to remind you, we've yes. got it in here, okay. I'd like to move the second substitute. All right, so Councilor Murphy has moved the second substitute, properly seconded back to you for an explanation. All right, so the second substitute does what, what Lisa said, and, and again, all this does is, if you're in single family zoning, single family means single family. 
If you'd like to change your zoning to allow for a second dwelling unit, I have no problem with that as long as your council member and your neighbors and things are in support of that. Um, this doesn't change anybody's zoning. It just reconfirms single family means single family, which again, yes, I was surprised as well that we are having to confirm that. But codes and planning have worked out the details. So with that, I'd like to ask for your approval and move the second substitute. All right, again, we got a motion to approve the second substitute on Bill 2022-1346, properly seconded. Discussion on the second substitute, I think I've got Councilmember Parker. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I got in the queue to make sure that um, this second substitute was um, put on and, and wanted to thank the sponsor for this. I had some initial concerns as this legislation came forward. I was planning and permitting a, a, a workshop build in my backyard. And uh, so I was a little bit concerned about how prescriptive the initial language was, but it's moved into more of a, uh, what I would consider a regulatory space that I think is reasonable. So I really appreciate the second substitute and thank you to the sponsor for that. All right, Council Member Allen. Okay, uh, Council Member O'Connell, hold on. Okay. Council Member O'Connell, I've got you on the thing. Yeah, I'd, I had withdrawn my request. I don't know how I showed up again. All right, well, it's still on here, so you have to talk. Council Member Cash. Thanks, uh, Council, the, the sponsor, Council Member Murphy, started by, uh, with a comment about uh, neighbors kind of having to play, I don't remember if the word was detective or inspector, um, and then we kind of got a description of the bill and then the substitute, and I guess I'm, I'm wondering if the clarification changes anything about enforcement and means that those neighbors don't have to pay play um, inspector and, and codes will do that job better. Councilmember Murphy. I'm sorry, I'm happy to clarify that. Um, no, this doesn't touch the enforcement part. What I was trying to get at, and it is a little late, and I may have eaten too many um, gummy bears earlier, so my, my brain is not firing at full, or maybe just firing off. Um, if permits are issued correctly, then in single family zoning, there should not be people living in unsafe, unpermitted apartments over garages. If your apartment was built to garage standards, it's not safe for you to live in it. And that's what's happening in some of my neighborhoods. I know in some of your neighborhoods and in other neighborhoods, and that's what how this legislation came about was talking to the, the zoning administrator about the situation. So my thought process there was if permits are issued appropriately, then hopefully we will be able to stop these illegal builds and unsafe structures and people living in in what is not supposed to be inhabitable. Again, I have no problem if, you, if somebody wants to upzone, upzone. Um, but in single family, you, you, we can't keep having these unpermitted um, and secondary structures that are not allowed. Everybody needs to play by the same rules. If that makes sense, Councilman. Councilmember Cash. That makes sense, and I kind of had the question anyway, so it was not about your uh, gummy consumption. <laughs> I'd like to know, do you have extra gummy bears? Because we're going to be here for a while. Check with Zach Young, yes, sir. Uh, okay, good. All right. All right, we're on the, uh, the motion to approve the second substitute. I've got, that's it. Uh, anybody else on the second substitute? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of the second substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Second substitute's adopted. Councilman Murphy, you're on your bill as Move approval. Councilman Murphy moves approval on BL 2022-1346 as substituted. Um, again, properly seconded. Discussion, Council Member Allen. Thank you, I wanna thank the substitute for working through this because I, 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 I'm more comfortable with the second uh, substitute as well. Thank you, sponsor. Um, and just to circle back around to the, to the um, uh, citizen who spoke about how this affects affordable housing, we do have a new tool that is part of the zoning uh, process where you can in single family zoning as a neighborhood through your council member, through a council process, have a, uh, a day do overlay, which is detached accessory dwelling units. So there there are mechanisms to uh, to allow for more affordable housing if as a neighborhood you decide that that's something that you wanna do. So I just wanna make sure that people are aware of that as part of that base zoning in which it would be legal to do that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member Allen. Uh, anybody, Council Member Cash, on this one, you're still in the queue. Okay, all right, so I believe that's it. Anybody else wanting to be heard on this one? All right.
right, we are on BL 2022 1346 as substituted for passage on second reading. Councilman Murphy made the motion. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one's adopted. Uh, we're on item number eight, BL 2022-1347 by Council Member Withers. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by uh, to amend Chapter 17.12 and 17.40 pertaining to lot averaging, all of which is a part of the bill. Council Member Withers, um, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would request to defer this one indefinitely. I'm still... Uh staff are still working on this item, which was requested by the Planning Commission, okay. uh, but it is an update to the subdivision regs. We're still doing a little bit more stakeholder research. So once that gets back before the Planning Commission, at some point, uh, I'll request to place it back on the agenda. Okay, so the motion is to defer indefinitely. Yes, Properly please. seconded. Any discussion on the motion to defer indefinitely? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one's deferred indefinitely. Uh, item number nine uh, is by Council Member Roten. There were, Council Member Syracuse, if you signed on to this one. Okay, so BL 2022-1369, it's an ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from RS15 SP to SP zoning for properties located 4107 dots in Chapel Court, 4186 dots in Chapel Road. It's 115 feet southwest of Old Hickory Boulevard. Council Member Syracuse, you are recognized on this bill. Thank you, Vice Mayor. On behalf of Councilmember Roten, move for indefinite deferral. Okay, so there's a motion to defer indefinitely, properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion to defer indefinitely? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. This one's deferred indefinitely. Okay, we are on uh, item number 10 by Councilmember Swope. It's a disapproved bill. Councilmember Swope, it's Bill 2022-1371, Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing our AR2A to CS probably located at 6663 Nolensville Pike. Um, apparently, there are no notices. Councilmember Swope, you're recognized. Uh, no, it has, well, there were no notices on purpose. We're gonna defer this to the first public hearing in December. Okay. Uh, and it will come back as a substitute to an SP rather than a commercial zone. All right, so the motion is to defer to the first meeting in December, properly seconded. Any discussion on this one? Seeing none, the motion to defer to December, first meeting in December. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, this one's adopted. Uh, um, item number 11, BL 2022-1399 by Council Member Hall. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS15 to R15 zoning for 4023 Meadow Road, approximately 175 feet south of Cedar Drive, 0.39 acres. Council Member Hall, you're recognized. Uh, would it be possible to do 11 and 12 together? They're related and both are gonna be deferred to be renoticed. And both of them uh, don't have notices, so we'll take right. them together. BL 2022-1403 uh, by Council Member Hall, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS15 to R15 zoning for 3826 Fairview Drive, approximately 175 feet west of Timothy Drive. Council Member Hall, you recognized on both those bills. So those both have to be renoticed, so we we'll need to defer those to the next public meeting. Thank you. All right, uh, tell me again, uh, what do you want to do? You no, know, I was saying they, those both have to be deferred to the next public meeting so that they can be re-noticed. Okay, so you're gonna defer the, both of them to the, uh, because there's no notices, both of them are deferred uh, to the first meeting in November. Okay. So that's 11 and 12. Council members, um, let me get your attention. So we have people sitting in the back, it's now 1115. Um, and they've been patiently waiting for, um, um, there's a couple of things that are up tonight that I think they're here for. Resolutions on homelessness, and um, there's also um, Council Member Syracuse's uh, bill dealing with smoking. Um, do you all, is it, is it okay if we go ahead and take those up now so we can allow those discussions? Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I do think that Council Member Sledge does have a couple of late filed um, amendments and unless someone could, he withdrew, Never mind. Okay, any, but Council Member Young. Well, uh, I mean, with all due respect, Mr. Vice Mayor, are, there are folks here for these zoning bills too, I'm sure that come before those. So I don't, I think we just plow through it. it I mean, I, I'm not sure why, I don't know, that's uh, just where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can get an idea of what, if people are here on zoning measures, I don't mind taking those up right now, but we're gonna be here for a while. Uh, 
uh, and the idea was to try to get these things handled. Councilmember Lee, if you don't want to do it, that's fine, but I'm trying I, to. I don't know if this is inquiry or what, so that we stop saying, um, we don't know, we don't know, I don't know. Why don't we just ask them to raise their hands if any are for zoning? so that we'll know what's going on. Uh, I'm and about to and fall that is asleep. perfectly fine with me. I just have to ask first before I start changing the rules or suspending them. Um, <laughs> if I could get some idea, are, are there people here on a zoning measure? There are. Oh, well, that's a lot of people. Okay. Is it the same one? Is it the same zoning measure? We don't know. We don't know. It's different zoning measures. Ones. Sounds like a different one. All right. How about if we do this? Okay. We will plow. We will plow through the zoning bills, and then after we get through the public hearings on zoning bills, we will then take up the smoking legislation and the homelessness resolutions. Does that sound okay, Councilmember O'Connell? Hold on. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. If we're worried about a quorum, I'd like to also take up the um, family planning resolution. Okay, uh, okay. that's fine. Uh, we, we just, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are gonna be here for a while tonight and we're trying to help you all in the back, okay? Just letting you know, all right? Okay, we're, well, here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna continue on through the public hearings because we do have people here on that. And then uh, we will, we will then stop and start picking up some of the bills that we think people are here for in the back so we can get through those and let you all out of here. And then hopefully we'll have the rest of the bills we'll just be going through after that. You all are welcome to stay until three o'clock in the in the morning, but you don't have to, all right? So um, we will now pick it up from where we started. This is item number 13. Um, it's BL 2022-1432 by Councilmember O'Connell. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying the historic landmark overlay district on property located at 230 Representative John Lewis Way North, uh, 223 4th Avenue North, 130 feet south of Union Street. Uh, Councilmember Council O'Connell, where do you go? All right, item number 14, BL 2022-1433 by Council Member Toombs. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code by changing from R8 to IWD zoning for properties located at 423 Woodfolk Avenue and 410 Haney Avenue. Council Member Toombs, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. It's my understanding that notices didn't go out for this one. I got an email about it. I'll have that one. Is that not accurate? It's item uh, 14, BL 2022-1433. We didn't have that one as no notices. Council, um, Ms. Milligan, you're a council member now. Ms. Milligan, do you know? <laughs> I'm I'm, uh, hold on, let me, give me one second. Okay, we're checking. Uh, while we're checking on that, I'm gonna go back to Council Member O'Connell on item number 13. Uh, that's an ordinance to amend title seven, I've already read that. Okay, Council Member O'Connell on item number 13, we do have something that indicates that notices did not go out. Oh, and okay, I didn't have that in my original notice list, but uh, if it didn't, we can defer. So oh, I had this one as no notice. Matthew? I, I had received three items where notices were not returned and this was not on that list. So if they didn't know, we'll defer. <coughs> okay, we're checking to make sure that we didn't get 13 and 14 mixed up. Ms. Milligan, do you know? Sorry, I'm trying to find the email from my team. Okay, um, yes, so notices for 1432 were not returned and notices for 1433 were also not returned. Okay, All right, so both those defer. measures need to be deferred Perfect. to the first meeting in November. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, next item is 
uh, BL 2022-1434 by Council Member Taylor. Did anybody sign on to that particular bill? Council Member Gamble, ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS5 to R68 zoning for property located at 907 30th Avenue North, 184 feet south of Clare Avenue. Council Member Gamble, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Okay, I'm going to declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of this bill. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to this bill. Seeing nobody on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Gamble, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve, BL 2022-1434, properly seconded. Any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. This is for passage on second reading. All those in favor of 1434, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt on second reading. Next one is BL 2022-1435, which can be taken with 1436. Uh, this is by Council Member Rosenberg. <coughs> 1435, ordinance to amend Title 17. By change from R40 to SP zoning for property located at Charlotte Pike, unnumbered. At the corner of Charlotte Pike and Old Charlotte Pike, it's one acre. And then the companion bill, which is BL 2022-1436. That's an ordinance authorized building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1436. 1435, proposed specific plan zoning district located at Charlotte Pike, unnumbered. Proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Rosenberg, you are recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are in favor of those two bills. Okay, thank you. A show of hands of those who are in opposition to those two bills. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Rosenberg, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Move approval. Got a motion to approve both 1435 and 1436, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of 1435 and 1436 for passes on second reading, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, both of those are adopted. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, this is 1437. I've also got a no notice on these two. Council Member O'Connell, you recognized ordinance to amend Title 17 by applying an historic landmark overlay district property located, property located at 627 2nd Avenue South, 105 feet north of Elm Street Zone, DTC. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, we, uh, I got noticed that we did not receive notices on this one as well, so, or the notices were not distributed, and so we will need to defer this till the next public hearing. Okay, it'll be deferred to the next public hearing, which is the first meeting in November. Item number 19, BL 2022-1438 by Council Member Toom. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS10 to R10 zoning for property located at 1813 Ashton Avenue, 278 feet southwest of John Millette Drive. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1438. Thank you. A show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1438. Seeing nobody in opposition, this is your chance to be on television. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the, the on that bill? 1438. Seeing none, all those in favor of 1438 for passes on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. BL 2022 1439, I assume by Council Member Gamble. This is Taylor and Gamble, ordinance to amend Title 17. By change from RS5 to R68 zoning for property located at 725 25th Avenue North, 150 feet north of Mary Street. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A uh, show of hands of those who are here in favor of 1439. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to 1439. Didn't see any hands either way. Close the public hearing. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Move for approval. Got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. A 1439 is adopted on second reading. This is BL 2022-1440 by Council Member Young. Uh, Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from R IR to RS 3.75 zoning. Properties located at 1322, 1324, 1326, 1330, 1334 Plum Street. Southwest corner of 2nd Street and Plum Street is 0.6 acres. Council Member Young, uh, you're recognized and it's a disapproved bill. Excuse me, I was yawning, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, open the public hearing, please. Uh, we got it. Not that you're boring. I wasn't yawning because, well, 
Let me turn off Councilmember Young's microphone. There you go. Um, no, this is a disapproved bill, Councilmember Young, so we got to hear some slides. Uh, Ms. Milligan, you're recognized. Okay. Yeah, it's on. This is a request to rezone property located on Plum Street. The request is to rezone the property from IR to RS 3.75. Planning Commission recommendation was to disapprove. The existing zoning on the property is IR industrial restrictive. Uh, surrounding zoning on the south is also IR. To the north, you do have some zoning, which is um, R6. The requested zoning is RS 3.75, which is residential single family. The land use policy for the area is D, district industrial, which recognizes um, the existence of existing industrial facilities, particularly to the east of the site. Um, surrounding policies also include mixed use corridor um, north of the property. There are some areas of existing residential development within this IR zoned. Um, those are non-conforming uses that exist under a zoning and policy that don't support those uses. The planning, and this is a land use map um, where you can see what the existing land uses are. So there's industrial to the east. Um, the yellow are single family residential. The light green is vacant. And there is a church across the street. The Planning Commission recommendation was disapproved as the existing policy is district industrial, which does not support residential single family zoning. All right, thank you, Ms. Milligan. Council Member Young? You're recognized. Let's open the public hearing again. All right. Declare the public hearing open. We're on BL 2022-1440. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of that measure. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to that measure. Councilmember Young, I didn't see anybody in opposition. Those in favor wish to speak? Okay. Come on up. Name, address, and you'll have two minutes. And uh, Councilmember Syracuse, could you come up here for just a minute? Good evening, great group of people. Thanks for staying here so late. My name is Leela Biggers. I live at 2301 Luster Road in Goodlitzville, Tennessee, 37072. I'm here on behalf of the uh, property owner. He could not make it, and he has asked me to read a letter. I apologize for being unable to attend today's hearing due to work. While serving in the Marine Corps in Af Afghanistan, I saved my first $10,000 of my life, and my father helped me in purchasing this property on Plum Street. We had hopes of getting the property to the highest and best use for the land. My father and I have owned this for over 15 years, and unfortunately for me, as owner, my hands have been tied since these small lots, these are the vacant lots, there's one resi current residential home on one small lot, which if it was burned down, it could not be rebuilt, which is zoned industrial and commercial, cannot be built residential and does not have a market for anyone who would wish to build on the property as the current overlay uh, requests. Affordable housing would be the highest and best use of this land. This pocket of Nashville has not appreciated anywhere near the rate as everything else due to this issue. I ask the council to please consider approving this request to rezone so that more affordable homes can be built for the city, which continues to grow daily. Uh, again, this is an overlay that has been in existence, if I'm not mistaken, since 19. 74, it was placed on this very small community of residential homes. There is some light industrial use uh, to one side and it backs up to a railroad track. It is outdated, the plan that's currently on it. And I ask that you consider making a change to uh, the single family residential homes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next speaker. 
Hello, Council. My name is Chris Wright. Uh, I live at 307A South 10th Street in Nashville. I would be the buyer of the properties if this rezone goes through. Um, so we have an opportunity here to develop this land and, and build nine or 10 single family homes. These would be mid-size um, homes, three bedroom, two and a half bath. Um, we feel like asking for a rezone to RS 3.75 is uh, consistent with uh, the zoning that's across the street and nearby. Just to the north, there is a subdivision of single family homes. There's also an apartment to the north and there's a church across the street. There's land uh, right across the street is R6. Um, we're just asking for RS, which would just be single family homes per lot. Um, so just like to ask for your support in this rezone. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard on this one? Okay, declare the public hearing closed. Council Member Young, you're recognized. I would like to move approval, but I think there might have been a caption issue is what I was just informed of. Now, Ms. Milligan, caption issue on 1440. <laughs> Um, yes, not well, not in the caption. It's in the body of the bill where it references MUIA as opposed to um, okay. the reason, but it was noticed properly and so since zoning bills are amendable on third, um, it can be amended at it can be amended at third. Um, the council office is going to, uh, the council office drafted this bill as it was a disapproval and they'll work to get it uh, corrected through third amendment. Cool. I mean, thanks. <laughs> I would move approval, Mr. Weiss. All right, so Council Member Young moves approval of Bill 2022-1440 for passage on second reading properly. Seconded. Any discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor of Bill 2022-1440 for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Those no, you adopt. Um, it is my understanding that there may be a lot of people sitting here waiting for um, uh, Bill 30, item 30 on the agenda, okay? And it's my understanding that it also may be getting ready to be deferred. So uh, I'm gonna, without objection, I'm gonna take that one right now so we can uh, go ahead and deal with this one. Uh, item number 30, BL 2022-1366, it's on your calendar. It's under third reading in public hearing. It's on page 16. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CL to MUNANS zoning for property located at 3517 Old Clarksville Pike. Council Member Hall, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, yes, that one's going to be deferred to the first meeting in November, and we've already gone in the back and had that conversation, so everybody was aware. We were just waiting on you to announce it. Okay, For deferred to the first meeting, but there is a committee report. It's planning and zoning. Okay. Let me get the committee report, then we can get that, and then we can tell them. Okay. Councilmember Withers, we are taking um, item number 30 out of order. It's Bill 2022-1366 by Councilmember Hall. It was under third reading and public hearing. It was referred to planning and zoning. He's planning on deferring. We're just looking for a committee report. It was approved. Oh, it was approved at the last meeting, okay. All right, so it's good to go. All right, all right. So, Councilmember Hall, you're moving to defer to the first, first meeting, meeting in November. November. Yes. Okay. The the motion is to defer to the first meeting in November. Properly seconded. Any discussion on this one? Any discussion? No, it's no. We're not having the public hearing. He's just deferring tonight. Um, okay. Well, we've got a motion to defer. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Opposed, no. This one is deferred uh, to the first meeting in November, okay? All right, we're back on item 22. Item 22, page 13, BL 2022-1441 by Council Member Stiles. This is an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RM20 to AR2A zoning. Property located at 1421 Rural Hill Road. It's approximately 3370 feet north of the intersection of Rural Hill Road and Mount View Road. Council Member Stiles, you're recognized. 
Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm actually going to have to withdraw this bill, but I wanted to make a brief comment if I could right before. Okay, so you're just withdrawing, yeah. but you can make a brief comment. Okay. Councilmember yeah. Styles. So we've had a lot of conversation, and tonight started off with a conversation in the Southeast regarding <coughs> making sure that we don't have too much density and making sure that we're focusing on infrastructure. And this particular piece of property is on a corner right across the street from the mall on a two lane road. I'm, I'm disappointed. I found out that paperwork was not properly filed. And so we discovered it had been, it was supposed to have been filed months ago. I wouldn't have um, put, this, put this bill in to downzone this land. But 186 apartments going across from two single family homes with senior citizens. I just want us to do better. I think when we're talking about, I mean, Councilmember Vercher has mentioned several times about the Southeast and our infrastructure and our needs. I'm just begging, planning, zoning, when people are asking to, to do these ridiculous projects, that is there some way that we can take the needs of communities in mind? Because if I could have downzoned this piece of property, I would have in a heartbeat if I had, it, we had held, had this clarification. So. That's just my plea, and I'm withdrawing the bill. Okay. Thank you. Bill is withdrawn. Thank you, Councilmember Stiles. We're on item number 23, BL 2022-1442 by Councilmember Hall. Ordinance to find a Title 17 by change from RM9NS to RS15 zoning. For property located at Ashland City Highway, unnumbered. Councilmember Hall, you're recognized. Withdrawal. Uh, this bill is withdrawn. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're on BL 2022-1443 by Councilmember Syracuse. It can be taken with item number 25, which is 1444. Ordinance to amend Tunnel 17 by changing from RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at 2001 Lebanon Pike and Lebanon Pike unnumbered, 300 feet southwest of Quinn Circle. Uh, that's 1443, and the companion bill is 1444. Uh, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1443. It's a proposed specific plan zoning district located at 2001 Lebanon Pike. Lebanon Pike unnumbered. A proposed ordinance requires certain materials to be restricted in the construction of buildings. Councilmember Syracuse, you are recognized on both those bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Declare the public hearing open on 1443 and 1444. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those two bills. Okay. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition of those two bills. Seeing nobody in opposition, those in favor wish to speak. Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. Uh, Councilmember Syracuse moves the approval of 1443 and 1444 on second reading. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the two bills say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, BL 2022 1445 by Councilmember Toombs. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from RS10 to R10 zoning for properties located at River Drive, unnumbered 1716, 1805, 1823, and 3101 River Drive, east of Hyde's Ferry Road. It's 2.14 acres. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Request to open a public hearing. Declare the public hearing open. A show of hands of those who are here in favor of that bill. There you go. Show of hands of those who are here in opposition to that bill. Seeing nobody in opposition, you want to speak? Nope. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Toombs, you're recognized. Thank you. Move for approval. Okay, you got a substitute on this. Do you want to do I, that? I'm not going to move that today. Okay. All right. So uh, Councilmember Toombs moves uh, for passage of uh, 1445 on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell, BL 2022-1446, Ordinance to amend Title 17. By changing from DTC to SP zoning for pipes located at 507, 509, 511, 515, 517, 519, and 521, Second Avenue South, 203 Peabody Street, and 518, Third Avenue South, the Southwest Corner of Peabody Street, and Second Avenue South. Councilmember O'Connell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. This one is another one with notice issues, and so we will defer to the next public hearing. All right, first meeting in November. Uh, item number 28 can be taken with item 29. These are Councilmember Roberts' bills. Uh, 
2022-1447. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to SB zoning for property located at 1650 40, 54th Avenue North, current terminus of 54th Avenue North, it's 10.09 acres. And the companion bill, 1448, ordinance to authorize building material restrictions and requirements for BL. 2022-1447, proposed specific plan zoning district located at 1650 54th Avenue, 54th Avenue North, proposed ordinance requires certain materials restricting the construction of building. Council Member Roberts, you recognize both those bills. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, declare the public hearing open on 1447 and 1448. Show of hands of those who are here in favor of those bills. All right, show of hands of those who are here in opposition to those two bills. Okay, we have opposition. So those in favor wish to speak, if you would please come on down. Go ahead and um, line up. Okay, and those who are in opposition, I'll, I'll call you all next, okay. Right, uh, name, address, and then you'll have two minutes in which to speak. Right. Okay, evening everyone. My name is Luca Barber, and I live at 3613 Pilcher Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee. That's 37203. Um, I'm responsible for Mill Creek's development work here in Nashville. Um, so again, just want to say thank you to everybody for being, being here late in the evening. Uh, thank you, Mary Carolyn. Thank you to the Planning Commission who did approve this for us. Uh, thank you to the Neighborhood Association for the Nations. Uh, we spent countless hours working with Mary Carroll in the neighborhood, uh, Metro planning, trying to make sure that this is truly a beneficial project for everyone involved. Um, and I'd also like to just make sure that everyone is aware that we spent the last 18 months working to clean this site up because there was a large oil spill on this site by Shell. So it is environmentally contaminated, so it's 10 acres that we will be cleaning up. Um, excuse me, we will also be planting a number of trees, doing a lot of public benefits, public dog park, open space, an art walk, a greenway, retail for the community, a community garden as well. So um, if there is any opposition here, you know, we have tried our best to make sure that every single shareholder involved is getting something that's great for the nations, for the community. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to anybody who opposes the project, but we hope that you guys recognize we've done what we can um, and that you vote yes for this. So thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Okay, uh, those who are opposed, if you'd come on up, uh, name, address, and then you'd have two minutes in which to speak. Hello, my name is Ashley Presslinger. I live at 1638 54th Avenue North in the Nations. Um, let me first start by saying that I don't necessarily oppose this project. I oppose the way that they are trying to access this project. Um, as I said, I live on 54th Avenue North, and there are currently about 600 residents, roughly, in that area that uses 54th Avenue to get to and from daily. Um, they are trying to propose 400 units, one and two bedrooms, which would essentially be another six to 700 people easily. That would double the amount of vehicles and pedestrians, essentially, on 54th Avenue. Um, Mill Creek did put on a presentation um, with their renderings of the project. It looked beautiful, it looked great, but my concern is 54th Avenue. I would love to see a rendering of 54th Avenue and the traffic density, the congestion, and the fact that Centennial Boulevard is the only way in and out of this community, and there is no traffic light at Centennial Boulevard and 54th Avenue right now. It is already dangerous as is, and that is my main concern of how this development is going to be accessed and what it's going to do to 54th Avenue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next speaker. My name is Joseph Bain. I live at 1638 54th Avenue, apartment 308 in Nashville. And I'm opposed to this for various reasons. One, there are some false premises the says is that the terminus of 54th Avenue, well, the drawing that they submit shows that the 54th Avenue going past what is actually there. The plan, the 
subdivision that's there now with the silo house was designed and built to accommodate a certain number of houses or dwellings. This will more than double the number of dwellings uh, and people there. And as Ashley said, the uh, traffic is going to increase tremendously. It's already uh, a problem. Parking's a problem. There was a traffic study done, I understand, before the new Silo West uh, condos uh, were uh, occupied, so that traffic study is wrong. I question uh, to the amount of the dis the density of families in this area now. There is no provision for the young families for, for their kids to go out and play. They don't have the space. I, I see people, the kids don't have any place to play right now. Um, one of the problems is of the development is the parking plan for one person per uh, unit, and oftentimes there's two two cars per unit, no parking place for them. That's a big thing. I'm out of time. I got more of issues, but Mr. Bain, I appreciate Thank you. you coming. All right. Um, anybody else? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Councilmember Roberts, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. All right. Uh, Councilmember Roberts has moved approval 1447 and 1448 on second reading. Properly seconded. Back to you. So we've been talking about this for almost, like he said, 18 months, and I made him go back to the drawing board over and over, and really the ratio is 1.5 per bed, not per unit. And so what we did was we asked them to build a, a walkway in the back because every time something north of Centennial's gotten developed, I've asked for them to leave space. So eventually you'll be able to go from Ted Rhodes all the way to the Tennessee State Prison. I think that it might be under, misunderstood because there is really only one ingress egress because of CSX. So when crossing 54th, they're cleaning up a brownfield, which is a huge deal. It's a 10 acre brownfield that's been that way and it was a, a huge fight for them to get this from Shell because Shell had a lot of restrictions on the land. Um, we really did our due diligence. This was something that my community talked about, my planning and zoning committee signed off on, my neighborhood association signed off on, I signed off on. I didn't know there was anybody um, opposed to it. So I, I will, I'd love to talk to them more. But I felt like everything that we, they, they presented, we hit on. I mean, I, I don't know that there could be a better plan for this property. So with that, I would ask for your approval. Okay, so we have a motion to approve 1447 and 1448. So this is on second reading. So there's another reading on this bill. Um, I got a motion to approve properly second discussion on the bill. Councilmember Weathers, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, and I appreciate folks coming out. I, I do think I recall maybe uh, some of the email correspondence that came in when this came before the Planning Commission, but I'm wondering if Lisa from Planning just can uh, talk to how the what discussion was like at planning and uh, just also remind us from that traffic impact study if there's a how some of those matters might be addressed upon final site plan with this SP miss Milligan certainly um, this did come through the Planning Commission and I believe went through on consent um, there is there was a traffic study that was completed and um, someone spoke to um, that there was not a signal at Centennial and 54th actually one of the conditions of the traffic and parking recommendation is that with the final site plan a warrant analysis be done for that intersection of 54th and Centennial to study the capacity and the safety um, to determine if a, if a signal is warranted there. So um, there's studies that have to be done before signals can be installed to ensure that, to ensure that they're actually warranted, otherwise they can't be installed. So um, there is a requirement that that be done um, with the final site plan. So that was covered with the uh, traffic impact study. Okay. Councilman Withers, anything else? Okay, Councilman Roberts. Motion, uh, the motion is to approve on second reading. All right, anything else? 
seeing none ready to vote all those in favor of 1447 and 1448 for passage on second reading say aye, aye. opposed no okay the bills pass on second reading thank you all for being here okay um we are now on um okay so when i said we are now through with bills on public hearing uh we are now on um we're now on consent resolutions and resolutions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the first, um, I guess we'll pick up the first five uh, so we can go ahead and get those heard and then, um, and then we'll do uh, Council Member Syracuse's bill uh, and then we will go back to the consent agenda, okay? Everybody good? All right, so we are now on uh, Item number 31, RS 2022-1696. Uh, this is by Council Member Sepulveda, Gamble, Parker, and others. It's a resolution appropriating $25 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds from fund number 30216 to the Metropolitan Development and Housing Authority to provide low-cost loans to developers for the addition of deeply affordable uh, housing units with loan proceeds to be used to address affordable housing and homeless services. Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized on your resolution. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I, I, I'm just gonna real quickly thank everyone who came to the, to the joint committee meeting and everyone who's worked on these legislations. Um, I'm not gonna talk about them. I'm just gonna go ahead and move them so we could take up the amendments since we have discussed them. All right, so like, I've got a couple of committee reports to get. Committee reports, okay. that would be a way Affordable to start. Affordable Housing, Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. <laughs> Yes, affordable housing voted nine, four, and zero against on the resolution and on both of the amendments. Okay, thank you. And Council Member Gamble's got uh, budget. Yes, the budget committee uh, voted nine in favor, two against, and two not voting on uh, the O'Connell substitute. 12 in favor, zero against, one not voting on the Johnston substitute, and on the bill, 12 in favor, zero against, one not voting. Okay, all right, so Council Member Sepulveda, uh, you wanna move your resolution yes. so we can get it before us, okay? Right. Council Member Sepulveda moves resolution RS 2022-1696, properly seconded. Okay, so we have several, um, substitutes to consider from the original um, resolution. The first one is Council Member Johnston's. Council Member Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you. Um, do I need to move the substitute? Yeah. Yes, so I'd like to move the substitute, please. Okay, so Council Member Johnston is moving uh, the first substitute properly second and back to you. So I'm happy to go into detail with this. I think we had robust conversations in multiple council meetings and it's after midnight. Um, so I think I will um, thank the administration for working with me on this substitute to address the multiple concerns that we had um, as it relates to this, this loan program. Um, and so with that, I, I will just move, uh, move the substitute, and, but I'm open to answer any questions as, All right, as well. So we've got a couple of people in the queue. We also have um, two uh, amendments on your substitute, I think. I'm reading these correctly, but um, let me make let me get to people in the queue first, and then we'll come back. Council sure. Member Van Rees, you're recognized. Uh, yes, I just to be uh, noted as abstaining from all substitutes and this particular resolution as a matter of uh, potential conflict of interest. Thank you. Okay, uh, that'll be so marked. All right, Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. I was gonna call the question, but you said there's some amendments, so. All right, let us um, let me get through the amendments and then I'll come back to you if that's okay. So I've got... Okay, so she's moved the substitute. Oh, well, I thought it was... Before we put amendments on the substitute. Okay, both of them, both Berkeley's and Fletch's. Sledge's not even here, he's gonna withdraw his. And Berkeley, I think, will put hers on. Aren't there two of them? Let's make sure we got this right. 
I've got two amendments sitting here on this one. <laughs> but maybe that's this. All right, hold on. We're just making sure we've got these correct. Yeah, so that would need go to go on after the substitute. Emerson's looking at us. So. I just is a subject. Okay. Okay, so we got a vote on hers. Got it. Okay. All right. Councilmember Johnston, I think we're clear now. So um, you have moved your substitute. It's been properly seconded. Uh, there are apparently no amendments going on to your substitute. So um, we're, we're holding on. Councilmember Allen has a, an amendment, that, but that can be put on after the substitute is passed. Okay. All right. So uh, Councilmember Johnston is on her substitute. There are no other amendments unless I'm missing something, unless we're missing something up front. So we are on your substitute. Move approval. Okay. And now, Councilmember Mendes. Oh, the question. All right. So the previous question. All right. So uh, Councilmember Rutherford, the previous question has been called, so I can't come to you unless it's a point of order. It essentially is. I just need to note that I also need to abstain on okay. all votes related to this bill due to a conflict with my employer. That's fine. Okay. So um, we're previous question. We're voting on the previous question, not on the substitute. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Yeah. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. Council Member Johnston, you're on your substitute. We're voting on the motion uh, to approve Council Member Johnston's substitute resolution on 1696. All right. All those in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's on. And now, this is, I think, considered a friendly substitute, Council Member Sepulveda. So uh, I still consider it your resolution. All right. So, Council Member Sepulveda, you're on your resolution as substituted by Council Member Johnston. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay. Um, I think there was a second substitute. Is that being offered? So, yeah. uh, it doesn't, okay. Council Member O'Connell, you're not offering your substitute. So, I'd like to um, move the uh, legislation as substituted. Okay, so Council Member Sepulveda is moving RS 2022 1696 huh? as substituted, properly seconded, and we have an amendment to that. Uh, and I'm going to go to Council Member Allen. Councilmember Allen, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. During the discussion in Budget Committee, a question came up about was there a minimum or a maximum, um, and the statement was made uh, by Emil Alexander from MDHA that, that yes, they intended to have a 2% minimum, uh, but it was not anywhere to be found or referenced in the um, in the legislation as it was currently written. So I am simply offering an amendment that spells out that 2% that is spelled out somewhere in uh, policy something, but not specifically in the legislation. Okay. So, council members, you would have gotten this today, I think, as a late filed amendment. So, council member Allen, are you offering this as an amendment to the? Uh, I'm offering that as a late filed substitute. amendment, and I okay. can ask for committee reports from rules if you need council me to. Member Murphy, did it go before rules? Fully vetted before rules. Seven in favor of allowing the rule suspension. Zero against. Okay. So, council member Allen, you'll need to suspend the rules to get this before us. I would like to suspend the rules. All right. Uh, Councilmember Allen is moving to suspend the rules to get this amendment um, before us on RS 2022-1696 as substituted. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, rules were suspended. You're on your amendment. Move the amendment. So Councilmember Allen has moved the amendment uh, to 1696, properly seconded, and she has already explained the amendment. Any questions on the amendment? I know it's late, but if you have questions, uh, we need to get this right. Okay. Uh, and I've got a list of people who are on the board. Does anybody want to be heard on the amendment? Um, Councilmember Mendez, uh, Councilmember O'Connell on the amendment, um, Councilmember Johnston on the amendment. I think that's it. 
And Councilmember Van Rees is, Councilmember Van Rees on the amendment? Oh, just an abstention, okay. Uh, Councilmember Allen, we're ready to vote on your amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The amendment's adopted. All right, so we are now, uh, Councilmember Sepulveda, we are on your resolution RS 2022-1696 as substituted, as amended for passage. I just, just hold on. Now. Move, um, move as substituted and uh, as amended. Okay, so Council Member Sepulveda is moving RS 2022-1696 as substituted, as amended for passage. Properly seconded, discussion on the resolution. Anybody have, I've got people on the board. Anybody want to be heard on this? Council Member O'Connell. Oh, oh, I do. You do? I, okay. I saw Councilmember Mendez in the queue. I didn't know if he All was right. Well, any. these are old, uh, so I'm going to go to Councilmember Mendez first, and I'll go back to you, Councilmember O'Connell, because he's uh, in front of you on the board. Previous question. <laughs> that, I was afraid of that. So cruel. <laughs> so cruel, but it is midnight. So, um, uh, previous question. Uh, Councilmember Mendez has called the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Previous question prevails. Uh, okay. Previous question prevails. We are on the resolution as substituted as amended. All those in favor of that, of 1696 for passage, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Resolution passes, okay. And with abstentions from Councilmember Van Rees and Councilmember Rutherford. All right, we are now on uh, item number 32, RS 2022, 1697 by Councilmember Sepulveda, Gamble, Parker, and others. It's a resolution appropriating $9 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds from Fund 30216 to the Metro Homeless Impact Division of Metro Social Services to build capacity and housing first case management services, including establishing assertive community treatment teams. Councilmember Sepulveda, you are recognized on your resolution. Committee reports. Uh, affordable housing, Council Member Hauser. Yes, affordable housing approved, a nine in favor, zero against. All right, uh, in the amendment, did you have the amendment on there as well? This is from Council Member Johnston. Yes, we approve that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, budget and Finance, Council Member Gamble. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 12 in favor, zero against. All right, uh, amendment two? On the mem as amended. Okay, and Human Services, Council Member Druffel. Yeah, Human Service uh, passed as is amended, five in favor, zero against. All right, thank you, Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Thank you, I'll move the legislation I hear the substitute. All right, so I've got an RS 2022 1697. Uh, Councilmember Sepulveda moves the resolution properly seconded. Councilmember Johnston for an amendment. Yes, this was um, fully vetted with, uh, with through multiple um, committees. It just adds in some defined deliverables for uh, reporting and accounting and I'd move approval of the amendment, please. All right, Councilmember Johnston has moved approval of the amendment, which she just explained, properly seconded. Discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's adopted. Councilmember Sepulveda, back on your resolution as amended. Move as amended. Councilmember Sepulveda moves RS 2022 1697 as amended, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution as amended say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, resolution is adopted, 1697. We're on item number 33, RS 2022, 1698, by Council Member Sepulveda, Gamble, Parker, and others. This is a resolution appropriating $9 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds from Fund 30216 to the Metro Homeless Impact Division of Metro Social Services for temporary interim gap housing. Council Member Sepulveda, uh, you're recognized on um, RS 2022, 1698. Committee reports. All right, affordable housing, Council Member Hauser. Yes, affordable housing approved, eight in favor, zero against. And we also approve the uh, Johnston Amendment. Okay, thank you. Council Member Gamble, you're recognized. Budget and Finance recommended approval as amended, 13 in favor, zero against. All right, thank you. Human Services, Council Member Truffle. Human Services passes uh, five in favor, zero against uh, for the as amended. All right, so um, we are on Council Member Sepulveda, back to you. 
Move resolution. Okay, so Councilmember Sepulveda moves the resolution 1698, properly seconded. There's an amendment. Councilmember Johnston, you're recognized. Thank you. This amendment does a little bit more uh, than the others as, as it relates to defined deliverables and, and reporting and accounting, where we felt it was very important to, to articulate the intent to provide 24 hour security uh, and wraparound services at 95 Wallace Road, which is some, some single room um, temporary housing. Um, and so that does that in here. It also references another um, resolution where we appropriate four point some odd uh, million dollars um, for the expansion of mobile navigation and, and it defines those deliverables as well um, and so that we're going to hear that in a separate resolution where it gets really specific with that particular MOU. I think I think it's an MOU. Um, but so this satisfied uh, myself, uh, who is a neighboring um, district council member of this particular uh, facility um, in Council Council Lady Sepulveda's district, where she is um, concerned about it as well. And so I move the amendment, please. All right. So Councilmember Johnston moves amendment number one. She just described it properly. Second to discussion on the amendment. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of amendment number one say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the amendment's on. Um, Council Member Toombs, there's a second amendment. Do you plan to move that? <coughs> okay. I don't. Doesn't plan to move it? Okay, so Council Member Sepulveda, we're back on RS 2022-1698 as amended. So move as amended. Council Member Sepulveda moves RS 2022-1698 as amended, properly seconded. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 1698 as amended say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. RS 2022 1699. This is item number 34. Council Member Sepulveda, Gamble, Parker, and others. It's a resolution appropriating $7 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds from Fund 30216 to the Metro Homeless Impact Division of Metro Social Services to establish a low barrier housing collective and to fund competitive grants for support services. Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Committee reports. Uh, affordable housing. Council Member Hauser. Yes. Affordable housing approved, eight in favor, zero against. Okay. And that's with an amendment, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, budget and finance. Council Member Gamble. Budget and finance recommended approval as amended, 13 in favor, zero against. All right. And human services. Council Member Truffle. Uh, human services uh, approves six in favor, zero against as amended. All right. Thank you. Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Move resolution. All right, so Council Member Sepulveda moves RS 2022-1699 uh, for passage. Council Member Johnston, you have an amendment. Thank you, again, adding some defined deliverables, accounting and reporting. This one also is a little bit different in that um, four million of this uh, $7 million resolution is for competitive grants. And so any contract, one of the stipulations in this particular amendment is that any contract that's awarded after RFP um, for those grants be approved by this council um, so that we have some oversight with that as well. So I move the okay. uh, move the amendment. I'm so sorry. Council Member Johnston moves amendment number one to 1699 properly seconded. Any discussion on the amendment? Oh, Council Member Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to stand and uh, thank Councilmember Johnston for all of the hard work and effort that she put into these uh, amendments and, and everything that she did. She did an exceptional job and I think it's worthy of mentioning so. All right. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we haven't passed the amendment yet. Yeah, All right. Yeah, so. move, move approval again, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Amendment's adopted. Councilmember Sepulveda, you're on your resolution as amended. It looks like there's a second amendment. Is that being offered? 1699. Uh, we think there's only the one. Okay. I'm just seeing exhibit B. Um, oh, okay. It's just an exhibit, so you're okay. Okay. Um, move as amended. So Council Member Sepulveda moves RS 2022 1699 as amended for passage. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Hurt, you're going to thank some more people? Actually, I am. Okay. <laughs> 
I, I just wanted to stand and thank April Calvin because she stepped in uh, very quickly and has been very diligent and uh, very, I think she showed great leadership in the things that she did and I'm just grateful for everything that she did as well and I just thought that was worth mentioning. All right, thank you, Council Member Hurd. Thank you, Ms. Calvin. And there's some people still in the back that have been working on this with Ms. Calvin and they need to be thanked as well. <laughs> So we're on the resolution as amended for passage. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Resolution as amended is passed. All right. So um, uh, one last thing on that. I'd mentioned this to a couple of council members. I know there are reports coming with all these things. I know there's a lot of interest in making sure that um, we're keeping an eye on this. So uh, I am interested in putting together a group to keep an eye on in terms of getting the reports and reporting back. So if you're interested in serving, let me know. I know some of the, uh, the chairs will. I know Council Member Johnston is interested. Just let me know. Okay, this is important, and people made it very clear that they wanted they wanted accountability, and we and we can do that. Okay, all right, we're on item number 35. This is RS 2022-1734. Councilmember Porterfield, Sepulveda, Benedict, and others. It's a resolution appropriating the amount of $500,000 from the unencumbered balance of appropriations initially to the Metro Council, the Mayor's Office, and uh, and NDOT for the purpose of funding a grant to Planned Parenthood of Tennessee in North Mississippi. Council Member Porterfield, you are recognized on your resolution. And where is she? Okay. okay. Next. Council Member Sepulveda, can you handle this in the meantime? Council Member Sepulveda, you're recognized. Committee reports. All right. Uh, budget and finance, Council Member Gamble. Budget and finance recommended approval as substituted by council member Porterfield, nine in favor, three against. Okay. Mm. All, right, All right, here she is. Okay, council member Porterfield, we just got the budget uh, committee report on RS 2022, 1734. Um, so it's back to you for purposes of uh, what you wanna do with it. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, is this the one we have a substitute on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would like to move the substitute, please. All right. So, Councilmember Porterfield has moved uh, the substitute on RS 2022 1734, properly seconded. Back to you for an explanation of the substitute. Can we get um, an explanation of the substitute? Uh, Ms. Darby, can you give an explanation? Yes, the, uh, the substitute changes the uh, sources for payment. Um, for the $500,000, it changes the departments from which the money will be taken to um, spread that out amongst several more departments. Um, and the substitute also removes the language with regard to um, providing abortion services or uh, navigation for abortion services. And it adds in um, some family planning services and contraceptive availability instead. Councilmember Porterfield. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move for approval on the substitute. All right, so Councilmember Porterfield has moved for approval of the substitute on 1734. Again, properly seconded. Discussion on substitute. Councilmember Nash, you're recognized. I was waiting for the bill. Okay, all right. Uh, Council Member Pooley on the bill or the substitute? Uh, Council Member Hall, bill. Uh, Council Member Gamble, bill or substitute? Okay. Uh, Council Member Hancock, bill or substitute? Substitute. Council Member Hancock is recognized on the substitute. Woo, I didn't think I'd get to speak first. This is super exciting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'd like to thank Councilman O'Connell for putting this forward and um, just for the um, viewing public and to have it on record, the reason for um, the legal recommendation to not have our funds go to abortion services, please. Ms. Darby. 
Uh, yes, the, uh, the legal department has advised that uh, using these funds could jeopardize Title X funding from the federal government. And um, would it jeopardize Title X funding from the federal government to give $500,000 to Planned Parenthood of Tennessee when they, on their website, say that they are going to continue to help people find abortions and fund them elsewhere? The, uh, the condition is that the funds, the Title X funds, not be utilized to provide abortion services or abortion-related services, which navigation could conceivably be construed as. So these funds would not be directly utilized for that purpose. It's not so intended if, by the legislature. If these funds were all just used for education, for example, right now the Planned Parenthood budget or th for 2021, um, their budget for education was 732,000, yet their patient services was 8 million. So could they conceivably take the $500,000 from Metro government, supplant 500,000 of their education, and then just put another $500,000 towards services? This, legis this uh, legislation that's pending right now is a funding le legislation. It's not an approval of the specific um, grant that for Planned Parenthood, but presumably in the grant for Planned Parenthood, it would delineate the usage of these funds and it would dedicate that usage. Right, I'm, I'm just thinking that since they already spend that kind of money, is there any way that we could require that they spend 732,000 plus the 500,000 on education services, or is that going to be kind of a flex trust system? The, the, the grant agreement with Planned Parenthood would simply delineate how they are to spend the funds that are being provided by the metropolitan government. So we would still not know if they're going to increase funding on other areas separately? It would not address their funding from other sources. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Councilor Mendez. I was going to speak on, on the bill also. Oh, okay. Uh, Council Member Hauser on the bill or the substitute? Going to speak pretty much the same thing that uh, the previous Council Member spoke to. Uh, uh, making sure that we were not hampering them by in their budget. So I'm, I'm fine. Uh, Council Member O'Connell on the bill or substitute? Bill. Uh, Council Member Allen, bill or substitute? Thank you, I've got two questions. First is, um, can someone speak to if all the departments have um, signed off on having this money deleted from their budgets, as I spoke about in budget committee as the former budget chair, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with us setting a budget and then and then reducing it from departments. So I would be interested in knowing if someone can answer that question. And my second question is, do, where, where do we find a copy of the grant application for this? Okay, Mr. Jameson, can you answer those two? Sure, thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Um, with uh, the formation of the substitute and the alternate sub, uh, funding sources, we reached out to the 14 departments, um, and specifically an email went out, I believe, from OMB uh, advising of the proposal and asking for uh, feedback if there was any inability to proceed with uh, uh, the operating budget. Um, received no indications of um, of concerns. We did, however, today, um, I spoke with uh, Pastor uh, Ernie Tucker at uh, MHRC. Um, he was unaware of the email, um, and I don't know what to attribute that to. Um, his is the department that has the, the least cut. It's $10,000. He indicated that he was hoping to use payroll savings to, um, conf let me back up. He received one and an additional one-half FTE in the in this recent budget. He was hoping to convert that one-half FTE to a full-time. Uh, now, a $10,000 allotment, um, a one-time from previously realized payroll savings is, is just not gonna be sufficient to fund a full-time 
recurring budget obligation. Um, spoke with him about the possibility of a supplemental. Uh, probably the, the better solution is to take that up in the operating budget because it'll be a recurring expense. Um, and that's, that's as much as I know. No other department registered any other concerns. All right, well, uh, and did you answer the question about the grant? Mr. Jameson, you need that question repeated. If you could, please. Councilmember Allen. I, I just was wondering, I mean, we, we've had some questions about what specifically the grant covers, and my question is where, where is the grant application? Is that something we can see? So I think in this instance, this would entail um, a, a grant contract with uh, Planned Parenthood. That has not been drawn up. That is pending approval of this legislation tonight. As soon as it is drawn up, immediately submit that to council members. Councilmember Allen, anything else? So does that mean there, there was no application? There was no application um, compared to what um, other nonprofits would be required to submit in the usual uh, budget operation. This is, this is admittedly unusual timing, but it's uh, prompted by an unusual set of circumstances at the national level. All right, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hart. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Considering that this piece has been taken out in the substitute, is it any way that that can be communicated to uh, the general public? We received quite a bit of interest in this particular bill, and people were very, very concerned. And I just think it would be appropriate to let them know, uh, because many of them don't watch and even if they did, they may not, you know, fully understand what it means. And I think it'll be a, a great uh, messaging on our part to let them know if um, it's possible. There's not a, I don't know if there's a specific way we can, um, one of the things we're trying to do is figure out better ways to announce what we do here. And it, obviously it's 1220 in the morning. Um, a week. Ms. Darby, I don't know if there's a way to do an analysis with this and then provide it to the council members and then if you want to send it out to whoever, you're welcome to do that. It's just an analysis with the new substitute language on it. Would that be appropriate? We could provide something to the council saying okay. what was passed tonight. Okay, that would be great. On this bill. Thank you, council member. Um, <laughs> council member Vercher. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Mayor. My, my questions is in alignment with um, Councilwoman Allen's and and Councilwoman Hurt and and others. I asked this somewhat yesterday in, in budget. I just didn't didn't want to belabor the point. But when I watched the news again this morning, uh, the, the the teaser was that Metro Council is considering uh, abortion le legislation. And I know the substitute takes that language out, but we have to be really mindful of the women in the community as it, as it relates to the message that it's gonna send. Um, this is a very serious matter. We don't want women thinking that in crisis, when they're in crisis, that they have access to a service when they actually don't. The other part of this too, is that now that the language is gone out of the substitute, the substitute removes the language of that service and it's just basically an education bill, which our health department provides the same type of service, should, should it be less than the 500,000? I asked yesterday uh, in budget, how did we come to that? How did we come to that amount? And I was looking for uh, Planned Parenthood requested that amount but that, that didn't come up. So I don't know if they requested it. I don't know how we got to the 500,000. I don't know if it's sufficient uh, for education, but Councilwoman Hancock, she brought up some very uh, valid points as it related to, to, their, to their budget. All for supporting uh, services for women and, and health issues. I just think we need to be um, really sensitive to uh, to, to this resolution here and the message that it's gonna, gonna actually send uh, to, to women. 500,000, we just need to be clear, those out there that is, this, this has nothing to do with essentially uh, 
uh, abortion. Uh, we know what happened with Roe versus Wade, but many equate that to um, just simply abortion, not the other facets of some of the healthcare challenges and access for, for women. So I know I'm going all the way around the bus, Vice Mayor. It's, it's late. So I, I'll just bring it home. My simple question is, did Planned Parenthood of Tennessee and North Mississippi request this $500,000? So I'm gonna refer that I back to the sponsor of the bill, which would be Councilmember Porterfield. Councilmember Porterfield, can you answer that question? Can I defer that to my co-sponsor, Councilmember O'Connell? Councilmember O'Connell, do you know what, did you hear the question? I did. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, so we did have an initial funding request and just to address the substitute and how the amounts have changed. Um, it, contingent upon this, Councilmember Benedict uh, intends to withdraw a nearby family planning bill that is also on the calendar this evening. Some of that funding has been threaded in to replace funding that was removed specifically for navigation services for abortion. Um, what I would say is those services are very much still available in the community. In fact, anybody who's watching right now, I hope will uh, recognize that there is a resource abortionfinder.org that is set up as part of a national coalition. Um, those services are gonna be uh, available to Nashvillians the same way as they would have been um, if that funding and that uh, service were still available through this local chapter. It's not gonna be under the terms of the MOU or that, but the other funding requests were uh, directly guided by um, the mix of the fiscal note uh, that Council Member Benedict's bill carried for family planning services and the education and supplies components that remain from the original resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Vice Mayor, may, let me rephrase my question. I'm asking specifically that Planned Parenthood of Tennessee and North Mississippi ask for $500,000 from the city. Councilmember O'Connell? They did not come Thank you. Uh, to the city and ask that, but they did put together this request on the basis of need. Okay. All right, uh, Councilmember Cash. Uh, we're still on the substitute. And yeah, we haven't gotten to the bill yet. Wait. Previous question. Okay, hold on. Board is um, lighting up. Okay, Councilmember Cash. Previous question. Councilmember uh, Cash has uh, called the previous question, so we're getting ready to vote on the substitute, but let's ask for the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. Uh, we are on Councilmember Porterfield's substitute on RS 2022-1734. We're voting on the substitute, not the resolution as substituted. All those in favor of the substitute say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Substitutes adopted. We are now on RS 2022-1734 as substituted. Councilmember Porterfield, you're recognized. Move for approval. Councilmember Porterfield moves for approval of RS 2022-1734 uh, as substituted. Uh, now I go back to the list. Councilmember, wait a minute. There we go. Uh, Councilor Nash, you're first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I, I truly understand, I think, where the sponsors came from on the original bill, uh, seeing that uh, the state had uh, limited, uh, strictly limited uh, types of abortions with no exceptions uh, that uh, the cities had to step up, I think was the phrase I heard from several council members uh, to, to fund, to help people get uh, out of state uh, abortion services. And even, uh, and, and I'd, I'd prepared a, uh, an amendment to that uh, bill uh, that would have excluded money being spent for uh, abortions, uh, uh, except in the cases of rape, uh, uh, incest, uh, life of the mother and mortality of the, uh, of the child. Now, now that that section of this bill has been pulled in the substitute, we're really back to services that are already being provided by a number of nonprofits in this, and, and, and the city provides this. In the health of, uh, committee today, we heard from, from Tom Sharp that uh, the city provides that. They've never turned anybody away. 
Um, they do occasionally have to dip into some other uh, funds, but I, I really don't uh, see why we're, and, and I suspect in the, <laughs> in the wake of Dobbs that the uh, funding for Planned Parenthood is better than it's ever been. Um, I'm not sure, and they didn't ask for this. Um, I think we, uh, uh, again, why we chose Planned Parenthood instead of another group, I, I don't know why. Uh, I think that if you're gonna do something like that, it should have been kind of put out there for, for any, uh, any service. Uh, and frankly, I think since the city does provide this and occasionally runs a little short, uh, although they never turn anybody away, we should be maybe sending this kind of money to our own health department for their services. So I'm gonna be a no on this and maybe we can rethink this. Also, you know, right here in the middle of the kind of the, the, the budget year, um, there's not time to take money from these departments uh, to, to fund this uh, uh, service that's already being provided elsewhere. And uh, uh, I think if we, you know, we can watch this year, see what happens. If we need more services, we can address that and we've come up with this next budget. So I, I'm gonna be a no vote on this. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Pulley. Previous question. Council Member Pulley has called the previous question. We're voting on the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, a previous question fails. It requires two thirds. So we're, um, uh, we are still on the um, resolution. Uh, Councilor um, Hall, you're next. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, and, and in line with what some of my colleagues just were talking about, um, I don't think this is a time for us to be diverting funds. And with all the conversation around traffic calming and infrastructure and housing, all these other areas where we could use extra resources and in including the health department, um, because there's still a lot of left to, to do post COVID in terms of education and community reach, um, outreach and things of that nature. So I, I don't think this money should be diverted from those departments. Um, it, it's just not the right time or the right issue. If we wanna fight some things at the state and federal level, we should fight them at the state and federal level. And on top of that, um, supporting an organization who was created to make sure folks that look like me don't continue to exist is like saying, ignore the rape, lynch, and murders that the Klan did decades ago and pat them on the back because they now do back to school giveaways. It, it, it makes no sense. Fight federal and state issues at the state and federal level and not at the local level. Leave Metro money in Metro where it belongs for the services we need here. All right, thank you, Council Member. I've got um, Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I kind of echo what we are hearing from colleagues here about the funding. I think that it is important that we provide or that we assist in providing access to uh, sex education and contraception uh, services, which our Metro Health Department does. And we just heard today in the public uh, safety meeting from Metro Health that they are providing these services at a deficit uh, because they provide them to individuals on a sliding scale based on their income. So it can be anywhere from zero to whatever the actual cost is, but they're absorbing that cost and falling short and having to get funding from other nonprofits to make up the difference. So I, I, while I support uh, the these education and the contraception, the services, I think we need to keep give the money to Metro Health as opposed to Planned Parenthood because Metro Health is providing these same services and from what we heard today, uh, running at a budget deficit in doing so. So I think it would be more prudent to provide this funding uh, to the Metro Health Department. Okay, thank you, Council Member. So, um, Council Member Mendez, you were somewhere in this because I remember you being at the front and then something happened. So I'm gonna call on you next. Council Member Mendez, you're recognized. I appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm gonna vote for this um, and I appreciate the, the comments um, from people who are saying that maybe we should fund health, but the, the fact of the matter is that we've got a unprecedented uh, removal of a constitutional right that's been in existence for 50 years. We've got uh, Congress that won't act to protect the right. We've got a state that's fully outlawed it. And the fact is that our local governments everywhere in America are on the front lines of trying to preserve maximum protection for women. 
and um, and choice and health and um, and and this is a time when we shouldn't have our local government pull its punches uh, and trying to shy away from making a strong, firm position. Um, over the last couple months since the U.S. Supreme Court overruled the 50-year constitutional right, um, we have passed multiple pieces of legislation, and, and I've been proud of us for being um, as active as any city in saying we're going to stand with women um, as the Supreme Court and Congress and the state um, won't. And um, again, this is not the time for us to pull our punch. Um, Planned Parenthood can do this work um, and it's an important statement for us to make and, um, and we should move forward with it. And, um, and, and frankly, um, you know, if we pull our punch on this and say that we're not going to do it um, for whatever the reasons are, um, trying to um, both sides is um, or um, trying to uh, appease email traffic, some of which isn't from the county, um, all we're doing is telling the state that we're okay with where they're at. And, and I know that's not a, sh a view shared by everybody, um, but uh, I think we should move forward with this in order to make a clear statement, um, a continued clear statement about where the Davidson County Nashville government stands on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, you're next. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, to follow on Council Member Mendez's remarks, uh, on August 25th of this year, Tennessee became a forced birth state with no exceptions. Uh, the Metro Public Health Department can do some of these services. They do provide some of these services, but uh, part of the point of this is to make sure that the, all of this happens in a way that can be loud, that is not in fact constrained or at greater risk of being constrained by being a public organization. This is women in crisis. This is people finding out uh, in some states of surprise that they are going to have to wait for hours for their medical care to be delivered at Vanderbilt and then needing somewhere to turn. And we can prevent that. We can provide education about that. That is what this resolution does. It is intended to send a strong signal that we are standing up on behalf of people who can become pregnant or people who want to engage in family planning and have education, resources, supplies. I encourage colleagues to support. We built a strong coalition that represents the people impacted by this that have brought this together. I'm proud to stand with them and I hope everyone else will too. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Virtue. I think I'm still left over, but since you called on me, I'm gonna go ahead and make this point again, Vice Mayor. We need to be clear. Um, the Councilman just stated, alluded to education for abortion services, we need to be clear what this resolution is and what it isn't. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Hart, from before, do you want to be heard? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I too believe that this is a health issue and perhaps it should be in Metro Health and not to a private agency. But I also ask the question, has um, our Human Rights Commission been consulted in decisions such as this? Because I do think that it falls under human rights as well. I'm just asking a question. I'm, I'm looking at the sponsors. Does anybody know? I, I don't know. Looking at their reactions, I'm not sure if I can, they can answer that question. Councilmember Hart. Well, should we not have some input from them? Do we need to defer? Well, that's, so, not, that's not a decision for me. Okay, well, I move <laughs> that we defer for uh, two meetings and give uh, them to confer with some other um, agencies that may be appropriate to weigh in onto this. All right, so Council Member Hart has moved to defer two meetings, properly seconded. Uh, we're now on a deferral motion. 
um, let me make sure I've got this right. Uh, Council Member O'Connell, I'm gonna call on you because obviously everybody else was in the queue for the resolution. Hold on, okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Strongly discouraged colleagues from deferring. This has been worked on for quite some time. In fact, we would have addressed it uh, several weeks ago, but for a charter provision that said you had to wait till the quarter boundary. Um, so there, we're already behind schedule in getting this money out of the community. And I will say uh, one of the points that I think will be expressed in the MOU is that sub recipients are possible. And I'd rather have the conversation uh, about how to structure that process after the money is uh, appropriated and the uh, MOU established. All right, so I've got a motion to defer. I've got people in the queue. Let me just make sure that people don't want to speak on the deferral motion. Councilmember Swope on the deferral. Councilmember Cash on the deferral. Councilmember Cash on the deferral. I am not going to vote for deferral, and I uh, encourage members not to vote for the deferral. Uh, the Planned Parenthood of Tennessee and Northern Mississippi, they're helping women in crisis, they're helping Nashville women in crisis, they're helping our, some of our employees that are in crisis. Um, we're not giving, as the substitute indicates, we're not giving money directly for abortion, but let's not pretend that, that, the, that the Supreme Court's ruling on abortion uh, has nothing to do with this. They, they are uniquely equipped to help with this crisis, and if we can help them, I'm on board. All right, let me go through the rest of the list. Uh, Councilman Rosenberg on the deferral, Councilman Sepulveda on the deferral, Councilmember Murphy on the deferral. Councilmember Henderson on the deferral. Councilmember Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I think in the spirit of what Council Lady uh, Gamble shared and others in Council Lady Hurt, um, I would support the deferral in an effort to speak uh, more closely with our health department. Planned Parenthood is um, an excellent and much needed organization, um, especially at this time. Um, I think uh, we as women are in a pretty dark place in Tennessee. We have lost our bodily autonomy. And that is, that is, a, um, that is a big deal and, a, and, a, and something that um, I think we as elected leaders want to speak up about. Um, I appreciate the spirit in which this was offered. Um, but it is, in truth, a, a gesture. Um, it's not that Planned Parenthood could not put this money to good use. It is not that they are not a worthy organization. Uh, but I would assert that with deferral, we might speak further with the health department to see about um, the services that are enumerated uh, in this resolution, um, how they could be offered uh, through our health department. We work very diligently through the budgeting process to make sure that a whole host of nonprofit organizations that are in line with the strategic goals of our city um, are kind of scrutinized as to you know what money is going to them, for what purposes. And I realize that this is uh, a, a remarkable and noteworthy moment in, in our city's history. But also, I think when we go into the budget like this and just take 10, 20, 60, uh, I, I don't feel like that's best practice. Um, I found out today, this is sort of random, but um, we have our second bike lane sweeper. But apparently, after adding 40 positions to NDOT, we haven't funded the position for the person to operate the second bike lane sweeper. So, you know, we still have things like that, that in any department budget, um, and I'm not putting family planning against bike lane sweeping and so forth, but I just feel like in an effort to make a strong gesture in this moment, which I, I think is needed, I don't feel like this is the best vehicle for that respectfully. Um, so I would encourage colleagues to support the deferral. Okay, um, Council Member Hauser and then Council Member Sepulveda. I, I had a question, I'm not, I didn't have this for the deferral, it was a, on the This motion. is on the deferral. No, oh, okay. I'm not. Okay, Council Member Sepulveda on the deferral. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'm gonna vote in favor uh, against the deferral for, for two reasons. 
Um, one being that we've all read the reports and know what's happening at our health department. And we have several issues uh, going on there. Um, and they've been going on for a long time, not just there, but in other, um, other metro departments. I wouldn't trust them <laughs> personally uh, on a lot of on a couple of things right now. Uh, the second reason being that people already know Planned Parenthood, and they know where they're going. People are more likely to go to Planned Parenthood for these services than they are to our Metro Health Department, and that's why I am voting against the deferral. Okay, uh, I've got Councilmember Porterfield on the deferral. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to ask my colleagues to vote against the deferral. Um, I understand that, that it is not maybe customary to um, kind of do these mid-year adjustments to uh, department budgets, but this is a, an unprecedented time, and we need to move forward with supporting um, individuals in Nashville that can be pregnant, and um, the best way to prevent pregnancies um, is to make sure that people have access to contracepts, contraceptives, to make sure that people are getting properly educated. Um, I, I second what Council Member Sepulveda said, when people are in crisis, they know Planned Parenthood. When there is a, a, a pregnancy scare, if someone needs contraceptives, they know plan, Planned Parenthood for these services. That is where um, a lot of people are going. So we are, uh, in fact, supporting our constituents when we are putting money towards this. So I'm going to ask that you all vote against the deferral and move forward with supporting the legislation. All right, Councilor Mendez. Thanks, I'm also gonna vote against the deferral. A couple of quick things. Um, I was in touch um, over the last couple of days with Director Tucker from the Metro Human Relations Commission. Um, he didn't express any interest in being involved in these services. He was interested in discussing um, the budget issue, as Mr. Jamison said, and I, I think we um, got to a, a place um, that was satisfactory on that. Um, so, so there, there, he didn't. He had plenty of opportunity to um, express an interest in the substance of it, and didn't. Um, then, on the budget, uh, I mean, I, I've been a, as. Um, uh, careful about the budget as anybody during my time in the council. And the fact of the matter is if the Supreme Court had made its decision two weeks earlier before we passed the budget, we would have put money in the budget um, for this. Um, but they didn't. Uh, the Dobbs' opinion was about you know, last couple days of June after we did the budget. Um, and there, the window is now, the window is now. Um, and then last, um, we can, yeah, call it a gesture, um, but uh, you know, we, we yeah, I, I don't agree with that characterization necessarily, um, but um, it, it's a gesture coupled with substantive real life services. And um, part of what we're, we should be doing when the federal government and the state government won't act to protect these rights. If the local government's gonna do it, then I guess nobody's gonna make the gesture and people just figure it out on their own. And I don't think that's where I wanna be as a city. Thank you. So I'm gonna vote against the deferral. All right, Councilmember Welsh. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to echo the comments of my colleagues, um, Mendez and Sepulveda and Porterfield. Um, I think it's very important that we do this now while this window is open. Anything can happen. We're seeing already in other states access to even birth control is being restricted. Um, it's very important that we make sure that all of this um, information that is so important to the reproductive health, not only of women, but of men um, with family planning is expanded and that um, women have um, persons who can get pregnant have various sources that they can go to and access to what they feel comfortable with accessing. Um, and I don't think that we can downplay the seriousness of this moment. Uh, the Supreme Court just reconvened their, their um, court now, this week, they're doing this, and there's many things that are going to be impacting not only other issues regarding reproductive health, but all sorts of things that will affect us. And I think that we need to be able to respond quickly because of the situation we find ourselves here in this state with our legislature and how quickly they act to um, add on to that um, removal of rights and restricting what we do here in the state. So I think the window is now. We need to take make sure we make this statement very clear and loud and put our money where we're our mouth 
mouth is, which um, we're not known for doing on so many other levels. So I think it's just really, really important that we do that and make that statement and show all people who can become pregnant that we support them and we will do the things that we need to do to make sure that they are educated and have access. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Council Member. That's all I've got in the queue on the deferral motion. Anybody else on the deferral? Okay, so the motion is to defer two meetings. All right, it was properly seconded. We're ready to vote. We'll try by voice vote. All those in favor of the deferral motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. I, I think I better go on the board. Uh, Mr. Clerk. Who made the motion? Uh, it was Councilmember Hurt. It's a motion to defer two meetings. of the council, we're voting on a motion to defer uh, two meetings, RS 2022-1734. If you're for the deferral motion, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you vote no. Okay, Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. Are in. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the phone. No, it's 21. The motion to defer fails. So we are back on the resolution. Council Member Porterfield, we're back on RS 2022-1734 as substituted uh, for passage. Okay. Um, and I've got people still in the queue. Let's see. Let me go back. All right. Um, according to my screen, Council Member Swope, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, where to begin here? Uh, <laughs> while I know for a fact the state is considering exceptions for rape and incest in January, and that'll pass pretty quickly through the state legislature, <clears throat> um, I still have a huge problem with not having this in our own health department. Um, if this is not based on abortion issue or on an abortion status, then why is our health department not doing this? And if we're gonna throw $500,000 at something, it should be at our own people, for starters. Secondly, I have a serious moral issue with Planned Parenthood. Um, for those of you who don't know, and a lot of people may or may not know, but Margaret Sanger started Planned Parenthood in 1916. She was immediately put in prison for violating obscenity acts. When she was released, she started two other organizations. She ultimately wrote a book in 1932 called A Plan for Peace, Birth Control Review. Let me quote you some of the things from her book. Sanger believed the United States should, quote, keep the doors of immigration closed to the entrance of certain aliens whose condition is known to be determined to the stamina of the race. And by that, she meant the white race such as the feeble-minded, idiots, morons, insane, syphilitic, epileptic, criminal, professional prostitutes, and others in this class barred by the immigration laws of 1924. I didn't make that up. This is the one that really gets me. She wrote a letter to Dr. Clarence Gamble, who I believe was on the National Board of Health at the time. It's dated December 10th, 1939, which is two, three years before she actually founded Planned Parenthood for the second time, and it's existed in its same form ever since. She wrote in this letter, and I quote, we do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. She was not a good woman. Planned Parenthood has existed under her guidelines ever since. So I cannot in good conscience support anything going to Planned Parenthood at this time, and I ask that you don't either. Okay, Councilmember Rosenberg. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, back in modern times, um, th this bill helps provide essential health services um, and those are services that have become that much more important in light of what has happened at the federal and state levels. Um, and the way that those things have really limited our constituents' healthcare options. Planned Parenthood might be a boogeyman to some, but they're eminently qualified to provide these services. They have a national web network. They have a much farther reach than our very capable health department. And th this is a chance to do some good. There's an established organization that does really good work that can provide these services to our constituents. And we should go ahead and do that. And I hope you'll join me in supporting this resolution. Okay. Uh, Councilor Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, on a lot of these resolutions, I have been watching very carefully as my colleagues have crafted the legislation and the wording of the legislation. And I appreciate the time that was spent in being very careful um, to make sure that we are extending services to people who need them, not cutting off services, and being very inclusive. I do have a problem when we say that this should be only done through our health department. While the health department is capable, um, I think that when we are saying that we should only provide types of services of this nature through the health department, we are simply exerting more control over women and people who are able to have pregnancies options. And the mission here is to give more access, not to limit access. How many of you see the same health care provider that I see? How many of you go to the health department to get your flu shot? We go to different places because we go to see health care providers that we feel comfortable with, not who is mandated by the government. We go seek services for vaccines and other health care services where we feel comfortable. And we do not need to be limiting access to care when the majority of levels of government above us are seeking actively to limit access to care. This is a serious issue and giving people choice is something that we are elected to do and we need to do that. That is what is before us tonight. Are we going to limit healthcare options for our constituents and people that live in Davidson County or have access to Davidson County? Are we going to limit healthcare? Or are we gonna provide more access to healthcare? Healthcare is a basic human right and giving access to it is what we need to do tonight. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hauser. Well, I did of what uh, Council Member Murphy just said, and also want to say, you know, do we even know if the health department could take on the additional services that would be needed to handle this? Because I understand that they are already pretty stressed, and if you read any of the articles, women are under the stress of knowing that they do not have an option to end the pregnancy if it's needed for a variety of reasons. They are making other health care decisions and they, they need to have options. And my concern is that the health department, if that's the only source, then we're really putting a, a burden on them. And we do, I agree, need to have multiple avenues to provide the services that our constituents need. Okay, thank you, Council Member. Council Member Mendes, I have you next. Council Member um, Mendes has called the previous question. We're on the previous question, not the vote, just the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Previous question prevails. We're on RS 2022-1734 as substituted. Uh, Council Member Porterfield has moved the resolution. If you're for the resolution, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Because I think there's gonna be no votes, we need to go on the board. Mr. Clark, if you don't mind. Okay, 
Mr. Clerk, open up the machines. We're voting on RS-2022-1734 as substituted. Everything in. Mr. Clark, close machines, take the vote. Eyes 19, nose 13, three abstentions. Uh, resolution passes 19 to 13. We are, uh, here's what we're gonna do. I think we've got two more measures to take up before we then go back and pick up the consent agenda. Um, I am now on bills on second reading, um, and we've got two that we're gonna pick up. Um, item number 90 and item number 91, okay? So stick with me, item number 90. No, what we're doing is we're picking up uh, any measures that we said that we needed to get because we have people sitting in the back. Okay, so we'll go back and pick up resolutions. Um, but we have two other items we said that we were gonna pick up, the two abortion-related measures and the smoking bill. So the first one up is item number 90, Bill 2022-1383 by Council Member Syracuse, Evans, Allen, and others. It's an ordinance to amend Title 10, Title 10 of the Metropolitan Code to prohibit smoking and the use of vapor products at certain age-restricted venues. Council Member Syracuse, you are recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I believe uh, Amendment 1 is Councilmember O'Connell's. Right. Um, I think all committee reports are in at this point. So the first amendment up is Councilmember O'Connell. Councilmember O'Connell, you recognize on Amendment Number 1. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, speaking of the Metro Public Health Department, they were very helpful in crafting an amendment even, uh, I think, more appropriately targeted um, than the one we had discussed last time that was late filed. Um, this one should... I think give people more confidence that um, this is very narrowly applying to um, THC-based vapor bars um, as a relatively new business, again, taking advantage of new state law. Uh, and I would, in supporting the bill as a whole, I would love to get this exemption included along the lines of the exemptions that are a part of the bill as amended. So I encourage colleagues to support this amendment. All right, so Councilmember O'Connell, I assume you're moving the amendment? Yes, please. Okay, properly seconded discussion on the amendment. Councilmember Syracuse first. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I will say that this is a friendly amendment. I appreciate the collaboration from Councilmember O'Connell and the Health Department, um, and uh, I, I do support it. All right, Councilmember Sawara. Be recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I just wanted to ask uh, uh, the uh, sponsor of the amendment if this is uh, recreational or medicinal. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell. I, I don't think we have anything regulatory that uh, speaks to that. This is, you know, the, the establishment in question. And this, I mean, I guess you could ask the same thing of a cigar bar or hookah, but um, this the, principally, the bill was brought uh, for a business that is principally bar and restaurant, but allows vaping as I think part of the recreational activity. I don't think there's anything yet out there that suggests that this is a medicinal purpose. Council Mayor Suara. Good, all right. Uh, seeing nobody else, we are on amendment number one. Any other discussion on amend amendment number one? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. I'm not sure if I can figure that one out. Okay, so um, Mr. Clark, I think we're gonna have to go on the board, okay? So we are voting on amendment number one. Um, which is a council member, council member O'Connell's amendment to bill 2022, 1383. 
If you're for the amendment, you'd vote aye. If you're against, you'd vote no. Those I think are. You good? All right. Um, members of the council, we are voting on amendment number one. Okay, this is again Council Member O'Connell's amendment to Council Member Syracuse's bill. Council Member Porterfield. Point of order, Vice Mayor. Um, on our screen, Amendment 1 is showing up as something that is sponsored by Council Member Syracuse, and Council Member O'Connell's amendment is showing up as something differently. So I just wanted clarification on which one we're voting on. Mr. It, Clark, can you? Unless it's showing up on other people's screen differently. Amendment number one. Proposed amendment number one. So you're voting on a proposed amendment number one. Okay, thank you, Vice okay. Mayor. All right, um, Mr. Clark, you ready? Okay, everybody good? Okay, if you're for amendment number one, you'd vote aye. If you're against it, you'd vote no. Mr. Clark, open up the machines. Everybody in? Mr. Clark? Close machines, take the phone. That wasn't even close. Eyes 24, nose 4. Four abstentions. So uh, the amendment goes on. Councilmember Syracuse, there's a second amendment. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The second amendment comes from Councilmember Swope. Okay, Councilmember Swope and Parker. Councilmember Swope, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. And yes, this does come as a co sponsored amendment from myself and Councilmember Parker. Yes, believe it or not, we have worked together with the Health Department to craft basically something that exempts the existing smoking bars in this city from going out of business. Um, including, and, and this was put in by the legal department here, that each bar on the list, there's 56 of them, believe it or not, would have to file a statement on record with the health department within 60 days, or they have to go non-smoking. If the property sold, when it's sold, they are, they no longer have a smoking permit, period. Um, so ultimately, every single one of these places will go out of business eventually on their own, and that will be a non-smoking city. In the meantime, there's 78% of this of the people in this town that don't want smoking, which leaves 22% of the people in this town that do. And these are these are numbers that we've all gotten on the same emails. There's been hundreds of them. So for the 22% of this city that still smokes and likes to smoke and wants to smoke, there are 56 bars out of over 1,800. That is less than 3% of the bars and restaurants in this city that still permit smoking on their own premises, on private premises, on 21 and up premises. Much like you're gonna say, my body, my choice, I've been smoking for 48 years. It is my body and my choice. I think the owners of these bars think it's their property and their choice as to whether or not they want to permit smoking. I will say that most of these bars are after hours dive bars and everybody that works in the hospitality industry goes to these bars after they get off work to have a cigarette and a beer. Further, to my knowledge, not one of the bars on this list has live music, not one. If they do, it's a rare occurrence. It's a special Sunday or something. So with all protection to musicians, songwriters, singers, this doesn't affect any of them. This just affects a very small percentage of our population and an incredibly small percentage of the number of facilities and bars and restaurants in this city. So I beg you, beg you, don't put 56 bars out of business. 
That is bad for business. Thank you. Right. Count. Excuse me. Oh, and I would move my amendment, please. Okay, you can do a point of order. Yes, I just got something on my screen. Are our computers gonna go off at 1.15? Something just popped up. Oh yeah, it, it's an Apex One scheme. I think we all turn into pumpkins at 115. Oh, it's a it's a scheduled uh, scan. Hold on. Uh, hold on. So what should we do? Nothing. We should move on. Oh, we should uh, we should move on. I just want to make sure we don't lose the machines. Okay, well, he's looking at that. It's like a virus scan. I think we'll be okay. It's a virus has a scan. Yeah. I would advise everyone to just put the time, which is an hour and 45 minutes. Hopefully we'll be done. Please, okay. Or the virus computer do it as well. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't letting me do the skip option. But you can click. Okay. One forty-five is the longest. Oh, no, exact doesn't mean it's going to stop the scan. From the scheduled scan, postpone, that has to be done on a, as far as it'll on go. a network level. Yeah. Okay. So, so what you all need to do is look on your screen. Here. Okay, he's going to Do you want to tell us or do you want to just go around and hit everybody? Okay. So our IT guy is going to come around and he's going to fix it for you. Okay. All right. Uh, Councilmember Syracuse, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, just as last time, I'm vehemently opposed to a grandfathering. Uh, um, it completely guts the entire intent of the bill. Um, all due respect to my, my colleague from District 4, some of the uh, statistics are, are, are not accurate. What I have before you on your desk is completely accurate. It's the same argument that was used in 2007 and the same argument that has always been used about uh, removing smoking from venues is that they it's, it's somehow is going to hurt their business. The statistics are completely clear on not only does it uh, not harm their business, it improves their business. Um, so the statistics are right here on your desk about uh, the statistics that um, it helps uh, th th their business, their business will go up. And not only that, you have something else on your desk that shows how smoking has been very burdensome to our entire economy. I also have a list of 1,300 plus different Different local municipalities that enacted smoke-free legislation, they have it has all improved uh, their local businesses. Um, this is a pro-business bill. It is a public health bill. This is not just about musicians. It's about our health, um, it, 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 the health of hospitality workers. Um, so, you know, as far as the, my body, my choice, our um, our health care costs are not based on my body, my choice at, at all. So, this is ultimately helping all of us. Um, what about the hospitality worker uh, who, who maybe, uh, let's take the other issue, who gets pregnant? And then what, 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 do, what can she do? She has to quit that job and go someplace where uh, she uh, can't work um, in, in that. So this is a good bill for this city. It sets a good tone for the kind of environment that we need to have, and it, it is a pro-business bill. Um, please vote against this grandfathering. All right, thank you, Council Member. Um, I've got Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I also rise against this amendment for a couple of reasons. One is, as Councilmember Syracuse indicated, I, I think we've talked a lot about choice and, and what people decide to do, but this, this bill is all about the effects that happens. And look, if somebody is working in one of these um, places and they do get pregnant, they don't really have a choice. They have to either endanger themselves and their unborn child, or they have to leave, they have to quit. And that's the struggle that I have, is that there are, that if we exempt these institutions, then we are not allowing people um, to be able to have the choices that they need to provide for their families. And I will tell you, there are several that are in District 17, and I know one of them on this list is very publicly said, they don't want to keep smoking in their bar, <laughs> that they're ready. And it was one of the smokiest daggone places in the city. And they said, it's, it's time for this to over. <laughs> so, so all I have to say is, I, I think we know what this will do. This will, this will gut the bill. I mean, this, there were more institutions on here than I would have expected, to be quite frankly, because we kept talking about 
a handful, a handful, a handful. There's more than 50. So I would strongly urge colleagues to vote against this amendment. And let's just say once and for all, this is the rule across the board. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you, Council Member. I've got Council Member Hauser. Yes, I also am speaking against this amendment. Back in the early 1900s, we basically said that it was okay to employ p children to work on machines. We don't say that anymore. Back in that time, it also somebody might get their hand cut off in a machine. If it was a sausage factory, it just got mixed in. That person didn't have health care. That person could no longer work because we did not value workers. If we pass this amendment, we say all those workers in those bars, guess what? You are no longer a human being. You no longer are valuable. Saying your body, your choice is okay if you're at home in your own property. But when you're out in public and somebody else breathes that, somebody else gets cancer because of your body, your choice, that's totally not okay. It is not okay for us to abuse our hospitality workers because we got a nicotine addiction. If you got an addiction, that's fine. You can smoke at home, but you don't have to make other people be exposed to your smoke. All right, thank you, Council Member Hauser. Council Member Murphy, you're next. These might be just kind of housekeeping questions. Um, I'm sorry if I missed this. Are we, is the health department or the council office or someone uh, notifying these businesses that they have 60 days? I, that would be a question to legal or to the council office. To the, to the sponsor, or right? Or to the council, sponsor. Council member Swope, you're recognized. Yes, the health department. The health department regularly inspects all these facilities. They're gonna notify them within six months. They, they have already started that process pending this passing. Okay, and um, so I know when we're talking more of like zoning issues, it, uh, the, the legal precedent or theory comes up about takings. Um, and so, in theory, are we, is this a taking if we pass it, this legislation without an exemption? Council Marshall? Yes. Council well, I, Lady I, Murphy, I, I would absolutely agree with you. I was directing that to our, to our legal attorneys for a legal opinion. Um, I'm not sure when, uh, if, if the councilman from District 4 has a, has a legal opinion, I'm, I'm also open to hearing that, but, and I appreciate it, but, it, I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn last night, so I don't have a law degree right now. All right, I'm gonna go to Miss Darby. <laughs> this would not qualify as a taking. Okay, I'm sorry, we do now have different legal opinions, but. <laughs> I, but, I, but from a private property rights issue, yes it is. I will end my running debate section. Thank you. That's right. All right, thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Hancock. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not calling the question. I am um, <laughs> getting to speak a little bit. I think we're all getting delirious. Um, thank you so much, Councilman Syracuse, um, for this bill. I am speaking on the amendment. I appreciate this um, handout that he gave us about the smoke-free indoor air and the metals by city. Um, if you haven't noticed, these are the 40 largest cities in America, and the only two that do not have any form of the smoke-free are Nashville and Memphis. And the reason we haven't been able to is because the state did not allow that until July 1st. And now they allow it. And look, this is an opportunity for us to do something good for our citizens, for the people that visit Nashville, and not piss off the state. Thank you. All right, um, Councilmember Schwab, you've already talked on the bill, so I almost have to come back to you. Oh, oh that's fine. Okay. Um, thanks. All right, uh, Councilmember Bradford, you're recognized. Previous question. Councilmember Bradford has called the previous question, so we're uh, we haven't we're not voting on the amendment, just the previous question. Uh, all those in favor of the previous question, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Previous question prevails. We are on amendment number two. This is by Councilmember Swope and Parker uh, to Bill 2022 1383. We'll try this by voice vote. Uh, if you're for the amendment, you're going to vote aye. If you're against it, you'll vote no. All those in favor of the amendment, amendment number two, say aye. Yes. Uh, against, say no. No. Uh, the no's have it. Okay. So we are now on uh, Council Member Syracuse. You're back on your bill uh, with one amendment on it. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. And move approval as amended with amendment number one. Thank okay, you. so Council Member Syracuse moves approval of BL 2022-1383 with amendment number one on it. Properly seconded discussion now on the bill as amended. I've got people still in the queue, but uh, I think that was from there before. Um, uh -uh. So um, let me go through this. Council Member uh, O'Connell. I am never able to withdraw my request for some reason. Anyway. Okay, we're going to get that fixed. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, Council Member Suara on the bill as amended. Oh, thank you. I tried to withdraw it. It would not let me, but I'm glad that we passed it without the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Council Member Swope, I'm coming to you. Just for the sake of public information, I believe Amendment 1 just grandfathered in buds and brews, correct? Not exactly. Council members. Didn't Amendment 1 just grandfather in buds and brews? Um, I'm, I, I, Council Member O'Connell, it's your amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. No, it was not a grandfathering. It was uh, an exemption at all of the hookah bars from last time as an amendment. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Council Member Young. Previous question. Okay. Uh, Council Member Young has called the previous question. We're not voting on the bill, just the previous question. All those in favor of the previous question say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. Previous question prevails. We are on BL 2022-1383 uh, as amended for passage on second reading. This is just on second. Uh, all those in favor of BL 2022-1383 as amended for passage on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 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 Uh, the ayes have it. Uh, this bill passes on second reading. It'll move on to third. Okay. Um, um, we have one more bill before we go back. Uh, it's item number 91. It's Bill 2022-1411 uh, by Councilmember Benedict Porter, uh, Porterfield, Sepulveda, and others, an ordinance adding a new section to the Metropolitan Code of Laws related to family and planning services. Who's going to handle this one tonight? Councilmember Benedict is not here. Councilmember Porterfield, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I believe we're, we're withdrawing this. No, we're not withdrawing. We are indefinitely deferring this legislation. Okay, so this one, um, you want to move to defer this one indefinitely? I would like to move for an indefinite deferral. Okay. Uh, properly seconded. Any discussions on the uh, indefinite deferral? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, the motion is adopted. This one is deferred indefinitely. Uh, I'm looking at the staff. Do you all want to take a 10 minute break? It is 120. Well, I know you all don't, but these people can't move during the meeting. So I'm just checking. Okay, so it is now 120 in the morning. Uh, we are getting ready to go back to consent agendas. I think just out of uh, common human decency, I think we should take a 10 minute break. We're going we're gonna to return at 1.30, okay? Do not leave because uh, we have still stuff to do, but we're going to take a 10-minute break to give everybody just a chance to take a, take a break. <laughs> Consent. Um, we do have one lone person in the gallery who's been waiting for item number uh, 97, which is on second reading. Um, to say five to 10 minutes of his time, if there's no objection, if we can go ahead and take up item number 97. I'll read the caption, Bill 2022-1454 grants two permanent easements to Harpeth Valley Utilities District of Davidson Williamson Counties on certain property owned by Metro. Um, I don't see Councilman uh, Roten, but um, Councilman Withers. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, for item number 97, planning and zoning recommended approval eight in favor of zero against zero abstentions. Um, budget and finance. Public facilities. Who's? Who's public facilities chair? Okay. 
Councilwoman Hurt, do you have a committee report for public facilities? Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, we have uh, Bill 2022-1454, planning and, I mean, public facilities, arts and culture voted uh, six in favor and zero against. Councilman Pulley, transportation. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, transportation recommended approval, nine in favor, zero against. Sorry for the delay um, for budget and finance, and we are on 1454. Recommended approval on consent, 13 in favor, zero against. On all my consent, is that the only That's one? That's it. That's it. We took that one, this one out of order. Uh, Councilman Withers, since you're one of the sponsors, can you move the bill? Oh. Would help. Sorry about that. I would like to move approval. Been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing no, no discussion, all those in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. agenda for resolutions. Uh, the following resolutions are on uh, consent. If there are any that need to be pulled off after I read the list, just um, ask to be recognized. Going back to page 19, resolution 2022-1787, 1788, 1799, 1790-1791, 1793, 1794, 1795, 1796, 1798, 1799, 1800, 1801, 1802, 1803. Is there anything that needs to come off of the consent agenda? Council Member Van Rees. Uh, 1787, please. Are there any other items that need to come off the consent agenda? All right. I will read the captions. Resolution 2022-1788, amends resolution 2022-1583 by transferring 75,000 previously appropriated to the Tennessee Justice Center, incorporating and reducing the funds appropriated to Elijah's Heart to 50,000. Resolution 2022-1789 approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services to the state trial courts to provide the Tennessee Highway Safety Office Recovery Court Enhancements Program utilizing the Alcohol Countermeasures Highway Safety Project at the Davidson County Residential Drug Court. Resolution 2022-1790 appropriates $200,000 from the juvenile court to various nonprofit organizations selected to receive community partnership fund grants. Resolution Resolution 2022-1791 approves a contract between the Metro and Disaster Recovery Services, LLC, to provide insurance and or FEMA application and processing services related to federal declared disasters. Resolution 2022-1792 appropriates $1 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds to various Metro departments to be used to increase Metro's existing public emergency response reserve for vaccination and assessment centers, homeless emergency shelters, personal protective equipment, sanitation, sci sanitization, signage, telework, and information technology. Resolution 2022-1793 recognizes the 2022 Bordeaux-North Nashville Participatory Budgeting Steering Committee and Process. 
Resolution 2022-1794 authorizes the Department of Law to make an offer of judgment to settle the claims of RAF Ward against Metro and its employees in the amount of $50,000 plus reasonable costs. Resolution 2022-1795 approves a grant from the Tennessee Housing Development Agency to the Metro Action Commission to provide housing stability services to eligible households under the THDA's rent relief program. Resolution 2022-1796 approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to implement and coordinate activities and services related to HIV, STI prevention, testing, diagnosis, treatment, and surveillance. Resolution 2022-1797 approves a Project Safe Neighborhood grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Metro Police Department to reduce gun violence in Nashville. Resolution 2022-1798 approves a Project Safe Neighborhood grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Metro Police Department to create and foster safer neighborhoods through a sustained reduction in violent crime. Resolution 2022-1799 authorizes the Department of Water and Sewerage Services to enter a utility relocation contract with the Tennessee Department of Transportation to construct a bridge over the CSX RR and 11th Avenue. Resolution 2022-1800 authorizes the Department of Water and Sewerage Services to enter a utility relocation contract with the Tennessee Department of Transportation to construct a bridge over the CSXRR and 11th Avenue. Resolution 2022-1801 authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the property damage claim of Rebecca Ferguson against Metro in the amount of $46,346.38 to be paid out of the self-insured liability fund. Resolution 2022-1801 1802 honors U.S. Congressman Jim Cooper for his 32 years of service. Resolution 2022-1803 recognizes the 35th anniversary of Woodcuts Gallery and Framing. Is there anything that needs to come off the consent agenda? All right, we'll move on to committee reports. Affordable housing. Councilwoman Hauser. Oh, so if you, she has 1787 and that was taken off of consent. Okay. okay. Budget and finance, Councilwoman Gamble. Budget and finance considered resolution 2022-1788, 1789, 1795, 1796, 1797, 1798, 1799, 1800, and 1801, 13 in favor, zero against. Human Services Councilman Druffel. Oh. I'll try to do Tom's voice, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Councilwoman Welsh. <laughs> it's late, people. It's very late. Um, human Services um, considered 1787 and 1795, and we voted uh, for passage for both six um, in favor, zero against. Thank you. Planning and zoning, Councilman Withers. Thank you, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, planning and zoning considered resolutions are as 2022, 1799, and 1800, and we recommended approval of both of those, eight in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Public Health and Safety, Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Pro Tem. Uh, public Health and Safety considered 1796, 1797, 1798, all passed 740 against. Rules, Councilwoman Murphy. Thank you, 1793, 1802, and 1803, seven in favor, zero again. And Councilman Pulley, Transportation and Infrastructure. Transportation recommended approval of RS 2022-1799 and 1800, six in favor and zero against, and I recommend a, a move approval of the consent agenda. There a second. 
It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Councilwoman Suara. Uh, apologies, Madam Pro Tem. Uh, can you please pull uh, IRS 2022-1802, uh, please? Could you repeat that, Councilwoman Sora? 1802. Ask for a discussion. Any additional discussion? All those in favor, aye. Any opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Two got bumped off. One was uh, 1787, correct? <clears throat> uh, that's uh, RS 2022 1787. It's item number 36. Council Member Hauser wrote in Welsh a resolution approving a grant contract between the Metropolitan Government of National Edison County and Community Care Fellowship, operate an expanded mobile housing navigation center program. Council Member Hauser, you're recognized. Yes, committee reports, and I'll give the report for affordable housing, okay. which is approved 840 against. All right, uh, budget and finance, Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and finance, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. All right, and Council Member Druffel, disguised as Council Member Welsh, you recognize human services. <laughs> Um, we voted six in favor, zero against for passage. All right, back to you, Councilmember House. I move for approval. All right, uh, Councilmember House removes for approval of 1787. Uh, properly seconded discussion, Councilmember Van Rees. Thank you so much, colleagues. I know it's late or early. It's so late, it's early. Um, but I wanted to um, say thank you uh, for this particular project. Uh, a lot of the uh, constituents of the LGBTQ caucus uh, got some questions uh, regarding uh, accessibility on this and uh, it was uh, in the grant contract with the Community Care Fellowship uh, quite clearly that the LGBTQI plus uh, population uh, that the, the contract includes creating opportunities and capacity for choice in emergency housing for LGBTQ plus populations to live an authentic life free of harassment and violence. Um, this is an important uh, part of this um, community care fellowship contract and we wanted to bring attention to it. And on behalf of the LGBTQ caucus, I uh, thank those that made sure that it was in the contract and I uh, wanted to bring that to the attention. I appreciate the opportunity. All right, thank you, Council Member Van Rees. All right, uh, we are um, ready to vote on um, uh, RS 2022 1787 uh, for passage. Any other, um, any other questions? Any other comments? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of 1787, say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. Uh, we are on item number 51, RS 2022 1802. It's a resolution honoring U.S. Congressman Jim Cooper for his 32 years of service. Uh, Councilmember Pulley, Murphy, and Bradford are the sponsors. Councilmember Pulley, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval. All right. Um, uh, rules Committee, uh, Councilmember Murphy. I was seven in favor, zero against. All right. Uh, Councilmember Pulley moves for approval of uh, RS 2022 1802 properly. Seconded. Councilmember Sawar, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I pulled it out of consent because I felt some people may not have seen where it was sent for sponsorship, and I would like to invoke the Murphy Law on this one. I think uh, Congressman uh, Cooper did a great job serving this city for 32 years, and I think uh, it deserves all of us uh, signing on as sponsors. So uh, if there's no objection, I would like to invoke the Murphy Rule. Thank no you. objection. Everybody voting on the affirmative on this one will be listed as a sponsor. We're on RS 2022-1802, uh, honoring uh, Congressman Jim Cooper. Any other discussion? Any other questions? 
Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. All right, we have one late file resolution that's up. This is by Councilmember Gamble and Councilmember Syracuse. It's a resolution approving a letter of acceptance for 2022 Homeland Security grant funds by the Metropolitan Government acting through the Office of Emergency Management to uh, TEMA for Homeland Security District 5. Councilmember Gamble, you're recognized. Thank you, committee reports. All right, uh, do this one have to go to Rules Committee? Councilmember Murphy, shaking your head yes. Want to make a motion first so I can give the report first? Uh, well, no, suspend? just did it come through it as did a late go file? To us, yes. Okay, any problems? No. Okay, so Councilmember Gamble, you're going to have to move, um, you're going to have to suspend the rules to get this one in front. Move to suspend the rules. All right, so this is uh, this late file resolution regarding Homeland Security grant funds. Any objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, uh, Councilmember Gamble, the rules are suspended. You have two other committee reports coming in. Uh, it is uh, public safety. Councilmember Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, <coughs> public Health and Safety considered this late resolution and it passed 740 against. All right, and Councilmember Gamble, I think budget looked at it as well. Budget recommended approval. I believe it's in in favor. <laughs> Recommend approval 12 in favor, zero against. Got it. All right, so Councilmember Gamble um, um, has uh, given us all the committee reports. You just have a motion to approve this late file resolution. Yes, motion to okay. approve. Councilmember Gamble approves late file resolution properly seconded. Any discussion on uh, the late file resolution? Seeing none, ready to vote. All those in favor of the resolution from Councilmember Gamble say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, late file resolution passes. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble. We are now on bills on introduction and first reading. There's a couple that need to be pulled off. Let me go through those. Item number 54, BL 2022-1471 needs to be pulled off. Item 66 uh, by Councilmember Sledge. Item 66, Bill 2022-1483, and the Companion Bill, Item 67, Bill 2022-1484. Uh, those three bills need to be pulled off. Anything else needs to be pulled off of uh, first reading? All right, if so, those three bills will be pulled off. If I can get a motion to approve everything else on uh, introduction first reading. Got a motion, properly seconded. Any discussion on bills on introduction or first reading? Seeing none, we're approving all except those three. Uh, the motion is to approve. All those in favor of bills on introduction first reading say aye. aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Uh, item 54, uh, that's on page 23 in my calendar. It's by Council Member Parker, Bill 2022-1471, Ordinance to Amend Section 16.24.030 and 17.04.060, the Metropolitan Code of Laws to amend the definition of family. Council Member Parker, you recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move a two meeting deferral. Excuse me one second. Planning. Ms. Milligan. Oh, there you go. Uh, pass on first and then set the public hearing to the first meeting in December. Thank you. I'm very tired. Um, so I would like to approve this on first um, and set the public hearing for the first meeting in December. First meeting in December. Uh, okay. and I can give a little explanation if, if y'all would okay. like. Okay, so that's the motion properly seconded back. Fine, okay. <laughs> All right, that's it. There's the motion. All right, so the motion is to pass the on on first reading and set the public hearing for the first meeting in December. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. And then we have these other two bills, uh, 66 and 67, which I think can be taken together. Uh, bill 2022-1483 by Sledge. It's an ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from IR to SP zoning. Properties located at 426, 446, and 464 Chestnut Street and Chestnut Street unnumbered. And then the companion bill, which uh, authorizes building material restrictions requirements for BL 2022-1483. Council Member Sledge, you're recognized on those two bills. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, move to defer one meeting so we can get a community meeting under our belts. Okay, on both of them? Defer. Yes, please. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, 66 and 67 items uh, defer both of those one meeting. That's the motion, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no, you adopt. Okay, so we are now on bills on second reading. <coughs> if I can find them. 
Uh, it's on page 34 of my calendar. <coughs> so I'm gonna go through the bills that are on um, consent. This is on second reading consent. Um, so stay with me, uh, I'm on page 37 of my calendar, item number 96, bill 2022-1453 is on consent. 1454 is on consent. He's already heard. Sorry, that's the one that got taken out of order. Okay, sorry. 1455 is on consent. 1456 is on consent. 1457 is on consent. 1458 on consent. 1459 on consent. 1460 on consent. Actually, everything else on second reading is on consent, all the way through 1467, okay? So everything else on consent. <clears throat> Anything needs to be bumped off the consent calendar on second reading? <clears throat> Council Member Parker, 1142 is not on consent, okay? Anything else? <clears throat> All right, these are bills on second reading consent. Uh, item number 96, uh, BL 2022, 1453 by Murphy, Roten, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the granting of a permanent easement to Piedmont Natural Gas, certain property owned by the Metropolitan Government at 4601 Murphy Road, 98. Item number 98, Welsh, Withers, and Pulley, 1455 is the number and ordinance to uh, amend the GIS system street and alley center line layer for the Metropolitan Government by abandoning a portion of Whitsett Road right of way fronting um, certain map numbers. Uh, Item number 99, BL 2022-1456 by O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance to amend the GIS system street and alley centerline layer for the Metropolitan Government by abandoning a portion of alley number 456 right away from alley number 442. Um, item number 100, BL 2022-1457, O'Connell, wrote and Withers, and others. Ordinance authorizing the abandonment and conveyance of the Metropolitan Government's interest in alley number 68 in downtown Nashville, approving the easement and agreement, providing for the Metropolitan Government's use of certain space and improvements constructed in the former alley. Item number 101, one, BL 2022-1458 by O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing 915 Division Manager LLC to install, construct, and maintain an underground encroachment in the right-of-way located at 915 Division Street. Item 102, BL 2022-1459, O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon easement rights for property located at 630 Division Street, formerly a portion of Valley Number 200. Item number 103, BL 2022-1460, O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon easement rights for property at 1000 Church Street, formerly a portion of of alley number 121. The item number 104, if I can turn the page. Uh, BL 2022 six, 1461 by O'Connell, Witherson, Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon the existing public utility easement. Property located at 1000 Hawkins Street. BL 2022 1462 by Toombs, Witherson, Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon the existing water main and easements and to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assemblies, check valve assemblies, sanitary sewer mains, and easements. Property located at 3720 Clarksville Pike. Item number 106, BL 2022 1463 by Sledge, Witherson, Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon the existing public Sanitary sewer mains, manholes, and easements, properly located 451 Murfreesboro Pike. Item number 107, BL 2022 1464. Tombs, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept public fire hydrant assemblies, sanitary sewer manholes, with three properties located at 2000, 2004, 2006 South Hamilton Road. Uh, BL 2022 1465, that's item number 108, Sledge, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorized the Metropolitan Government to accept new fire hydrant assemblies and public sanitary sewer manholes, properly located at 1414 4th Avenue South. Item number 109, BL 2022-1466 by Witherson Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing water mains and easements, relocate fire hydrant assemblies and accept new public water and sanitary sewer mains, mains fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes and easements, property located at Ashland City Highway, also known as Eaton Creek Commons Phase 1. And item number 110, BL 2022-1467 by Taylor Witherson Pulley. Ordinance authorizing to, uh, Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, uh, manholes and easements, probably located at 3021 Charlotte Avenue, also known as Haven at Charlotte. Anything needs to be bumped off the second reading consent agenda. Seeing none, we have um, committee reports due in, budget and finance, Councilmember Gamble, you've got a couple of them. Thank you. Uh, 
the budget and finance considered 14 bill 2022 1453 1454 and 1457 13 in favor zero against all right thank you council weathers uh planning and zoning planning and zoning uh, considered all of the items on consent agenda and recommended approval eight in favor zero against zero all abstention right. public facilities council member hurt like you've got one 1454 but that's already been heard so you're good okay don't even need it thank you what about 1449 um, let's see. Uh, that's uh, that's not on the consent, so I'll come back to you for that one. Uh, Public Health and Safety, Councilmember Syracuse, you've got 1457. Public Health and Safety considered 1457 in the mysterious Alley 68 and voted in favor seven, in favor zero against. Is, did you go take a look at that alley? Uh, it's a field trip, yes. Okay, good. Councilmember Pulley, uh, you got the last set of committee reports. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Transfer, transportation recommended approval of BL 2022 1453 through 1467. Nine in favor, zero against, and I move approval of the second reading consent agenda. All right. Uh, Councilmember Pulley has moved um, approval of the second reading consent agenda, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, you adopt. <clears throat> okay, we'll go back and pick up the bills that we didn't pick up on the consent agenda. Item number 89, Bill 2022-1142 by Council Members Parker and Hurt. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by canceling a portion of a plan unit development overlay district properties located at 301 North 2nd Street and 651 and 660 Joseph Avenue at the northeast corner of Dickerson Pike and Meridian Street. Council Member Parker, you're recognized on your bill. I'd like to move to defer two meetings to track with the other River Chase bills. All right, so this is uh, the a motion to defer two meetings properly seconded. Any discussion on the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the deferral motion for two meetings say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Um, that motion is adopted. Okay, the next one is we took care of uh, item number 90 and we also have taken care of item number 91. We're on item number 92, BL 2022-1449 by Council Members O'Connell, Parker, Benedict, and others. It's an ordinance creating chapter 2.153 of the Metropolitan Code, establishing a bicycle and pedestrian advisory commission. Council Member O'Connell, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to request committee reports, please. All right, uh, <laughs> public facilities, Council Member Hurt, you're recognized. Thank you. Public Facilities, Arts and Culture voted uh, six in favor and zero against for a two-meeting deferral. Okay. Thank you. Transportation, Council Mayor Pulley. Uh, transportation recommended a two-meeting deferral, nine in favor, zero against. All right. Thank you. Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to request a two-meeting deferral with a brief comment. Uh, motion is to defer two meetings. Uh, properly seconded back to you. Thank you. Agreed to meet with Director Alarcon um, about this concept and kind of how it relates to nearby Vision Zero work. I think as an inaugural member of the old BPAC before it was dismantled, um, they serve different purposes and I think we are sorely lacking some of the purposes of the BPAC, but I do want to meet with NDOT uh, before we try to advance the legislation and I will commit to doing that and we'll try to resume the conversation in two meetings. Thank you. All right, so the motion is to defer two meetings. It's been properly seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion's adopted. We're on item number 93, BL 2022-1450 by Council Member Allen. Ordinance amending chapter 2.222 of the Metropolitan Code relative expense reimbursement and legal representation and ethics matters before the Board of Ethical Conduct. Council Member Allen, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Um, I have got one coming out of budget and finance. Council Member Gamble. Uh, budget and finance recommended a uh, defer one meeting, one meeting deferral, 10 in favor, zero against. Okay, and rules and confirmations, Councilmember Murphy. One meeting deferral, seven in favor, zero against. Councilmember Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move one meeting deferral with a brief explanation. One meeting deferral, properly seconded. Back to you. Uh, thank you. The goal of this is just to provide some um, support for appointed board members who don't have the same amount necessarily of legal rep support that council members and other elected officials have. And I just want to make sure that we continue to be able to attract good people to volunteer for our boards. Um, but there are some amendments um, that I would like to work on. And so I'll be bringing it back 
in some amended form. So with that, I move for a one meeting deferral. All Thank right, you. the motion is to defer one meeting, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Post no. Um, that motion is adopted. Uh, we're on item number 94, uh, but we can't take it with 95. It looks like they're separate uh, substitutes. BL 2022-1451 by Councilmember Stiles wrote in Withers, an ordinance approving a license agreement between the Metropolitan Government and Vanderbilt uh, for use of office space and parking spots located at 5224 Hickory Hollow Parkway. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports. Uh huh. Budget and Finance Council Member Gamble. Budget and Finance recommends approval as substituted. Ten in favor, zero against. Okay. Uh, planning and Zoning Council Member Withers. Planning and Zoning recommended approval of the of the amendment. Eight in favor, zero against, zero abstentions, and the ordinance as amended. Eight in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. All right, uh, Council Member Stiles, you're recognized on your bill. Thank you very much. I would like to move for approval, please. Okay, you need to move the substitute? Yes, move the substitute, please. Okay, so Council Member Siles moves the substitute on 1451, properly seconded back to you for an explanation. I think it's a housekeeping substitute. That's exactly correct. Um, when I think the ad address was incorrect, that's been updated. Okay, you've heard an explanation of the substitute. Any discussion on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Substitute's adopted. You're on your bill as substituted. Like to move for approval of the substituted bill. All right. So Councilmember Stiles has moved approval of 1451 as substituted, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, the bill as substituted is adopted on second reading. And item number 95, BL 2022-1452, an ordinance approving a license agreement between the Metropolitan Government uh, through the Department of General Services and the Salvation Army for use of storage space located at 5224 Hickory Hollow Parkway. Councilmember Stiles, you're recognized on your uh, bill. Uh, yes. Um would, do I need to do committee reports for this one? Says committee Damian. reports as okay. well. Budget and Finance Council Member Gamble. Thank you. Budget and Finance recommends approval as substituted. Ten in favor, zero against. Planning and Zoning Council Member Withers. Planning and Zoning recommended approval of the substitute and of the ordinance as substituted. Eight in favor, zero against, zero abstention. All right, Council Member Stiles, uh, you would be on your substitute now. Uh, I'd like to move the substitute, please. All right, so Council Member Stiles moves the substitute on 1452. Properly seconded. Any discussion on the substitute? I think it's also a housekeeping substitute. Same Any issue. discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the substitute say aye. Opposed, no. Substitute passes. Uh, Councilor Stiles, you're on your bill as substituted. Yes, and so if I'd like to move for approval with a brief comment, please. Motion is to approve uh, 1452 as substituted, properly seconded. Back to you. So uh, this agreement will allow the Salvation Army to continue using the uh, bottom of the Bridgestone building, and they've been there for the last three years. So this is for a really good cause. Okay. So and with that, uh, I move for approval. Um, so you've heard the um, request for a motion by Council Member Stiles, 1452 as substituted, again, properly seconded. Um, any discussion on the bill as substituted? Seeing none, all those in favor of the bill, 1452 as substituted, say aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that bill passes as substituted on second reading. Um, you should have just gotten a uh, scheduled scan at 215. Okay, and this one doesn't seem to be moving. That means, yeah, what? Just spit, okay? It'll be okay, okay? So we're doing good, just hang with me. <clears throat> All right, I think that's it on second reading. We're now on bills on third reading. All right, here's the consent agenda on third reading. I think it's almost everything except for maybe one bill. Uh, item number 111, 1071 is on consent, 1366 is on consent, 1384 is on consent. Which one? 1384 has been pulled, okay. <coughs> Uh, 1413, item number 115 is on consent, 1414 on consent, 1415, 1416, 
on consent, 1417 is on consent, 1418 on consent, 1419, <clears throat> everything else is on consent all the way through 1431, okay? So there's two bills that are not on consent, at least yet. Uh, it would be Councilmember Mendes, I'm going to come to you in just a minute. Two bills that are not on consent. 1384 is not on consent. And 1400 is not on consent. Councilmember Mendes, gotcha. Can you take um, 1366 off consent? Okay. And 1366 is not on consent, okay? So everything else will be on consent. Council Member Toombs, you recognized. I need to pull 111, 1071. Okay. Okay. Anything else? So if I've got this right, item 111 is not on consent. Item 112 is not on consent. Item 113 is not on consent. Item 114 is not on consent. And I think that's it. Everything else would be on the consent agenda. <coughs> Here we go through the bills on consent, starting with item number 115, BL 2022 1413 by Roten Gamble and others. Ordinance approving an agreement between the Mental Health Cooperative and the Metropolitan Government through the Davidson County General Sessions Court Division 2. Purpose of ensuring the provision and implementation of a competency restoration specialty docket. Item 116, BL 2022 1414, Roten Gamble and Welsh. Ordinance approving an agreement between the Metropolitan Government of National Davidson County through the Davidson County Recovery Court and Belmont University to provide professional education for Belmont's occupational therapy students. Item 117. BL 2022, 1415 Allen, Syracuse, and uh, Tombs, in order to create a tax incentive and abatement study and formulating committee. BL 2022, 1416 by O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Um, it's an ordinance. Um, Authorize the McGavick Apartment Venture LLC to install, <coughs> construct and maintain underground encroachments in the right of way located at 1212 McGavick Street. BL, uh, uh, BL 2022-1417, this is item number 119, O'Connell, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing stormwater drainage easement rights for property located at 30 Peabody Street. BL 2022-1418, Parker, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, center, sanitary sewer manholes, and easement, relocate a fire hydrant assembly for three properties located at 21. 35 and 2141 Waterside Drive and 2200 Bowline Avenue. BL 2022 1419 Syracuse Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing uh, Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public sanitary sewer mains and easements, except new sanitary sewer mains, manholes, fire house assemblies, and easements, properly located at 2714 Old Lebanon Pike. Item number 122, BL 2022 1420. Young Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing sanitary sewer mains, manholes, easements, except new ones, uh, for probably located at 684 Myatt Drive. BL 2022, 1421, Rutherford, Withers, and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new water and sanitary sewer mains, fire hydrant assembly, sanitary sewer manholes, and easements. Property located at Old Hickory Boulevard, unnumbered, also known as Evergreen Hills Phase 2B. <coughs> Item number 124, BL 2022, 1422. Withers and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new public sanitary sewer mains, uh, sewer manholes, and easements, probably located at 9917 Sam Donald Road in Williamson County, also known as Primrose School of Nolansville. BL 2022, 1423, Taylor Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water mains, relocate a power, public fire hydrant assembly, and to accept a new public water main and fire, uh, public fire hydrant assembly, properly located at 1805 Church Street. BL 2022, 1424, item number 126. Taylor Withers and Pulley, an ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water mains and easements, relocate a public fire hunt assembly and accept new public water main and easements, property located at 2000 Church Street. Item number 127, BL 2022, 1425, by Roberts, Withers and Pulley, ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept relocation and vertical adjustment of existing water mains, property located at 203 Osceola Avenue, number one. BL 2022, 1426, Roberts, Withers and Pulley, authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water mains to accept a new
new public water main, property located at 5621 B Lennox Avenue, also known as Lennox Avenue Townhomes. Item number 129, BL 2022-1427, Tyler Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept new sanitary sewer mains and sanitary sewer manholes, property located at 2007 23rd Avenue North, BL 2022-1428, Benedict Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public water main, relocate a public fire hydrant uh, hydro assembly to accept a new public water main, property located at 3810 Gallatin Pike, BL 2022-1429, that's item 131, Robert Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept a relocation of fire hydrant assembly for property located at 5300 Centennial Boulevard, item number 132, BL 2022-1430, Roberts, Withers and Pulley. Ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to abandon existing public utility easement rights for two properties located at 516C and 520B West Bend Drive, and BL 2022-1431, item number 133, O'Connell, Withers and Pulley. An ordinance authorizing the Metropolitan Government to accept the relocation of fire hydrant assembly for a property located at 824th Avenue North, also known as Ballpark Village. Those are the items on the consent agenda. Anything needs to be bumped off of it. <coughs> There's no committee reports at all. So, uh, Council Member Pulley, I just need a motion to approve third reading consent agenda. Hold on. Button, too many buttons pushed. There you go. I move approval of the third reading consent agenda. Okay, I got a motion to approve. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Uh, third reading consent agenda is adopted. We have four bills remaining. Let's see if we make it to 2.30. What do you think? Item number 111, BL 2022-1071 by Council Member Toome. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from IR to MUGNS zoning for property located at 407 Great Circle Road, northern terminus of Athens Way. It's 15 acres. Council Member Toome, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to uh, defer to the first meeting in November. Uh, so the motion is deferred to the first meeting in November. Properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to refer to the first meeting in November say aye. aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. We're on item number 112. Um, this is BL 2022-1366 by Council Member Hall. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by change from CL to MUNA NS zoning for property located at 3517 Old Clarksville Pike. Um, Council Member Hall is not here. Did anybody sign on to this? <coughs> Okay, so it would be automatically deferred to the next meeting. All right. Uh, item number 113, Bill 2022-1384 by Rosenberg, Evans, and Bradford. Ordinance amending section 12.12.190 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws re relative to traffic calming projects. Council Member Rosenberg. Council Member Evans. I move that we rescind our action and approve this bill on second reading. Okay, so the motion is to rescind our actions um, um, on second reading, which will send it back to second reading, correct? Okay, everybody understand what we're doing? All right, so uh, we're moving to recent our actions on second, on second reading, properly seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, we are ready to vote. Needs 27 votes to rescind, okay. How many votes do we have in here? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so we need everybody voting in the affirmative if we're gonna rescind our actions on this. All those in favor of the rescinding on, of our actions on second reading say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Is that good enough? <laughs> it's good enough, okay. We're rescinding our actions on second reading. I'll go back to second reading. <clears throat> Last bill on the agenda, but don't leave yet because I got one announcement. Uh, Item number 114, Bill 2022-1400 by Council Member Rosenberg. Ordinance to amend Title 17 by changing from RS-40 to SP zoning. Probably located at 8033 Highway 100, 95 feet west of Temple Road within Highway 100 Urban Design Overlay. Who's got that one for Council Member Rosenberg? What? O'Connell. Council Member O'Connell's got it. Okay, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as far as I am aware, we're gonna move approval here. Okay, I need a committee report. Planning oh, committee and zoning, Councilmember Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning uh, considered the amendment and the bill as amended and recommended it in uh, approval, eight in favor, zero against, zero abstentions. Okay, uh, back to you, Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move the amendment if it's not already on the bill. 
Okay. All right, it is not on the, uh, <coughs> the um, it is not on the bill. Council Member um, O'Connell moves the amendment, properly seconded back to you for an explanation of the amendment. Or I can go to Ms. Darby. Um, let's go to Ms. Darby. Ms. Darby. Give me a minute. Okay, minute. sorry, we're moving quick. We could potentially go to Ms. Milligan. I'm not seeing it on. I don't know who's faster. She's looking for it. I'm looking for something as well. Oh, there it is. This is the last one. I guess you got it. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Young, who was almost on the bill but came up just a little bit short, uh, says there might be an easement, a greenway easement on the bill. There, there is a, um, a requirement for an easement for greenways and then also um, some prohibitions against uh, some. There's some a use uses. prohibition, yeah. Um, and that is the amendment. All right, so that's the amendment. Uh, Councilmember O'Connell has moved the amendment. Again, it was properly seconded. Any questions on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Those aye. No? Amendment's on. Councilmember O'Connell, you're on your bill as amended. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move approval of the brief comment. All right, so um, the motion is to approve 1400 as amended on third and final passage, um, properly seconded back to you. Thank you, just wanted to see if Mr. Jamison had any comments from Mr. Bedney that we could offer at this time. Mr. Jamison, anything? Uh, Councilman, uh, former Councilman Bedney is uh, awfully proud of this legislation and thanks the council. Great, thank you, uh, move approval. So uh, Council Member O'Connell has moved for approval of BL 2022-1400 as amended for third, for on third and final reading. What? Properly seconded, no discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. You adopt. Um, so uh, Mr. Uh, Jamison, I have your microphone still on. I have lost your email. Somehow it just got lost somehow. You've got it? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, here it is. Uh, members of the council, this is from the mayor. Uh, in gratitude to the Metro Council for their collaboration in crafting and adopting the housing and homelessness legislation approved tonight, Mayor John Cooper invites all council members to join him as well as members of the Homeless Planning Council, Homelessness Planning Council, and representatives of the nonprofit and community organizations who contributed to this legislation at the signing of these resolutions tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Charlie Cardwell <laughs> Memorial Park adjacent to the Howard Office Building on 2nd Avenue South. Thank you. If you all would just go over there right now, I think the signing will be in about five minutes. All right. Um, so anyway, everybody's invited 10 a.m. tomorrow. I need a motion to adjourn. Properly second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. We are adjourned. That press release went out. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.